Chapter 30 The words of Agur, the son of Jaqed the oracle. The man says to Ithiel, to Ithiel and Eucal, Surely I am the most ignorant man, and don't have a man's understanding. I have not learned wisdom, neither do I have the knowledge of the Holy One. Who has ascended up into heaven and descended? Who has gathered the wind in his fists? Who has bound the waters in his garment? Who has established all the ends of the earth? What is his name, and what is his son's name, if you know? Every word of God is flawless. He is a shield to those who take refuge in him. Don't you add to his words, lest he reprove you, and you be found a liar. Two things I have asked of you. Don't deny me before I die. Remove far from me falsehood and lies. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with the food that is needful for me, lest I be full, deny you, and say, who is Yahweh? Or lest I be poor and steal, and so dishonor the name of my God. Don't slander a servant to his master, lest he curse you, and you be held guilty. There is a generation that curses their father, and doesn't bless their mother. There is a generation that is pure in their own eyes, yet are not washed from their filthiness. There is a generation, oh, how lofty are their eyes, their eyelids are lifted up. There is a generation whose teeth are like swords, and their jaws like knives, to devour the poor from the earth, and the needy from among men. The leech has two daughters, Give, give. There are three things that are never satisfied, four that don't say enough. Sheol, the barren womb, the earth that is not satisfied with water, and the fire that doesn't say enough. The eye that mocks at his father and scorns obedience to his mother. The ravens of the valley shall pick it out. The young eagles shall eat it. There are three things that are too amazing for me, four which I don't understand. The way of an eagle in the air. The way of a serpent on a rock. The way of a ship in the midst of the sea. And the way of a man with a maiden. So is the way of an adulterous woman. She eats and wipes her mouth and says, I have done nothing wrong. For three things the earth tremble, and under four it can't bear up. For a servant when he is king, a fool when he is filled with food. For an unloved woman when she is married, and a handmaiden who is heir to her mistress. There are four things which are little on the earth, but they are exceedingly wise. The ants are not a strong people, yet they provide their food in the summer. The conies are but a feeble folk, yet make they their houses in the rocks. The locusts have no king. Yet they advance in ranks. You can catch a lizard with your hands, yet it is in king's palaces. There are three things which are stately in their march, four which are stately in going. The lion, which is mightiest among animals and doesn't turn away for any. The greyhound, the male goat also, and the king against whom there is no rising up. 
if you have done foolishly in lifting up yourself, or if you have thought evil, put your hand over your mouth. For as the churning of milk brings forth butter, and the wringing of the nose brings forth blood, so the forcing of wrath brings forth strife. Chapter 31 The Words of King Lemuel The Oracle Which His Mother Taught Him O my son, O son of my womb, O son of my vows, don't give your strength to women, nor your ways to that which destroys kings. It is not for kings, Lemuel, it is not for kings to drink wine, nor for princes to say, Where is strong drink? Lest they drink and forget the law, and pervert the justice due to anyone who is afflicted. Give strong drink to him who is ready to perish, and wine to the bitter in soul. Let him drink and forget his poverty, and remember his misery no more. Open your mouth for the mute, in the cause of all who are left desolate. Open your mouth, judge righteously, and serve justice to the poor and needy. Who can find a worthy woman? For her price is far above rubies. The heart of her husband trusts in her. He shall have no lack of gain. She does him good and not harm all the days of her life. She seeks wool and flax and works eagerly with her hands. She is like the merchant ships. She brings her bread from afar. She rises also while it is yet night, gives food to her household and portions for her servant girls. She considers a field and buys it. With the fruit of her hands, she plants a vineyard. She arms her waist with strength and makes her arms strong. She perceives that her merchandise is profitable. Her lamp doesn't go out by night. She lays her hands to the distaff, and her hands hold the spindle. She opens her arms to the poor. Yes, she extends her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of the snow for her household, for all her household are clothed with scarlet. She makes for herself carpets of tapestry. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. Her husband is respected in the gates when he sits among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them and delivers sashes to the merchant. Strength and dignity are her clothing. She laughs at the time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom. Faithful instruction is on her tongue. She looks well to the ways of her household and doesn't eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also praises her. Many women do noble things, but you excel them all. Charm is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman who fears Yahweh, she shall be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands. Let her works praise her in the gates. Ecclesiastes, or The Preacher Chapter 1 The Words of the Preacher, the Son of David, King in Jerusalem Vanity of vanities, says the Preacher. Vanity of vanities, all is vanity. What does man gain from all his labor in which he labors under the sun? One generation goes, and another generation comes, but the earth remains forever. The sun also rises, and the sun goes down, and hurries to its place where it rises. The wind goes toward the south, 
and turns around to the north. It turns around continually as it goes, and the wind returns again to its courses. All the rivers run into the sea, yet the sea is not full. To the place where the rivers flow, there they flow again. All things are full of weariness beyond uttering. The eye is not satisfied with seeing, nor the ear filled with hearing. That which has been is that which shall be, and that which has been done is that which shall be done, and there is no new thing under the sun. Is there a thing of which it may be said, Behold, this is new? It has been long ago, in the ages which were before us. There is no memory of the former, neither shall there be any memory of the latter that are to come among those that shall come after. I, the preacher, was king over Israel in Jerusalem. I applied my heart to seek and to search out by wisdom concerning all that is done under the sky. It is a heavy burden that God has given to the sons of men to be afflicted with. I have seen all the works that are done under the sun, and behold, all is vanity and a chasing after wind. That which is crooked can't be made straight, and that which is lacking can't be counted. I said to myself, Behold, I have obtained for myself great wisdom above all who were before me in Jerusalem. Yes, my heart has had great experience of wisdom and knowledge. I applied my heart to know wisdom and to know madness and folly. I perceived that this also was a chasing after wind. For in much wisdom is much grief, and he who increases knowledge increases sorrow. Chapter 2 I said in my heart, Come now, I will test you with mirth, therefore enjoy pleasure. And behold, this also was vanity. I said of laughter, It is foolishness, and of mirth, what does it accomplish? I searched in my heart how to cheer my flesh with wine, my heart yet guiding me with wisdom, and how to lay hold of folly, until I might see what it was good for the sons of men that they should do under heaven all the days of their lives. I made myself great works. I built myself houses. I planted myself vineyards. I made myself gardens and parks, and I planted trees in them of all kinds of fruit. I made myself pools of water, to water from it the forest where trees were reared. I bought male servants and female servants, and had servants born in my house. I also had great possessions of herds and flocks, above all who were before me in Jerusalem. I also gathered silver and gold for myself, and the treasure of kings and of the provinces. I got myself male and female singers, and the delights of the sons of men, musical instruments, and that of all sorts. So I was great, and increased more than all who were before me in Jerusalem. My wisdom also remained with me. Whatever my eyes desired, I didn't keep from them. I didn't withhold my heart from any joy for my heart rejoiced because of all my labor, and this was my portion from all my labor. Then I looked at all the works that my hands had worked, and at the labor that I had labored to do, and behold, all was vanity and a chasing after wind, and there was no profit under the sun. I turned myself to consider wisdom, madness, and folly, for what can the king's successor do? Just that which has been done long ago. Then I saw that wisdom excels folly, as far as light excels darkness. The wise man's eyes are in his head, and the fool walks in darkness. And yet I perceived that one event happens to them all. Then I said in my heart, As it happens to the fool, 
so will it happen even to me and why was i then more wise then i said in my heart that this also is vanity for of the wise man even as of the fool there is no memory for ever since in the days to come all will have been long forgotten indeed the wise man must die just like the fool so i hated life because the work that is worked under the sun was grievous to me for all is vanity and a chasing after wind i hated all my labor in which i labored under the sun because i must leave it to the man who comes after me who knows whether he will be a wise man or a fool yet he will have rule over all of my labor in which i have labored and in which i have shown myself wise under the sun this also is vanity therefore i began to cause my heart to despair concerning all the labor in which i had labored under the sun for there is a man whose labor is with wisdom with knowledge and with skillfulness yet he shall leave it for his portion to a man who has not labored for it this also is vanity and a great evil for what has a man of all his labor and of the striving of his heart in which he labors under the sun for all his days are sorrows and his travail is grief yes even in the night his heart takes no rest this also is vanity there is nothing better for a man than that he should eat and drink and make his soul enjoy good in his labor this also i saw that it is from the hand of god for who can eat or who can have enjoyment more than i for to the man who pleases him god gives wisdom knowledge and joy but to the sinner he gives travail to gather and to heap up that he may give to him who pleases god this also is vanity and a chasing after wind chapter three for everything there is a season and a time for every purpose under heaven a time to be born and a time to die a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted a time to kill and a time to heal a time to break down and a time to build up a time to weep and a time to laugh a time to mourn and a time to dance a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing a time to seek and a time to lose a time to keep and a time to cast away a time to tear and a time to sow a time to keep silence and a time to speak a time to love and a time to hate a time for war and a time for peace what profit has he who works in that in which he labors i have seen the burden which god has given to the sons of men to be afflicted with he has made everything beautiful in its time he has also set eternity in their hearts yet so that man can't find out the work that god has done from the beginning even to the end i know that there is nothing better for them than to rejoice and to do good as long as they live also that every man should eat and drink and enjoy good in all his labor is the gift of god i know that whatever god does it shall be forever nothing can be added to it nor anything taken from it and god has done it that men should fear before him that which is has been long ago and that which is to be has been long ago and god seeks again that which has passed away moreover i saw under the sun in the place of justice that wickedness was there and in the place of righteousness that wickedness was there I said in my heart, 
God will judge the righteous and the wicked. For there is a time there for every purpose and for every work. I said in my heart, As for the sons of men, God tests them, so that they may see that they themselves are like animals. For that which happens to the sons of men happens to animals. Even one thing happens to them. As the one dies, so the other dies. Yes, they have all one breath, and man has no advantage over the animals, for all is vanity. All go to one place. All are from the dust, and all turn to dust again. Who knows the spirit of man, whether it goes upward, and the spirit of the animal, whether it goes downward to the earth. Therefore I saw that there is nothing better than that a man should rejoice in his works, for that is his portion. For who can bring him to see what will be after him? Chapter 4 Then I returned and saw all the oppressions that are done under the sun. And behold, the tears of those who were oppressed, and they had no comforter, and on the side of their oppressors there was power, but they had no comforter. Therefore I praised the dead, who have been long dead, more than the living who are yet alive. Yes, better than them both is him who has not yet been, who has not seen the evil work that is done under the sun. Then I saw all the labor and achievement that is the envy of a man's neighbor. This also is vanity and a striving after wind. The fool folds his hands together and ruins himself. Better is a handful with quietness than two handfuls with labor and chasing after wind. Then I returned and saw vanity under the sun. There is one who is alone, and he has neither son nor brother. There is no end to all of his labor, neither are his eyes satisfied with wealth. For whom, then, do I labor and deprive my soul of enjoyment? This also is vanity. Yes, it is a miserable business. Two are better than one, because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him who is alone when he falls, and doesn't have another to lift him up. Again, if two lie together, then they have warmth. But how can one keep warm alone? If a man prevails against one who is alone, two shall withstand him, and a threefold cord is not quickly broken. Better is a poor and wise youth than an old and foolish king who doesn't know how to receive admonition anymore. For out of prison he came out to be king. Yes, even in his kingdom he was born poor. I saw all the living who walk under the sun, that they were with the youth, the other who succeeded him. There was no end of all the people even of all them over whom he was. Yet those who come after shall not rejoice in him. Surely this also is vanity and a chasing after wind. Chapter 5 Guard your steps when you go to God's house, for to draw near to listen is better than to give the sacrifice of fools, for they don't know that they do evil. Don't be rash with your mouth, and don't let your heart be hasty to utter anything before God, for God is in heaven and you on earth. Therefore, let your words be few, for as a dream comes with a multitude of cares, so a fool's speech with a multitude of words. When you vow a vow to God, don't defer to pay it, for he has no pleasure in fools. Pay that which you vow. It is better that you should not vow than that you should vow and not pay. Don't allow your mouth to lead you into sin. 
Don't protest before the messenger that this was a mistake. Why should God be angry at your voice and destroy the work of your hands? For in the multitude of dreams there are vanities, as well as in many words. But you must fear God. If you see the oppression of the poor and the violent taking away of justice and righteousness in a district, don't marvel at the matter, for one official is eyed by a higher one, and there are officials over them. Moreover, the profit of the earth is for all. The king profits from the field. He who loves silver shall not be satisfied with silver, nor he who loves abundance with increase. This also is vanity. When goods increase, those who eat them are increased. And what advantage is there to its owner, except to feast on them with his eyes? The sleep of a laboring man is sweet, whether he eats little or much. But the abundance of the rich will not allow him to sleep. There is a grievous evil which I have seen under the sun, wealth kept by its owner to his harm. Those riches perish by misfortune, and if he has fathered a son, there is nothing in his hand. As he came out of his mother's womb, naked shall he go again as he came, and shall take nothing for his labor which he may carry away in his hand. This also is a grievous evil, that in all points as he came, so shall he go. And what profit does he have who labors for the wind? All his days he also eats in darkness. He is frustrated, and has sickness and wrath. Behold, that which I have seen to be good and proper is for one to eat and to drink and to enjoy good in all his labor in which he labors under the sun, all the days of his life which God has given him, for this is his portion. Every man also to whom God has given riches and wealth, and has given him power to eat of it, and to take his portion, and to rejoice in his labor, this is the gift of God. For he shall not often reflect on the days of his life, because God occupies him with the joy of his heart. Chapter 6 There is an evil which I have seen under the sun, and it is heavy on men. A man to whom God gives riches, wealth, and honor, so that he lacks nothing for his soul of all that he desires, Yet God gives him no power to eat of it, but an alien eats it. This is vanity, and it is an evil disease. If a man fathers a hundred children, and lives many years, so that the days of his years are many, but his soul is not filled with good, and moreover he has no burial, I say that a stillborn child is better than he for it comes in vanity, and departs in darkness, and its name is covered with darkness. Moreover, it has not seen the sun, nor known it. This has rest rather than the other. Yes, though he live a thousand years twice told, and yet fails to enjoy good, don't all go to one place? All the labor of man is for his mouth and yet the appetite is not filled. For what advantage has the wise more than the fool? What has the poor man that knows how to walk before the living? Better is the sight of the eyes than the wondering of the desire. This also is vanity and a chasing after wind. Whatever has been, its name was given long ago and it is known what man is. Neither can he contend with him who is mightier than he. For there are many words that create vanity. What does that profit man? For who knows what is good for man in life, 
all the days of his vain life which he spends like a shadow for who can tell a man what will be after him under the sun chapter seven a good name is better than fine perfume and the day of death better than the day of one's birth it is better to go to the house of mourning than to go to the house of feasting for that is the end of all men and the living should take this to heart sorrow is better than laughter for by the sadness of the face the heart is made good the heart of the wise is in the house of mourning but the heart of fools is in the house of mirth it is better to hear the rebuke of the wise than for a man to hear the song of fools for as the crackling of thorns under a pot so is the laughter of the fool this also is vanity surely extortion makes the wise man foolish and a bribe destroys the understanding better is the end of a thing than its beginning the patient in spirit is better than the proud in spirit don't be hasty in your spirit to be angry for anger rests in the bosom of fools don't say why were the former days better than these for you do not ask wisely about this wisdom is as good as an inheritance yes it is more excellent for those who see the sun for wisdom is a defense even as money is a defense but the excellency of knowledge is that wisdom preserves the life of him who has it consider the work of god for who can make that straight which he has made crooked in the day of prosperity be joyful and in the day of adversity consider yes god has made the one side by side with the other to the end that man should not find out anything after him all this i have seen in my days of vanity there is a righteous man who perishes in his righteousness and there is a wicked man who lives long in his evil doing don't be overly righteous neither make yourself overly wise why should you destroy yourself don't be too wicked neither be foolish why should you die before your time it is good that you should take hold of this yes also from that don't withdraw your hand for he who fears god will come out of them all wisdom is a strength to the wise man more than ten rulers who are in a city surely there is not a righteous man on earth who does good and doesn't sin also don't take heed to all words that are spoken lest you hear your servant curse you for often your own heart knows that you yourself have likewise cursed others all this i have proved in wisdom i said i will be wise but it was far from me that which is is far off and exceedingly deep who can find it out i turned around and my heart sought to know and to search out and to seek wisdom and the scheme of things and to know that wickedness is stupidity and that foolishness is madness i find more bitter than death the woman whose heart is snares and traps whose hands are chains whoever pleases god shall escape from her but the sinner will be ensnared by her behold i have found this says the preacher to one another to find out the scheme which my soul still seeks but i have not found i have found one man among a thousand but i have not found a woman among all those behold i have only found this that god made man upright but they search for many schemes chapter eight who is like the wise man and who knows the interpretation of a thing a man's wisdom makes his face shine and the hardness of his face is changed i say 
keep the king's command because of the oath to God. Don't be hasty to go out of his presence. Don't persist in an evil thing, for he does whatever pleases him. For the king's word is supreme. Who can say to him, what are you doing? Whoever keeps the commandment shall not come to harm, and his wise heart will know the time and procedure. For there is a time and procedure for every purpose, although the misery of man is heavy on him. For he doesn't know that which will be. For who can tell him how it will be? There is no man who has power over the spirit to contain the spirit. Neither does he have power over the day of death. There is no discharge in war. Neither shall wickedness deliver those who practice it. All this I have seen, and applied my mind to every work that is done under the sun. There is a time in which one man has power over another to his hurt. So I saw the wicked buried. Indeed, they came also from holiness. They went and were forgotten in the city where they did this. This also is vanity. Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily, Therefore, the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. Though a sinner commits crimes a hundred times and lives long, yet surely I know that it will be better with those who fear God, who are reverent before him. But it shall not be well with the wicked, neither shall he lengthen days like a shadow, because he doesn't fear God. There is vanity which is done on the earth, that there are righteous men to whom it happens according to the work of the wicked. Again, there are wicked men to whom it happens according to the work of the righteous. I said that this also is vanity. Then I commended mirth, because a man has no better thing under the sun than to eat and to drink and to be joyful for that will accompany him in his labor all the days of his life, which God has given him under the sun. When I applied my heart to know wisdom and to see the business that is done on the earth, even though eyes see no sleep day or night, then I saw all the work of God, that man can't find out the work that is done under the sun, because however much a man labors to seek it out, yet he won't find it. Yes, even though a wise man thinks he can comprehend it, he won't be able to find it. Chapter 9 For all this I lay to my heart, even to explore all this, that the righteous and the wise and their works are in the hand of God, whether it is love or hatred, Man doesn't know it. All is before them. All things come alike to all. There is one event to the righteous and to the wicked, to the good, to the clean, to the unclean, to him who sacrifices and to him who doesn't sacrifice. As is the good, so is the sinner. He who takes an oath, as he who fears an oath, this is an evil in all that is done under the sun, that there is one event to all. Yes, also, the heart of the sons of men is full of evil, and madness is in their heart while they live. And after that, they go to the dead. For to him who is joined with all the living, there is hope. For a living dog is better than a dead lion. For the living know that they will die, but the dead don't know anything, neither do they have any more a reward, for their memory is forgotten. Also their love, their hatred, and their envy has perished long ago. Neither do they any longer have a portion forever in anything that is done under the sun. Go your way, eat your bread with joy, and drink your wine with a merry heart for God has already accepted your works. Let your garments be always white, and don't let your head lack oil. 
live joyfully with the wife whom you love all the days of your life of vanity which he has given you under the sun all your days of vanity for that is your portion in life and in your labor in which you labor under the sun whatever your hand finds to do do it with your might for there is no work nor plan nor knowledge nor wisdom in sheol where you are going i returned and saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift nor the battle to the strong neither yet bread to the wise nor yet riches to men of understanding nor yet favor to men of skill but time and chance happen to them all for man also doesn't know his time as the fish that are taken in an evil net and as the birds that are caught in the snare even so are the sons of men snared in an evil time when it falls suddenly on them i have also seen wisdom under the sun in this way and it seemed great to me there was a little city and a few men within it and a great king came against it besieged it and built great bulwarks against it now a poor wise man was found in it and he by his wisdom delivered the city yet no man remembered that same poor man then i said wisdom is better than strength nevertheless the poor man's wisdom is despised and his words are not heard the words of the wise heard in quiet are better than the cry of him who rules among fools wisdom is better than weapons of war but one sinner destroys much good chapter ten dead flies cause the oil of the perfumer to produce an evil odor so does a little folly outweigh wisdom and honor a wise man's heart is at his right hand but a fool's heart at his left yes also when the fool walks by the way his understanding fails him and he says to everyone that he is a fool if the spirit of the ruler rises up against you don't leave your place for gentleness lays great offenses to rest there is an evil which i have seen under the sun the sort of error which proceeds from the ruler folly is set in great dignity and the rich sit in a low place i have seen servants on horses and princes walking like servants on the earth he who digs a pit may fall into it and whoever breaks through a wall may be bitten by a snake whoever carves out stones may be injured by them whoever splits wood may be endangered by it if the axe is blunt and one doesn't sharpen the edge then he must use more strength but skill brings success if the snake bites before it is charmed then is there no profit for the charmer's tongue the words of a wise man's mouth are gracious but a fool is swallowed by his own lips the beginning of the words of his mouth is foolishness and the end of his talk is mischievous madness a fool also multiplies words man doesn't know what will be and that which will be after him who can tell him the labor of fools wearies every one of them for he doesn't know how to go to the city woe to you land when your king is a child and your princes eat in the morning happy are you land when your king is the son of nobles and your princes eat in due season for strength and not for drunkenness by slothfulness the roof sinks in and through idleness of the hands the house leaks a feast is made for laughter and wine makes the life glad and money is the answer for all things don't curse the king no not in your thoughts 
and don't curse the rich in your bedroom. For a bird of the sky may carry your voice, and that which has wings may tell the matter. Chapter 11 Cast your bread on the waters, for you shall find it after many days. Give a portion to seven, yes, even to eight, for you don't know what evil will be on the earth. If the clouds are full of rain, they empty themselves on the earth. And if a tree falls toward the south or toward the north, in the place where the tree falls, there shall it be. He who observes the wind won't sow, and he who regards the clouds won't reap. As you don't know what is the way of the wind, nor how the bones grow in the womb of her who is with child, even so, you don't know the work of God, who does all. In the morning, sow your seed, and in the evening, don't withhold your hand, for you don't know which will prosper, whether this or that, or whether they both will be equally good. Truly, the light is sweet, and a pleasant thing it is for the eyes to see the sun. Yes, if a man lives many years, let him rejoice in them all. But let him remember the days of darkness, for they shall be many. All that comes is vanity. Rejoice, young man, in your youth, and let your heart cheer you in the days of your youth, and walk in the ways of your heart and in the sight of your eyes. But know that for all these things God will bring you into judgment. Therefore, remove sorrow from your heart, and put away evil from your flesh, for youth and the dawn of life are vanity. Chapter 12 Remember also your Creator in the days of your youth, before the evil days come and the years draw near, when you will say, I have no pleasure in them. Before the sun, the light, the moon, and the stars are darkened, and the clouds return after the rain. In the day when keepers of the house shall tremble, and the strong men shall bow themselves, and the grinders cease because they are few, and those who look out of the windows are darkened, and the doors shall be shut in the street, when the sound of the grinding is low, and one shall rise up at the voice of a bird, and all the daughters of music shall be brought low. Yes, they shall be afraid of heights, and terrors will be on the way, and the almond tree shall blossom, and the grasshopper shall be a burden, and desire shall fail, because man goes to his everlasting home, and the mourners go about the streets, before the silver cord is severed, or the golden bowl is broken, or the pitcher is broken at the spring, or the wheel broken at the cistern, and the dust returns to the earth as it was, and the spirit returns to God who gave it. Vanity of vanities, says the preacher, all is vanity. Further, because the preacher was wise, he still taught the people knowledge. Yes, he pondered, sought out, and set in order many proverbs. The preacher sought to find out acceptable words, and that which was written blamelessly, words of truth. The words of the wise are like goads, and like nails well fastened are words from the masters of assemblies which are given from one shepherd. Furthermore, my son, be admonished. Of making many books there is no end, and much study is a weariness of the flesh. This is the end of the matter. All has been heard. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God will bring every work into judgment, with every hidden thing, whether it is good or whether it is evil. 
The Song of Solomon Chapter 1 The Song of Songs, which is Solomon's Beloved, let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth, for your love is better than wine. Your oils have a pleasing fragrance. Your name is oil poured out. Therefore the virgins love you. Take me away with you. Let's hurry. The king has brought me into his rooms. Friends, we will be glad and rejoice in you. We will praise your love more than wine. Beloved, they are right to love you. I am dark but lovely. You daughters of Jerusalem, like Keter's tents, like Solomon's curtains. Don't stare at me because I'm dark, because the sun has scorched me. My mother's sons were angry with me. They made me keeper of the vineyards. I haven't kept my own vineyard. Tell me, you whom my soul loves, where you graze your flock, where you rest them at noon. For why should I be as one who is veiled beside the flocks of your companions? Lover If you don't know, most beautiful among women, follow the tracks of the sheep. Graze your young goats beside the shepherd's tents. I have compared you, my love, to a steed in Pharaoh's chariots. Your cheeks are beautiful with earrings, your neck with strings of jewels. Friends, we will make you earrings of gold with studs of silver. Beloved, while the king sat at his table, my perfume spread its fragrance. My beloved is to me a sachet of myrrh that lies between my breasts. My beloved is to me a cluster of henna blossoms from the vineyards of Engedi. Lover Behold, you are beautiful, my love. Behold, you are beautiful. Your eyes are doves. Beloved. Behold, you are beautiful, my beloved. Yes, pleasant, and our couch is verdant. Lover. The beams of our house are cedars. Our rafters are firs. Chapter 2 Beloved I am a rose of Sharon, a lily of the valleys. Lover As a lily among thorns, so is my love among the daughters. Beloved As the apple tree among the trees of the wood, so is my beloved among the sons. I sat down under his shadow with great delight. His fruit was sweet to my taste. He brought me to the banquet hall. His banner over me is love. Strengthen me with raisins. Refresh me with apples. For I am faint with love. His left hand is under my head. His right hand embraces me. I adjure you, daughters of Jerusalem, by the rose or by the hinds of the field, that you not stare up nor awaken love until it so desires. The voice of my beloved, behold, he comes, leaping on the mountains, skipping on the hills. My beloved is like a roe or a young deer. Behold, he stands behind our wall. He looks in at the windows. He glances through the lattice. My beloved spoke and said to me, Rise up, my love, my beautiful one, and come away. For, behold, the winter is past, the rain is over and gone. The flowers appear on the earth, 
the time of the singing has come, and the voice of the turtle dove is heard in our land. The fig tree ripens her green figs, the vines are in blossom, they give out their fragrance. Arise, my love, my beautiful one, and come away. Lover My dove in the clefts of the rock in the hiding places of the mountainside. Let me see your face. Let me hear your voice, for your voice is sweet and your face is lovely. Catch for us the foxes, the little foxes that plunder the vineyards, for our vineyards are in blossom. Beloved My beloved is mine, and I am his. He browses among the lilies until the day is cool and the shadows flee away. Turn, my beloved, and be like a roe or a young deer on the mountains of Bether. Chapter 3 By night on my bed I sought him whom my soul loves. I sought him, but I didn't find him. I will get up now and go about the city. In the streets and in the squares, I will seek him whom my soul loves. I sought him, but I didn't find him. The watchmen who go about the city found me. Have you seen him whom my soul loves? I had scarcely passed from them when I found him whom my soul loves. I hailed him and would not let him go until I had brought him into my mother's house, into the room of her who conceived me. I adjure you, daughters of Jerusalem, by the rose or by the hinds of the field, that you not stir up nor awaken love until it so desires. Who is this who comes up from the wilderness like pillars of smoke, perfumed with myrrh and frankincense, with all spices of the merchant, Behold, it is Solomon's carriage. Sixty mighty men are around it, of the mighty men of Israel. They all handle the sword and are expert in war. Every man has his sword on his thigh because of fear in the night. King Solomon made himself a carriage of the wood of Lebanon. He made its pillars of silver, its bottom of gold its seat of purple, the middle of it being paved with love from the daughters of Jerusalem. Go out, you daughters of Zion, and see King Solomon with the crown with which his mother has crowned him in the day of his weddings, in the day of the gladness of his heart. Chapter 4 Lover Behold, you are beautiful, my love. Behold, you are beautiful. Your eyes are doves behind your veil. Your hair is as a flock of goats that descend from Mount Gilead. Your teeth are like a newly shorn flock which have come up from the washing, where every one of them has twins. None is bereaved among them. Your lips are like scarlet thread. Your mouth is lovely. Your temples are like a piece of pomegranate behind your veil. Your neck is like David's tower, built for an armory, on which a thousand shields hang, all the shields of the mighty men. Your two breasts are like two fawns that are twins of a roe, which feed among the lilies. Until the day is cool and the shadows flee away, I will go to the mountain of myrrh, to the hill of frankincense. You are all beautiful, my love. There is no spot in you. Come with me from Lebanon, my bride, with me from Lebanon. Look from the top of Amena, from the top of Sinar and Hermon, from the lion's dens, from the mountains of the leopards. You have ravished my heart, my sister, my bride. You have ravished my heart with one of your eyes, with one chain of your neck. 
how beautiful is your love my sister my bride how much better is your love than wine the fragrance of your perfumes than all kinds of spices your lips my bride drip like the honeycomb honey and milk are under your tongue the smell of your garments is like the smell of lebanon a locked-up garden is my sister my bride a locked-up spring a sealed fountain your shoots are an orchard of pomegranates with precious fruits henna with spikenard plants spikenard and saffron calamus and cinnamon with every kind of incense tree myrrh and aloes with all the best spices a fountain of gardens a well of living waters flowing streams from lebanon beloved awake north wind and come you south blow on my garden that its spices may flow out let my beloved come into his garden and taste his precious fruits chapter five lover i have come into my garden my sister my bride i have gathered my myrrh with my spice i have eaten my honeycomb with my honey i have drunk my wine with my milk friends eat friends drink yes drink abundantly beloved beloved i was asleep but my heart was awake it is the voice of my beloved who knocks open to me my sister my love my dove my undefiled for my head is filled with dew and my hair with the dampness of the night i have taken off my robe indeed must i put it on i have washed my feet indeed must i soil them my beloved thrust his hand in through the latch opening my heart pounded for him i rose up to open for my beloved my hands dripped with myrrh my fingers with liquid myrrh on the handles of the lock I opened to my beloved, but my beloved left and had gone away. My heart went out when he spoke. I looked for him, but I didn't find him. I called him, but he didn't answer. The watchmen who go about the city found me. They beat me. They bruised me. The keepers of the walls took my cloak away from me. I adjure you, daughters of Jerusalem, if you find my beloved, that you tell him that I am faint with love. Friends How is your beloved better than another beloved, you fairest among women? How is your beloved better than another beloved, that you do so adjure us? Beloved my beloved is white and ruddy the best among ten thousand his head is like the purest gold his hair is bushy black as a raven his eyes are like doves beside the water brooks washed with milk mounted like jewels his cheeks are like a bed of spices with towers of perfumes his lips are like lilies dropping liquid myrrh his hands are like rings of gold set with beryl. His body is like ivory work overlaid with sapphires. His legs are like pillars of marble set on sockets of fine gold. His appearance is like Lebanon, excellent as the cedars. His mouth is sweetness. Yes, he is altogether lovely. This is my beloved and this is my friend daughters of jerusalem chapter six friends where has your beloved gone you fairest among women where has your beloved turned that we may seek him with you 
beloved. My beloved has gone down to his garden, to the beds of spices, to feed in the gardens, and to gather lilies. I am my beloved's, and my beloved is mine. He browses among the lilies. Lover You are beautiful, my love, as Terza, lovely as Jerusalem, awesome as an army with banners. Turn away your eyes from me, for they have overcome me. Your hair is like a flock of goats that lie along the side of Gilead. Your teeth are like a flock of ewes, which have come up from the washing, of which every one has twins. No one is bereaved among them. Your temples are like a piece of a pomegranate behind your veil. There are sixty queens, eighty concubines, and virgins without number. My dove, my perfect one, is unique. She is her mother's only daughter. She is the favorite one of her who bore her. The daughters saw her and called her blessed, the queens and the concubines, and they praised her. Who is she who looks out as the morning, beautiful as the moon, clear as the sun, and awesome as an army with banners? I went down into the nut tree grove to see the green plants of the valley, to see whether the vine budded and the pomegranates were in flower. Without realizing it, my desire set me with my royal people's chariots. Friends Return, return, Shulamite. Return, return, that we may gaze at you. Lover Why do you desire to gaze at the Shulamite, as at the dance of Mahanaim? Chapter 7 how beautiful are your feet in sandals, princess daughter. Your rounded thighs are like jewels, the work of the hands of a skillful workman. Your body is like a round goblet, no mixed wine is wanting. Your waist is like a heap of wheat set about with lilies. Your two breasts are like two fawns that are twins of a robe. Your neck is like an ivory tower. Your eyes are like the pools in Heshbon by the gate of Bathrabim. Your nose is like the tower of Lebanon, which looks toward Damascus. Your head on you is like caramel. The hair of your head like purple. The king is held captive in its tresses. How beautiful and how pleasant you are, love. For delights. This, your stature, is like a palm tree, your breasts like its fruit. I said, I will climb up into the palm tree, I will take hold of its fruit. Let your breasts be like clusters of the vine, the smell of your breath like apples. Beloved, your mouth like the best wine that goes down smoothly for my beloved, gliding through the lips of those who are asleep. I am my beloved's. His desire is toward me. Come, my beloved, let's go out into the field. Let's lodge in the villages. Let's go early up to the vineyards. Let's see whether the vine has budded. Its blossom is open and the pomegranates are in flower. There I will give you my love. The mandrakes produce fragrance. At our doors are all kinds of precious fruits, new and old, which I have stored up for you, my beloved. Chapter 8 Oh, that you were like my brother, who nursed from the breasts of my mother. If I found you outside, I would kiss you. Yes, and no one would despise me. I would lead you, bringing you into my mother's house, who would instruct me. I would have you drink spiced wine, 
of the juice of my pomegranate. His left hand would be under my head. His right hand would embrace me. I adjure you, daughters of Jerusalem, that you not stir up nor awaken love until it so desires. Friends Who is this who comes up from the wilderness, leaning on her beloved? Beloved, under the apple tree I aroused you. There your mother conceived you. There she was in labor and bore you. Set me as a seal on your heart, as a seal on your arm. For love is strong as death. Jealousy is as cruel as Sheol. Its flashes are flashes of fire, a very flame of Yahweh. Many waters can't quench love, neither can floods drown it. If a man would give all the wealth of his house for love, he would be utterly scorned. Brothers We have a little sister. She has no breasts. What shall we do for our sister in the day when she is to be spoken for? If she is a wall, we will build on her a turret of silver. If she is a door, we will enclose her with boards of cedar. Beloved, I am a wall, and my breasts like towers. Then I was in his eyes like one who found peace. Solomon had a vineyard at Baal Haman. He leased out the vineyard to keepers. Each was to bring a thousand shekels of silver for its fruit. My own vineyard is before me. The thousand are for you, Solomon, two hundred for those who tend its fruit. Lover You who dwell in the gardens, with friends and attendants, let me hear your voice. Beloved Come away, my beloved. Be like a gazelle or a young stag on the mountains of spices. The Book of the Prophet Isaiah The Vision of Isaiah, the son of Amos, which he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem, in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah. Here heavens, and listen, earth, for Yahweh has spoken. I have nourished and brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. The ox knows his owner, and the donkey his master's crib. But Israel doesn't know. My people don't consider. Ah, sinful nation, a people loaded with iniquity, offspring of evildoers, children who deal corruptly. They have forsaken Yahweh. They have despised the Holy One of Israel. They are estranged and backward. Why should you be beaten more, that you revolt more and more? The whole head is sick, and the whole heart faint. From the sole of the foot, even to the head, there is no soundness in it. Wounds, welts and open sores they haven't been closed neither bandaged neither soothed with oil your country is desolate your cities are burned with fire strangers devour your land in your presence and it is desolate as overthrown by strangers the daughter of zion is left like a shelter in a vineyard like a hut in a field of melons like a besieged city. Unless Yahweh of armies had left to us a very small remnant, we would have been as Sodom. We would have been like Gomorrah. Hear Yahweh's word, you rulers of Sodom. Listen to the law of our God, you people of Gomorrah. What are the multitude of your sacrifices to me, says Yahweh? I have had enough of the burnt offerings of rams, and the fat of fed animals. 
I don't delight in the blood of bulls, or of lambs, or of male goats. When you come to appear before me, who has required this at your hand to trample my courts? Bring no more vain offerings. Incense is an abomination to me. New moons, Sabbaths, and convocations. I can't stand evil assemblies. My soul hates your new moons and your appointed feasts. They are a burden to me. I am weary of bearing them. When you spread out your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. Yes, when you make many prayers, I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. Wash yourselves. Make yourself clean. Put away the evil of your doings from before my eyes. Cease to do evil. Learn to do well. Seek justice. Relieve the oppressed. Judge the fatherless. Plead for the widow. Come now, and let's reason together, says Yahweh. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured with the sword, for the mouth of Yahweh has spoken it. How the faithful city has become a prostitute. She was full of justice, righteousness lodged in her. But now, murderers, your silver has become dross, your wine mixed with water. Your princes are rebellious and companions of thieves. Everyone loves bribes and follows after rewards. They don't judge the fatherless, neither does the cause of the widow come to them. Therefore the Lord, Yahweh of armies, the Mighty One of Israel, says, Ah, I will get relief from my adversaries and avenge myself on my enemies. And I will turn my hand on you, thoroughly purge away your dross and will take away all your tin. I will restore your judges as at the first and your counselors as at the beginning. Afterward, you shall be called the city of righteousness, a faithful town. Zion shall be redeemed with justice, and her converts with righteousness. But the destruction of transgressors and sinners shall be together, and those who forsake Yahweh shall be consumed. For they shall be ashamed of the oaks which you have desired, and you shall be confounded for the gardens that you have chosen. For you shall be as an oak whose leaf fades and as a garden that has no water. The strong will be like tinder, and his work like a spark. They will both burn together, and no one will quench them. Chapter 2 This is what Isaiah, the son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. It shall happen in the latter days, that the mountain of Yahweh's house shall be established on the top of the mountains, and shall be raised above the hills, and all nations shall flow to it. Many peoples shall go and say, Come, let's go up to the mountain of Yahweh, to the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion the law shall go out, and Yahweh's word from Jerusalem. He will judge between the nations and will decide concerning many peoples, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. House of Jacob, come and let's walk in the light of Yahweh, for you have forsaken your people the house of Jacob, because they are filled from the east with those who practice divination like the Philistines. 
and they clasp hands with the children of foreigners. Their land is full of silver and gold, neither is there any end of their treasures. Their land also is full of horses, neither is there any end of their chariots. Their land also is full of idols. They worship the work of their own hands, that which their own fingers have made. Man is brought low, and mankind is humbled. Therefore, don't forgive them. Enter into the rock, and hide in the dust, from before the terror of Yahweh, and from the glory of his majesty. The lofty looks of man will be brought low, the arrogance of men will be bowed down, and Yahweh alone will be exalted in that day. For there will be a day of Yahweh of armies, for all that is proud and arrogant, and for all that is lifted up, and it shall be brought low. For all the cedars of Lebanon that are high and lifted up, for all the oaks of Bashan, for all the high mountains, for all the hills that are lifted up, for every lofty tower, for every fortified wall, for all the ships of Tarshish, and for all pleasant imagery. The loftiness of man shall be bowed down, and the arrogance of men shall be brought low, and Yahweh alone shall be exalted in that day. The idols shall utterly pass away. Men shall go into the caves of the rocks and into the holes of the earth from before the terror of Yahweh and from the glory of his majesty when he arises to shake the earth mightily. In that day, men shall cast away their idols of silver and their idols of gold, which have been made for themselves to worship, to the moles and to the bats, to go into the caverns of the rocks and into the clefts of the ragged rocks, from before the terror of Yahweh and from the glory of his majesty, when he arises to shake the earth mightily. Stop trusting in man, whose breath is in his nostrils, for of what account is he? Chapter 3 For behold, the Lord, Yahweh of armies, takes away from Jerusalem and from Judah supply and support, the whole supply of bread and the whole supply of water, the mighty man, the man of war, the judge, the prophet, the diviner, the elder, the captain of fifty, the honorable man, the counselor, the skilled craftsman, and the clever enchanter. I will give boys to be their princes, and children shall rule over them. The people will be oppressed, every one by another, and every one by his neighbor. The child will behave himself proudly against the old man, and the wicked against the honorable. Indeed, a man shall take hold of his brother in the house of his father, saying, You have clothing, you be our ruler, and let this ruin be under your hand. In that day he will cry out, saying, I will not be a healer, for in my house is neither bread nor clothing. You shall not make me ruler of the people. For Jerusalem is ruined, and Judah is fallen, because their tongue and their doings are against Yahweh to provoke the eyes of his glory. The look of their faces testify against them. They parade their sin like Sodom. They don't hide it. Woe to their soul, for they have brought disaster upon themselves. Tell the righteous, good, for they shall eat the fruit of their deeds. Woe to the wicked, disaster is upon them, for the deeds of his hands will be paid back to him. As for my people, children are their oppressors, and women rule over them. My people, those who lead you cause you to err, and destroy the way of your paths. Yahweh stands up to contend and stands to judge the peoples. Yahweh will enter into judgment with the elders of his people and their leaders. It is you who have eaten up the vineyard, 
the plunder of the poor is in your houses what do you mean that you crush my people and grind the face of the poor says the lord yahweh of armies moreover yahweh said because the daughters of zion are arrogant and walk with outstretched necks and flirting eyes walking to trip as they go jingling ornaments on their feet therefore the lord brings sores on the crown of the head of the women of zion and yahweh will make their scalps bald in that day the lord will take away the beauty of their anklets the headbands the crescent necklaces the earrings the bracelets the veils the headdresses the ankle chains the sashes the perfume containers the charms the signet rings the nose rings the fine robes the capes the cloaks the purses the hand mirrors the fine linen garments the tiaras and the shawls it shall happen that instead of sweet spices there shall be rottenness instead of a belt a rope instead of well-set hair baldness instead of a robe a wearing of sackcloth and branding instead of beauty your men shall fall by the sword and your mighty in the war her gates shall lament and mourn and she shall be desolate and sit on the ground Chapter 4 Seven women shall take hold of one man in that day, saying, We will eat our own bread and wear our own clothing. Just let us be called by your name. Take away our reproach. In that day, Yahweh's branch will be beautiful and glorious, and the fruit of the land will be the beauty and glory of the survivors of Israel. It will happen that he who is left in Zion and he who remains in Jerusalem shall be called holy, even everyone who is written among the living in Jerusalem, when the Lord shall have washed away the filth of the daughters of Zion and shall have purged the blood of Jerusalem from within it by the spirit of justice and by the spirit of burning. Yahweh will create over the whole habitation of Mount Zion and over her assemblies a cloud and smoke by day and the shining of a flaming fire by night, for over all the glory will be a canopy. There will be a pavilion for a shade in the daytime from the heat and for a refuge and for a shelter from storm and from rain. Chapter 5 Let me sing for my well-beloved a song of my beloved about his vineyard. My beloved had a vineyard on a very fruitful hill. He dug it up, gathered out its stones, planted it with the choicest vine, built a tower in the middle of it, and also cut out a wine press therein. He looked for it to yield grapes but it yielded wild grapes. Now inhabitants of Jerusalem and men of Judah, please judge between me and my vineyard. What could have been done more to my vineyard that I have not done in it? Why, when I looked for it to yield grapes, did it yield wild grapes? Now I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will take away its hedge, and it will be eaten up. I will break down its wall, and it will be trampled down. I will lay it a wasteland. It won't be pruned nor hold, but it will grow briars and thorns. I will also command the clouds that they rain no rain on it. For the vineyard of Yahweh of armies is the house of Israel, and the men of Judah his pleasant plant. And he looked for justice, but behold oppression for righteousness but behold a cry of distress woe to those who join house to house who lay field to field until there is no room 
and you are made to dwell alone in the middle of the land. In my ears, Yahweh of armies says, Surely many houses will be desolate, even great and beautiful, unoccupied. For ten acres of vineyard shall yield one bath, and a homer of seed shall yield an ephah. Woe to those who rise up early in the morning, that they may follow strong drink, who stay late into the night until wine inflames them. The harp, lyre, tambourine, and flute with wine are at their feasts, but they don't respect the work of Yahweh neither have they considered the operation of his hands. Therefore my people go into captivity for lack of knowledge. Their honorable men are famished, and their multitudes are parched with thirst. Therefore Sheol has enlarged its desire and opened its mouth without measure, and their glory, their multitude, their pump, and he who rejoices among them descend into it so man is brought low mankind is humbled and the eyes of the arrogant ones are humbled but yahweh of armies is exalted in justice and god the holy one is sanctified in righteousness then the lambs will graze as in their pasture and strangers will eat the ruins of the rich Woe to those who draw iniquity with cords of falsehood and wickedness as with cart rope, who say, Let him make speed, let him hasten his work, that we may see it, and let the counsel of the Holy One of Israel draw near and come, that we may know it. Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness who put bitter for sweet, and sweet for bitter. Woe to those who are wise in their own eyes, and prudent in their own sight. Woe to those who are mighty to drink wine, and champions at mixing strong drink, who acquit the guilty for a bribe, but deny justice for the innocent. Therefore, as the tongue of fire devours the stubble, and as the dry grass sinks down in the flame, so their root shall be as rottenness, and their blossom shall go up as dust, because they have rejected the law of Yahweh of armies, and despised the word of the Holy One of Israel. Therefore Yahweh's anger burns against his people, and he has stretched out his hand against them, and has struck them, the mountains tremble, and their dead bodies are as refuse in the middle of the streets. For all this his anger is not turned away, but his hand is still stretched out. He will lift up a banner to the nations from far, and he will whistle for them from the end of the earth. Behold, they will come speedily and swiftly. No one shall be weary nor stumble among them, no one shall slumber nor sleep. Neither shall the belt of their waist be untied, nor the strap of their sandals be broken, whose arrows are sharp and all their bows bent. Their horses' hoofs will be like flint and their wheels like a whirlwind. Their roaring will be like a lioness. They will roar like young lions. Yes, they shall roar and seize their prey, and carry it off, and there will be no one to deliver. They will roar against them in that day, like the roaring of the sea. If one looks to the land, behold, darkness and distress. The light is darkened in its clouds. Chapter 6 In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above him stood the seraphim. Each one had six wings. With two he covered his face. With two he covered his feet. With two he flew. 
one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is Yahweh of armies. The whole earth is full of his glory. The foundations of the thresholds shook at the voice of him who called, and the house was filled with smoke. Then I said, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell among a people of unclean lips, for my eyes have seen the King, Yahweh of armies. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongs from off the altar. He touched my mouth with it and said, Behold, this has touched your lips, and your iniquity is taken away, and your sin forgiven. I heard the Lord's voice saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then I said, here I am, send me. He said, Go and tell this people, You hear indeed, but don't understand, And you see indeed, but don't perceive. Make the heart of this people fat, Make their ears heavy, and shut their eyes, Lest they see with their eyes, And hear with their ears and understand with their heart, and turn again, and be healed. Then I said, Lord, how long? He answered, Until cities are waste without inhabitant, and houses without man, and the land becomes utterly waste, and Yahweh has removed men far away, and the forsaken places are many within the land. If there is a tenth left in it, that also will in turn be consumed, as a terebinth and as an oak, whose stock remains when they are failed, so the holy seed is its stock. Chapter 7 In the days of Ahaz, the son of Jotham, the son of Uzziah, king of Judah, Rezan, the king of Syria, and Pekah, the son of Remaliah, king of Israel, went up to Jerusalem to war against it, but could not prevail against it. David's house was told, Syria is allied with Ephraim. His heart trembled, and the heart of his people, as the trees of the forest tremble with the wind. Then Yahweh said to Isaiah, Go out now to meet Ahaz, you and she or Jashub, your son, at the end of the conduit of the upper pool, on the highway of the fuller's field. Tell him, Be careful and keep calm. Don't be afraid. Neither let your heart be faint because of these two tales of smoking torches. For the fierce anger of reason and Syria, and of the son of Remaliah. Because Syria, Ephraim, and the son of Remaliah have plotted evil against you, saying, Let's go up against Judah and tear it apart and let's divide it among ourselves, and set up a king within it, even the son of Tabiel. This is what the Lord Yahweh says. It shall not stand, neither shall it happen. For the head of Syria is Damascus, and the head of Damascus is reason. And within sixty-five years Ephraim shall be broken in pieces, so that it shall not be a people. And the head of Ephraim is Samaria, and the head of Samaria is Remaliah's son. If you will not believe, surely you shall not be established. Yahweh spoke again to Ahaz, saying, Ask a sign of Yahweh your God. 
ask it either in the depth or in the height above. But Ahaz said, I won't ask. I won't tempt Yahweh. He said, Listen now, house of David. Is it not enough for you to try the patience of men that you will try the patience of my God also? Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin will conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. He shall eat butter and honey when he knows to refuse the evil and choose the good. For before the child knows to refuse the evil and choose the good, the land whose two kings you abhor shall be forsaken. Yahweh will bring on you, on your people, and on your father's house, days that have not come, from the day that Ephraim departed from Judah, even the king of Assyria. It will happen in that day that Yahweh will whistle for the fly that is in the uttermost part of the rivers of Egypt, and for the bee that is in the land of Assyria. They shall come, and shall all rest in the desolate valleys, in the clefts of the rocks, on all thorn hedges, and on all pastures. In that day the Lord will shave with a razor that is hired in the parts beyond the river, even with the king of Assyria, the head and the hair of the feet, and it shall also consume the beard. It shall happen in that day that a man shall keep alive a young cow and two sheep, and it shall happen that because of the abundance of milk which they shall give, he shall eat butter, for everyone will eat butter and honey that is left within the land. It will happen in that day that every place where there were a thousand vines at a thousand silver shekels shall be for briars and thorns. People will go there with arrows and with bow, because all the land will be briars and thorns. All the hills that were cultivated with the hoe, you shall not come there for fear of briars and thorns but it shall be for the sending out of oxen and for the treading of sheep. Chapter 8 Yahweh said to me, Take a large tablet and write on it with a man's pen, for Meher Shalal Hashbaz, and I will take for myself faithful witnesses to testify. Uriah the priest, and Zechariah the son of Jeberechiah. I went to the prophetess, and she conceived and bore a son. Then Yahweh said to me, Call his name Meher Shalal Hashbaz, for before the child knows how to say, My father and my mother, the riches of Damascus and the plunder of Samaria, will be carried away by the king of Assyria. Yahweh spoke to me yet again, saying, Because this people has refused the waters of Shiloh that go softly and rejoice in reason and Remaliah's son. Now therefore, behold, the Lord brings upon them the mighty flood waters of the river, the king of Assyria, and all his glory. It will come up over all its channels and go over all its banks. It will sweep onward into Judah. It will overflow and pass through. It will reach even to the neck, and the stretching out of its wings will fill the width of your land, Emmanuel. Make an uproar, you peoples, and be broken in pieces. Listen, all you from far countries, dress for battle and be shattered. Dress for battle and be shattered. Take counsel together and it will be brought to nothing. Speak the word and it will not stand, for God is with us. For Yahweh spoke this to me with a strong hand 
and instructed me not to walk in the way of this people, saying, Don't say a conspiracy concerning all about which this people say a conspiracy. Neither fear their threats, nor be terrorized. Yahweh of armies is who you must respect as holy. He is the one you must fear. He is the one you must dread. He will be a sanctuary, but for both houses of Israel, he will be a stumbling stone and a rock that makes them fall. For the people of Jerusalem, he will be a trap and a snare. Many will stumble over it, fall, be broken, be snared, and be captured. Wrap up the covenant. Seal the law among my disciples. I will wait for Yahweh, who hides his face from the house of Jacob, and I will look for him. Behold, I and the children whom Yahweh has given me are for signs and for wonders in Israel from Yahweh of armies who dwells in Mount Zion. When they tell you, consult with those who have familiar spirits and with the wizards who chirp and who mutter. Shouldn't a people consult with their God? Should they consult the dead on behalf of the living? Turn to the law and to the covenant. If they don't speak according to this word, surely there is no mourning for them. They will pass through it, very distressed and hungry. And it will happen that when they are hungry, they will worry and curse by their king and by their God. They will turn their faces upward and look to the earth and see distress, darkness, and the gloom of anguish, they will be driven into thick darkness. Chapter 9 But there shall be no more gloom for her who was in anguish. In the former time he brought into contempt the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, but in the latter time he has made it glorious by the way of the sea beyond the Jordan Galilee of the nations. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in the land of the shadow of death, on them the light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased their joy. They rejoice before you according to the joy in harvest, as men rejoice when they divide the plunder. For the yoke of his burden and the staff of his shoulder the rod of his oppressor. You have broken as in the day of Midian. For all the armor of the armed man in the noisy battle and the garments rolled in blood will be for burning, fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. His name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace there shall be no end. On David's throne and on his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from that time on, even forever. The zeal of Yahweh of armies will perform this. The Lord sent a word into Jacob, and it falls on Israel. All the people will know, including Ephraim and the inhabitants of Samaria, who say in pride and in arrogance of heart, The bricks have fallen, but we will build with cut stone. The sycamore fig trees have been cut down, but we will put cedars in their place. Therefore, Yahweh will set up on high against him the adversaries of reason and will stir up his enemies, the Syrians in front and the Philistines behind, and they will devour Israel with open mouth. For all this his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. Yet the people have not turned to him who struck him, 
neither have they sought Yahweh of armies. Therefore, Yahweh will cut off from Israel head and tail, palm branch and reed in one day. The elder and the honorable man is the head, and the prophet who teaches lies is the tail. For those who lead this people lead them astray, and those who are led by them are destroyed. Therefore, the Lord will not rejoice over their young men, neither will he have compassion on their fatherless and widows. For everyone is profane and an evildoer, and every mouth speaks folly. For all this his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. For wickedness burns like a fire. It devours the briars and thorns. Yes, it kindles in the thickets of the forest, and they roll upward in a column of smoke. Through Yahweh of armies' wrath, the land is burned up, and the people are the fuel for the fire. No one spares his brother. One will devour on the right hand and be hungry and he will eat on the left hand, and they will not be satisfied. Everyone will eat the flesh of his own arm. Manasseh, Ephraim, and Ephraim, Manasseh, and they together shall be against Judah. For all this his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. Chapter 10 Woe to those who decree unrighteous decrees, and to the writers who write oppressive decrees, to deprive the needy from justice, and to rob the poor among my people of their rights, that widows may be their plunder, and that they may make the fatherless their prey. What will you do in the day of visitation, and in the desolation which will come from afar? To whom will you flee for help? Where will you leave your wealth? They will only bow down under the prisoners and will fall under the slain. For all this his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. Alas, Assyrian, the rod of my anger, the staff in whose hand is my indignation, I will send him against a profane nation and against the people who anger me, I will give him a command to take the plunder and to take the prey, and to tread them down like the mire of the streets. However, he doesn't mean so, neither does his heart think so, but it is in his heart to destroy and to cut off not a few nations. For he says, Aren't all of my princes kings? Isn't Calno like Carchemish? Isn't Hamath like Arpad? Isn't Samaria like Damascus? As my hand has found the kingdoms of the idols, whose engraved images exceeded those of Jerusalem and of Samaria, shall I not, as I have done to Samaria and her idols, so do to Jerusalem and her idols? Therefore it will happen that, when the Lord has performed his whole work on Mount Zion and on Jerusalem, I will punish the fruit of the willful proud heart of the king of Assyria and the insolence of his arrogant looks. For he has said, By the strength of my hand I have done it, and by my wisdom, for I have understanding, and I have removed the boundaries of the peoples, and have robbed their treasures. Like a valiant man, I have brought down their rulers. My hand has found the riches of the peoples like a nest, and like one gathers eggs that are abandoned. I have gathered all the earth. There was no one who moved their wing, or that opened their mouth, or chirped. Should an axe brag against him who chops with it? Should a saw exalt itself above him who saws with it? As if a rod should lift those who lift it up, or as if a staff should lift up someone who is not wood. Therefore the Lord, 
Yahweh of armies, will send among his fat ones leanness, and under his glory a burning will be kindled like the burning of fire. The light of Israel will be for a fire, and his holy one for a flame, and it will burn and devour his thorns and his briars in one day. He will consume the glory of his forest and of his fruitful field, both soul and body. It will be as when a standard-bearer faints. The remnant of the trees of his forest shall be few, so that a child could write their number. It will come to pass in that day that the remnant of Israel and those who have escaped from the house of Jacob will no more again lean on him who struck them but shall lean on Yahweh, the Holy One of Israel, in truth. A remnant will return, even the remnant of Jacob, to the mighty God. For though your people, Israel, are like the sand of the sea, only a remnant of them will return. A destruction is determined, overflowing with righteousness. For the Lord, Yahweh of armies, will make a full end, and that determined throughout all the earth. Therefore the Lord, Yahweh of armies, says, My people who dwell in Zion, don't be afraid of the Assyrian. Though he strike you with the rod, and lift up his staff against you, as Egypt did. For yet a very little while, and the indignation against you will be accomplished, and my anger will be directed to his destruction. Yahweh of armies will stir up a scourge against him, as in the slaughter of Midian at the rock of Oreb. His rod will be over the sea, and he will lift it up like he did against Egypt. It will happen in that day that his burden will depart from off your shoulder, and his yoke from off your neck and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing oil. He has come to Aeth. He has passed through Migron. At Migmash he stores his baggage. They have gone over the pass. They have taken up their lodging at Geba. Ramah trembles. Gibeah of Saul has fled. Cry aloud with your voice, daughter of Galim. Listen, Laisha, you poor Anathoth, Madmena is a fugitive. The inhabitants of Gebim flee for safety. This very day he will halt at Nob. He shakes his hand at the mountain of the daughter of Zion, the hill of Jerusalem. Behold, the Lord, Yahweh of armies, will lop the boughs with terror. The tall will be cut down, and the lofty will be brought low. He will cut down the thickets of the forest with iron, and Lebanon will fall by the mighty one. Chapter 11 A shoot will come out of the stock of Jesse, and a branch out of his roots will bear fruit. Yahweh's spirit will rest on him the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of Yahweh. His delight will be in the fear of Yahweh. He will not judge by the sight of his eyes, neither decide by the hearing of his ears, but with righteousness he will judge the poor and decide with equity for the humble of the earth. He will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he will kill the wicked. Righteousness will be the belt of his waist, and faithfulness the belt of his loins. The wolf will live with the lamb, and the leopard will lie down with the young goat, the calf, the young lion, and the fattened calf together, and a little child will lead them. The cow and the bear will graze. Their young ones will lie down together. The lion will eat straw like the ox. The nursing child will play near a cobra's hole, 
and the weaned child will put his hand on the viper's den. They will not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of Yahweh as the waters cover the sea. It will happen in that day that the nations will seek the root of Jesse, who stands as a banner of the peoples, and his resting place will be glorious. It will happen in that day that the Lord will set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant that is left of his people from Assyria, from Egypt, from Pathros, from Cush, from Elam, from Shinar, from Hamath, and from the islands of the sea. He will set up a banner for the nations and will assemble the outcasts of Israel and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. The envy also of Ephraim will depart, and those who persecute Judah will be cut off. Ephraim won't envy Judah, and Judah won't persecute Ephraim. They will fly down on the shoulders of the Philistines on the west. Together they will plunder the children of the east. They will extend their power over Edom and Moab, and the children of Ammon will obey them. Yahweh will utterly destroy the tongue of the Egyptian sea, and with his scorching wind he will wave his hand over the river and will split it into seven streams and cause men to march over in sandals. There will be a highway for the remnant that is left of his people from Assyria, like there was for Israel in the day that he came up out of the land of Egypt. Chapter 12 In that day you will say, I will give thanks to you, Yahweh, for though you were angry with me, your anger has turned away and you comfort me. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and will not be afraid, for Yah, Yahweh, is my strength and song, and he has become my salvation. Therefore, with joy, you will draw water out of the wells of salvation. In that day, you will say, Give thanks to Yahweh, call on his name, declare his doings among the peoples, proclaim that his name is exalted, sing to Yahweh, for he has done excellent things. Let this be known in all the earth, Cry aloud and shout, you inhabitant of Zion, for the Holy One of Israel is great among you. Chapter 13 The Burden of Babylon, which Isaiah, the son of Amos, saw. Set up a banner on the bare mountain. Lift up your voice to them. Wave your hand, that they may go into the gates of the nobles. I have commanded my consecrated ones. Yes, I have called my mighty men for my anger, even my proudly exulting ones. The noise of a multitude is in the mountains, as of a great people. The noise of an uproar of the kingdoms of the nations gathered together. Yahweh of armies is mustering the army for the battle. They come from a far country, from the uttermost part of heaven, even Yahweh and the weapons of his indignation to destroy the whole land. Well, for the day of Yahweh is at hand. It will come as destruction from the Almighty. Therefore, all hands will be feeble and everyone's heart will melt. They will be dismayed. Pangs and sorrows will seize them. They will be in pain like a woman in labor. They will look in amazement one at another. Their faces will be faces of flame. Behold, the day of Yahweh comes, cruel with wrath and fierce anger, to make the land a desolation, and to destroy its sinners out of it. For the stars of the sky and its constellations 
will not give their light. The sun will be darkened in its going out, and the moon will not cause its light to shine. I will punish the world for their evil and the wicked for their iniquity. I will cause the arrogance of the proud to cease and will humble the arrogance of the terrible. I will make people more rare than fine gold, even a person than the pure gold of Ophir. Therefore, I will make the heavens tremble, and the earth will be shaken out of its place in Yahweh of armies' wrath and in the day of his fierce anger. It will happen that like a hunted gazelle and like sheep that no one gathers, they will each turn to their own people and will each flee to their own land. Everyone who is found will be thrust through. Everyone who is captured will fall by the sword. Their infants also will be dashed in pieces before their eyes. Their houses will be ransacked and their wives raped. Behold, I will stir up the Medes against them who will not value silver, and as for gold, they will not delight in it. Their bows will dash the young men in pieces, and they shall have no pity on the fruit of the womb. Their eyes will not spare children. Babylon, the glory of kingdoms, the beauty of the Chaldeans' pride, will be like when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. It will never be inhabited neither will it be lived in from generation to generation. The Arabian will not pitch a tent there, neither will shepherds make their flocks lie down there. But wild animals of the desert will lie there, and their houses will be full of jackals. Ostriches will dwell there, and wild goats will frolic there. Wolves will cry in their fortresses, and jackals in the pleasant palaces. Her time is near to come, and her days will not be prolonged. Chapter 14 For Yahweh will have compassion on Jacob, and will yet choose Israel, and set them in their own land. The foreigner will join himself with them, and they will unite with the house of Jacob. The peoples will take them and bring them to their place. The house of Israel will possess them in Yahweh's land for servants and for handmaids. They will take as captives those whose captives they were, and they shall rule over their oppressors. It will happen in the day that Yahweh will give you rest from your sorrow, from your trouble, and from the hard service in which you were made to serve that you will take up this parable against the king of Babylon and say, How the oppressor has ceased! The golden city has ceased! Yahweh has broken the staff of the wicked, the scepter of the rulers, who struck the peoples in wrath with a continual stroke, who ruled the nations in anger with a persecution that no one restrained. The whole earth is at rest and is quiet, they break out in song. Yes, the cypress trees rejoice with you, with the cedars of Lebanon, saying, Since you are humbled, no lumberjack has come up against us. Sheol from beneath has moved for you to meet you at your coming. It stirs up the departed spirits for you, even all the rulers of the earth, it has raised up from their thrones all the kings of the nations. They all will answer and ask you, Have you also become as weak as we are? Have you become like us? Your pomp is brought down to Sheol with the sound of your stringed instruments. Maggots are spread out under you, and worms cover you. How you have fallen from heaven, shining one! son of the dawn, how you are cut down to the ground who laid the nations low. You said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. 
I will sit on the mountain of assembly in the far north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will make myself like the Most High. Yet you shall be brought down to Sheol, to the depths of the pit. Those who see you will stare at you. They will ponder you, saying, Is this the man who made the earth to tremble, who shook kingdoms, who made the world like a wilderness and overthrew its cities, who didn't release his prisoners to their home? All the kings of the nations sleep in glory everyone in his own house but you are cast away from your tomb like an abominable branch clothed with the slain who are thrust through with the sword who go down to the stones of the pit like a dead body trodden underfoot you will not join them in burial because you have destroyed your land you have killed your people the offspring of evildoers will not be named forever. Prepare for slaughter of his children because of the iniquity of their fathers, that they not rise up and possess the earth and fill the surface of the world with cities. I will rise up against them, says Yahweh of armies, and cut off from Babylon name and remnant and son and son's son, says Yahweh. I will also make it a possession for the porcupine and pools of water. I will sweep it with the broom of destruction, says Yahweh of armies. Yahweh of armies has sworn, saying, Surely as I have thought, so shall it happen. And as I have purposed, so shall it stand, that I will break the Assyrian in my land and tread him underfoot on my mountains. Then his yoke will leave them, and his burden leave their shoulders. This is the plan that is determined for the whole earth. This is the hand that is stretched out over all the nations. For Yahweh of armies has planned, and who can stop it? His hand is stretched out, and who can turn it back? This burden was in the year that King Ahaz died. Don't rejoice, O Philistia, all of you, because the rod that struck you is broken. For out of the serpent's root an adder will emerge, and his fruit will be a fiery flying serpent. The firstborn of the poor will eat, and the needy will lie down in safety, and I will kill your root with famine and your remnant will be killed. Howl, gate, cry, city, you are melted away, Philistia, all of you, for smoke comes out of the north, and there is no straggler in his ranks. What will they answer the messengers of the nation? That Yahweh has founded Zion, and in her the afflicted of his people will take refuge. Chapter 15 The Burden of Moab For in a night, Ar of Moab is laid waste and brought to nothing. For in a night, Kir of Moab is laid waste and brought to nothing. They have gone up to Baeth and to Dibon, to the high places, to weep. Moab wails over Nebo and over Madaba, baldness is on all of their heads. Every beard is cut off. In their streets they clothe themselves in sackcloth. In their streets and on their housetops, everyone wails, weeping abundantly. Heshbon cries out with Eliela. Their voice is heard even to Jahaz. Therefore the armed men of Moab cry aloud, their souls tremble within them. My heart cries out for Moab. Her nobles flee to Zoar, to Eglath Shilishala, for they go up by the ascent of Luhith with weeping. For on the way to Horonaim they raise up a cry of destruction. For the waters of Nimrim will be desolate. For the grass has withered away, the tender grass fails. 
there is no green thing. Therefore, they will carry away the abundance they have gotten and that which they have stored up over the brook of the willows. For the cry has gone around the borders of Moab, its wailing to Eglaim, and its wailing to Beer Elam. For the waters of Diamond are full of blood, for I will bring yet more on Diamond, a lion on those of Moab who escape, and on the remnant of the land. Chapter 16 Send the lambs for the ruler of the land, from Selah to the wilderness, to the mountain of the daughter of Zion. For it will be that as wandering birds, as a scattered nest, so will the daughters of Moab be at the fords of the Arnon. Give counsel, execute justice, make your shade like the night in the middle of the noonday, hide the outcasts, don't betray the fugitive, let my outcasts dwell with you. As for Moab, be a hiding place for him from the face of the destroyer, for the extortionist is brought to nothing, destruction ceases, the oppressors are consumed out of the land. A throne will be established in loving kindness. One will sit on it in truth, in the tent of David, judging, seeking justice, and swift to do righteousness. We have heard of the pride of Moab, that he is very proud, even of his arrogance, his pride, and his wrath. His boastings are nothing. Therefore, Moab will wail for Moab. Everyone will wail. You will mourn for the raisin cakes of Kir Hariseth, utterly stricken. For the fields of Heshbon languish with the vine of Sibma. The lords of the nations have broken down its choice branches, which reached even to Jazer, which wandered into the wilderness. Its shoots were spread abroad. They passed over the sea. Therefore, I will weep with the weeping of Jazer for the vine of Sibma. I will water you with my tears, Heshbon and Eliela, for on your summer fruits and on your harvest the battle shout has fallen. Gladness is taken away and joy out of the fruitful field. And in the vineyards there will be no singing neither joyful noise. Nobody will tread out wine in the presses. I have made the shouting stop. Therefore, my heart sounds like a harp for Moab, and my inward parts for Kir Hiris. It will happen that when Moab presents himself, when he wearies himself on the high place and comes to his sanctuary to pray, that he will not prevail. This is the word that Yahweh spoke concerning Moab in time past. But now Yahweh has spoken, saying, Within three years, as a worker bound by contract would count them, the glory of Moab shall be brought into contempt with all his great multitude, and the remnant will be very small and feeble. Chapter 17 the Burden of Damascus Behold, Damascus is taken away from being a city, and it will be a ruinous heap. The cities of Aurora are forsaken. They will be for flocks, which shall lie down, and no one shall make them afraid. The fortress will cease from Ephraim, and the kingdom from Damascus, and the remnant of Syria. They will be as the glory of the children of Israel, says Yahweh of armies. It will happen in that day that the glory of Jacob will be made thin, and the fatness of his flesh will become lean. It will be like when the harvester gathers the wheat and his arm reaps the grain. Yes, it will be like when one gleans grain in the valley of Rephaim. Yet gleanings will be left there, like the shaking of an olive tree, two or three olives in the top of the uppermost bough, 
four or five in the outermost branches of a fruitful tree, says Yahweh, the God of Israel. In that day, people will look to their Maker, and their eyes will have respect for the Holy One of Israel. They will not look to the altars, the work of their hands, neither shall they respect that which their fingers have made, either the Asherah poles or the incense altars. In that day, their strong cities will be like the forsaken places in the woods and on the mountain top, which were forsaken from before the children of Israel. And it will be a desolation, for you have forgotten the God of your salvation and have not remembered the rock of your strength. Therefore you plant pleasant plants and set out foreign seedlings. In the day of your planting, you hedge it in. In the morning you make your seed blossom, but the harvest flees away in the day of grief and of desperate sorrow. Ah, the uproar of many peoples, who roar like the roaring of the seas, and the rushing of nations, that rush like the rushing of mighty waters. The nations will rush like the rushing of many waters, but he will rebuke them, and they will flee far off and will be chased like the chaff of the mountains before the wind, and like the whirling dust before the storm. At evening, behold, terror. Before the morning, they are no more. This is the portion of those who plunder us, and the lot of those who rob us. Chapter 18 Ah! the land of the rustling of wings, which is beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, that sends ambassadors by the sea, even in vessels of papyrus on the waters, saying, Go, you swift messengers, to a nation tall and smooth, to a people awesome from their beginning onward, a nation that measures out and treads down, whose land the rivers divide, all you inhabitants of the world and you dwellers on the earth, when a banner is lifted up on the mountains, look, when the trumpet is blown, listen, for Yahweh said to me, I will be still, and I will see in my dwelling place, like clear heat in sunshine, like a cloud of dew in the heat of harvest. For before the harvest, when the blossom is over, and the flower becomes a ripening grape. He will cut off the sprigs with pruning hooks, and he will cut down and take away the spreading branches. They will be left together for the ravenous birds of the mountains and for the animals of the earth. The ravenous birds will summer on them, and all the animals of the earth will winter on them. In that time, a present will be brought to Yahweh of armies from the people, tall and smooth, even from a people awesome from their beginning onward, a nation that measures out and treads down, whose land the rivers divide, to the place of the name of Yahweh of armies, Mount Zion. Chapter 19 The Burden of Egypt Behold, Yahweh rides on a swift cloud and comes to Egypt. The idols of Egypt will tremble at his presence, and the heart of Egypt will melt within it. I will stir up the Egyptians against the Egyptians, and they will fight everyone against his brother, and everyone against his neighbor, city against city, and kingdom against kingdom. The spirit of Egypt will fail within it. I will destroy its counsel. They will seek the idols, the charmers, those who have familiar spirits, and the wizards. I will give over the Egyptians into the hand of a cruel lord. A fierce king will rule over them, says the Lord, Yahweh of armies. The waters will fail from the sea and the river will be wasted and become dry. The rivers will become foul. The streams of Egypt will be diminished and dried up. 
the reeds and flags will wither away. The meadows by the Nile, by the brink of the Nile, and all the sown fields of the Nile will become dry, be driven away, and be no more. The fishermen will lament, and all those who fish in the Nile will mourn, and those who spread nets on the waters will languish. Moreover, those who work in combed flax and those who weave white cloth will be confounded. The pillars will be broken in pieces. All those who work for hire will be grieved in soul. The princes of Zoan are utterly foolish. The counsel of the wisest counselors of Pharaoh has become stupid. How do you say to Pharaoh, I am the son of the wise, the son of ancient kings? Where then are your wise men? Let them tell you now, and let them know what Yahweh of armies has purposed concerning Egypt. The princes of Zoan have become fools. The princes of Memphis are deceived. They have caused Egypt to go astray, who are the cornerstone of her tribes. Yahweh has mixed a spirit of perverseness in the middle of her, and they have caused Egypt to go astray in all of its works, like a drunken man staggers in his vomit. Neither shall there be any work for Egypt, which head or tail, palm branch or rush, may do. In that day, the Egyptians will be like women. They will tremble in fear because of the shaking of Yahweh of armies' hand, which he shakes over them. The land of Judah will become a terror to Egypt. Everyone to whom mention is made of it will be afraid because of the plans of Yahweh of armies, which he determines against it. In that day, there will be five cities in the land of Egypt that speak the language of Canaan and swear to Yahweh of armies. One will be called the City of Destruction. In that day, there will be an altar to Yahweh in the middle of the land of Egypt and a pillar to Yahweh at its border. It will be for a sign and for a witness to Yahweh of armies in the land of Egypt for they will cry to Yahweh because of oppressors, and he will send them a savior and a defender, and he will deliver them. Yahweh will be known to Egypt, and the Egyptians will know Yahweh in that day. Yes, they will worship with sacrifice and offering, and will vow a vow to Yahweh, and will perform it. Yahweh will strike Egypt, striking and healing, they will return to Yahweh, and he will be entreated by them, and will heal them. In that day, there will be a highway out of Egypt to Assyria, and the Assyrians shall come into Egypt, and the Egyptian into Assyria, and the Egyptians will worship with the Assyrians. In that day, Israel will be the third with Egypt and with Assyria, a blessing within the earth because Yahweh of armies has blessed them, saying, Blessed be Egypt, my people, Assyria, the work of my hands, and Israel, my inheritance. Chapter 20 In the year that Tartan came to Ashdod, when Sargon, the king of Assyria, sent him, and he fought against Ashdod and took it, at that time, Yahweh spoke by Isaiah, the son of Amos, saying, Go, and loosen the sackcloth from off your waist, and take your shoes from off your feet. He did so, walking naked and barefoot. Yahweh said, As my servant Isaiah has walked naked and barefoot, three years, for a sign and a wonder concerning Egypt and concerning Ethiopia. So the king of Assyria will lead away the captives of Egypt and the exiles of Ethiopia, young and old, naked and barefoot, 
and with buttocks uncovered, to the shame of Egypt. They will be dismayed and confounded because of Ethiopia, their expectation, and of Egypt, their glory. The inhabitants of this coastland will say in that day, Behold, this is our expectation, where we fled for help to be delivered from the king of Assyria, and we, how will we escape? Chapter 21 The Burden of the Wilderness of the Sea As whirlwinds in the south sweep through, it comes from the wilderness, from an awesome land. A grievous vision is declared to me. The treacherous man deals treacherously, and the destroyer destroys. Go up, Elam, attack. I have stopped all of Media's sighing. Therefore, my thighs are filled with anguish. Pains have taken hold on me like the pains of a woman in labor. I am in so much pain that I can't hear. I so am dismayed that I can't see. My heart flutters. Horror has frightened me. The twilight that I desired has been turned into trembling for me. They prepare the table. They set the watch. They eat. They drink. Rise up you princes, oil the shield. For the Lord said to me, Go, set a watchman, let him declare what he sees. When he sees a troop, horsemen in pairs, a troop of donkeys, a troop of camels, he shall listen diligently with great attentiveness. He cried like a lion, Lord, I stand continually on the watchtower in the daytime, and every night I stay at my post. Behold, here comes a troop of men, horsemen in pairs. He answered, Fallen, fallen is Babylon, and all the engraved images of her gods are broken to the ground. You are my threshing and the grain of my floor. That which I have heard from Yahweh of armies, the God of Israel, I have declared to you. The Burden of Duma One calls to me out of Seir, Watchman, what of the night? Watchman, what of the night? The watchman said, The morning comes, and also the night. If you will inquire, inquire. Come back again. The Burden on Arabia In the forest in Arabia you will lodge, you caravans of Dedanites. They brought water to him who was thirsty. The inhabitants of the land of Tema met the fugitives with their bread, for they fled away from the swords, from the drawn sword, from the bent bow, and from the heat of battle. For the Lord said to me, Within a year, as a worker bound by contract would count it, all the glory of Keter will fail, and the residue of the number of the archers, the mighty men of the children of Keter, will be few. For Yahweh, the God of Israel, has spoken it. Chapter 22 the Burden of the Valley of Vision What ails you now, that you have all gone up to the housetops, you that are full of shouting, a tumultuous city, a joyous town? Your slain are not slain with the sword, neither are they dead in battle. All your rulers fled away together. They were bound by the archers. All who were found by you were bound together. They fled far away. Therefore I said, Look away from me. I will weep bitterly. Don't labor to comfort me for the destruction of the daughter of my people, for it is a day of confusion 
and of treading down and of perplexity from the Lord, Yahweh of armies, in the valley of vision, a breaking down of the walls and a crying to the mountains. Elam carried his quiver with chariots of men and horsemen, and Kir uncovered the shield. Your choicest valleys were full of chariots, and the horsemen set themselves in array at the gate. He took away the covering of Judah, and you looked in that day to the armor in the house of the forest. You saw the breaches of David's city, that they were many, and you gathered together the waters of the lower pool. You counted the houses of Jerusalem, and you broke down the houses to fortify the wall. You also made a reservoir between the two walls for the water of the old pool. But you didn't look to him who had done this, neither did you have respect for him who purposed it long ago. In that day, the Lord, Yahweh of armies, called to weeping and to mourning and to baldness, and to dressing in sackcloth. And behold, joy and gladness, killing cattle and killing sheep, eating meat and drinking wine. Let's eat and drink, for tomorrow we will die. Yahweh of armies revealed himself in my ears. Surely this iniquity will not be forgiven you until you die, says the Lord, Yahweh of armies. Thus says the Lord, Yahweh of armies, Go, get yourself to this treasurer, even to Shebna, who is over the house, and say, What are you doing here? Who has you here? That you have dug out a tomb here, cutting himself out a tomb on high, chiseling a habitation for himself in the rock. Behold, Yahweh will overcome you, and hurl you away violently. Yes, he will grasp you firmly. He will surely wind you around and around and throw you like a ball into a large country. There you will die, and there the chariots of your glory will be. You, shame of your Lord's house, I will thrust you from your office. You will be pulled down from your station. It will happen in that day that I will call my servant Eliakim, the son of Hilkiah, and I will clothe him with your robe and strengthen him with your belt. I will commit your government into his hand, and he will be a father to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. I will lay the key of David's house on his shoulder. He will open, and no one will shut. He will shut, and no one will open. I will fasten him like a nail in a sure place. He will be for a throne of glory to his father's house. They will hang on him all the glory of his father's house, the offspring and the issue, every small vessel, from the cups even to all the pitchers. In that day, says Yahweh of armies, the nail that was fastened in a sure place will give way. It will be cut down and fall. The burden that was on it will be cut off, for Yahweh has spoken it. Chapter 23 The Burden of Tyre Howl, you ships of Tarshish, for it is laid waste so that there is no house, no entering in. From the land of Kittim it is revealed to them. Be still, you inhabitants of the coast, you whom the merchants of Sidon that pass over the sea have replenished. On great waters, the seed of the Shihor, the harvest of the Nile, was her revenue. She was the market of nations. Be ashamed, Sidon, for the sea has spoken, the stronghold of the sea, saying, I have not travailed, nor given birth, neither have I nourished young men, nor brought up virgins. 
when the report comes to Egypt, they will be in anguish at the report of Tyre. Pass over to Tarshish. Well, you inhabitants of the coast, is this your joyous city, whose antiquity is of ancient days, whose feet carried her far away to travel? Who has planned this against Tyre, the giver of crowns, whose merchants are princes, whose traders are the honorable of the earth? Yahweh of armies has planned it, to stain the pride of all glory, to bring into contempt all the honorable of the earth. Pass through your land like the Nile, daughter of Tarshish. There is no restraint any more. He has stretched out his hand over the sea. He has shaken the kingdoms. Yahweh has ordered the destruction of Canaan's strongholds. He said, You shall rejoice no more, you oppressed virgin daughter of Sidon. Arise, pass over to Kittim. Even there you will have no rest. Behold, the land of the Chaldeans. This people was not. The Assyrians founded it for those who dwell in the wilderness. They set up their towers. They overthrew its palaces. They made it a ruin. Howl, you ships of Tarshish, for your stronghold is laid waste. It will come to pass in that day that Tyre will be forgotten seventy years, according to the days of one king. After the end of seventy years, it will be to Tyre like in the song of the prostitute. Take a harp. Go about the city, you prostitute that has been forgotten. Make sweet melody. Sing many songs that you may be remembered. It will happen after the end of seventy years that Yahweh will visit Tyre, and she shall return to her wages, and will play the prostitute with all the kingdoms of the world on the surface of the earth. Her merchandise and her wages will be holiness to Yahweh. It will not be treasured nor laid up, for her merchandise will be for those who dwell before Yahweh, to eat sufficiently and for durable clothing. Chapter 24 Behold, Yahweh makes the earth empty, makes it waste, turns it upside down and scatters its inhabitants. It will be as with the people, so with the priest, as with the servant, so with his master, as with the maid, so with her mistress, as with the buyer, so with the seller, as with the creditor, so with the debtor, as with the taker of interest, so with the giver of interest. The earth will be utterly emptied and utterly laid waste, for Yahweh has spoken this word. The earth mourns and fades away. The world languishes and fades away. The lofty people of the earth languish. The earth also is polluted under its inhabitants because they have transgressed the laws, violated the statutes, and broken the everlasting covenant. Therefore, the curse has devoured the earth and those who dwell therein are found guilty. Therefore, the inhabitants of the earth are burned, and few men are left. The new wine mourns, the vine languishes, all the merry-hearted sigh, the mirth of tambourines ceases, the sound of those who rejoice ends, the joy of the harp ceases. They will not drink wine with a song. Strong drink will be bitter to those who drink it. The confused city is broken down. Every house is shut up that no man may come in. There is a crying in the streets because of the wine. All joy is darkened. The mirth of the land is gone. The city is left in desolation and the gate is struck with destruction, for it will be so within the earth among the peoples, as the shaking of an olive tree, as the gleanings when the vintage is done.
These shall lift up their voice. They will shout for the majesty of Yahweh. They cry aloud from the sea. Therefore, glorify Yahweh in the east, even the name of Yahweh, the God of Israel, in the islands of the sea. From the uttermost part of the earth have we heard songs. Glory to the righteous. But I said, I pine away, I pine away. Woe is me. The treacherous have dealt treacherously. Yes, the treacherous have dealt very treacherously. Fear, the pit, and the snare are on you who inhabit the earth. It will happen that he who flees from the noise of the fear will fall into the pit, and he who comes up out of the middle of the pit will be taken in the snare. For the windows on high are opened, and the foundations of the earth tremble. The earth is utterly broken. The earth is torn apart. The earth is shaken violently. The earth will stagger like a drunken man and will sway back and forth like a hammock. Its disobedience will be heavy on it, and it will fall and not rise again. It shall happen in that day that Yahweh will punish the army of the high ones on high and the kings of the earth on the earth. They shall be gathered together as prisoners are gathered in the pit and shall be shut up in the prison. And after many days shall they be visited. Then the moon shall be confounded and the sun ashamed. For Yahweh of armies will reign on Mount Zion and in Jerusalem and before his elders will be glory. Chapter 25 Yahweh, you are my God. I will exalt you. I will praise your name, for you have done wonderful things, things planned long ago, in complete faithfulness and truth. For you have made a city into a heap, a fortified city into a ruin, a palace of strangers to be no city. It will never be built. Therefore, a strong people will glorify you. A city of awesome nations will fear you. For you have been a stronghold to the poor, a stronghold to the needy in his distress, a refuge from the storm, a shade from the heat, when the blast of the dreaded ones is like a storm against the wall. As the heat in a dry place will you bring down the noise of strangers, as the heat by the shade of a cloud, the song of the dreaded ones will be brought low. In this mountain, Yahweh of armies will make all peoples a feast of choice meat, a feast of choice wines, of choice meat full of marrow, of well-refined choice wines. He will destroy in this mountain the surface of the covering that covers all peoples, and the veil that is spread over all nations. He has swallowed up death forever. The Lord Yahweh will wipe away tears from off all faces. He will take the reproach of his people away from off all the earth, for Yahweh has spoken it. It shall be said in that day, Behold, this is our God. We have waited for him, and he will save us. This is Yahweh. We have waited for him. We will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. For in this mountain, Yahweh's hand will rest. Moab will be trodden down in his place, even like straw is trodden down in the water of the dung hill. He will spread out his hands in the middle of it, like one who swims spreads out hands to swim but his pride will be humbled together with the craft of his hands. He has brought the high fortress of your walls down, laid low, and brought to the ground, even to the dust. Chapter 26 In that day, this song will be sung in the land of Judah. We have a strong city, 
God appoints salvation for walls and bulwarks. Open the gates that the righteous nation may enter, the one which keeps faith. You will keep whoever's mind is steadfast in perfect peace, because he trusts in you. Trust in Yahweh forever, for in Yah, Yahweh is an everlasting rock, for he has brought down those who dwell on high, the lofty city. He lays it low. He lays it low even to the ground. He brings it even to the dust. The foot shall tread it down, even the feet of the poor and the steps of the needy. The way of the just is uprightness. You who are upright make the path of the righteous level. Yes, in the way of your judgments, Yahweh, have we waited for you. Your name and your renown are the desire of our soul. With my soul I have desired you in the night. Yes, with my spirit within me I will seek you earnestly. For when your judgments are in the earth, the inhabitants of the world learn righteousness. Let favor be shown to the wicked, yet he will not learn righteousness. In the land of uprightness, he will deal wrongfully and will not see Yahweh's majesty. Yahweh, your hand is lifted up, yet they don't see, but they will see your zeal for the people and be disappointed. Yes, fire will consume your adversaries. Yahweh, you will ordain peace for us, for you have also done all our work for us. Yahweh, our God, other lords besides you have had dominion over us, but by you only will we make mention of your name. The dead shall not live, the departed spirits shall not rise. Therefore, you have visited and destroyed them and caused all memory of them to perish. You have increased the nation, O Yahweh. You have increased the nation. You are glorified. You have enlarged all the borders of the land. Yahweh, in trouble they have visited you. They poured out a prayer when your chastening was on them, just as a woman with child who draws near the time of her delivery, is in pain and cries out in her pangs. So we have been before you, Yahweh. We have been with child. We have been in pain. We gave birth, it seems, only to wind. We have not worked any deliverance in the earth, neither have the inhabitants of the world fallen. Your dead shall live. My dead bodies shall arise. Awake and sing, you who dwell in the dust, for your dew is like the dew of herbs, and the earth will cast out the departed spirits. Come, my people, enter into your rooms and shut your doors behind you. Hide yourself for a little moment until the indignation is past. For, behold, Yahweh comes out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The earth also will disclose her blood and will no longer cover her slain. Chapter 27 In that day, Yahweh with his hard and great and strong sword will punish Leviathan, the fleeing serpent and Leviathan the twisted serpent, and he will kill the dragon that is in the sea. In that day, sing to her, A pleasant vineyard, I, Yahweh, am its keeper. I will water it every moment, lest any one damage it. I will keep it night and day. Wrath is not in me, but if I should find briars and thorns, I would do battle. I would march on them, and I would burn them together, or else let him take hold of my strength, that he may make peace with me. Let him make peace with me. In the days to come, Jacob will take root. Israel will blossom and bud. 
they will fill the surface of the world with fruit. Has he struck them as he struck those who struck them? Or are they killed like those who killed them were killed? In measure, when you send them away, you contend with them. He has removed them with his rough blast in the day of the east wind. Therefore, by this, the iniquity of Jacob will be forgiven. And this is all the fruit of taking away his sin that he makes all the stones of the altar as chalk stones that are beaten in pieces, so that the Asherah poles and the incense altars shall rise no more. For the fortified city is solitary, a habitation deserted and forsaken, like the wilderness. The calf will feed there, and there he will lie down and consume its branches. When its boughs are withered, they will be broken off. The women will come and set them on fire, for they are a people of no understanding. Therefore he who made them will not have compassion on them, and he who formed them will show them no favor. It will happen in that day that Yahweh will thresh from the flowing stream of the Euphrates to the brook of Egypt and you will be gathered one by one, children of Israel. It will happen in that day that a great trumpet will be blown, and those who were ready to perish in the land of Assyria, and those who were outcasts in the land of Egypt, shall come, and they will worship Yahweh in the holy mountain at Jerusalem. Chapter 28 Woe to the crown of pride of the drunkards of Ephraim, and to the fading flower of his glorious beauty, which is on the head of the fertile valley of those who are overcome with wine. Behold, the Lord has a mighty and strong one, like a storm of hail, a destroying storm, and like a storm of mighty waters overflowing, he will cast them down to the earth with his hand. The crown of pride of the drunkards of Ephraim will be trodden underfoot. The fading flower of his glorious beauty, which is on the head of the fertile valley, shall be like the first ripe fig before the summer, which someone picks and eats as soon as he sees it. In that day, Yahweh of armies will become a crown of glory and a diadem of beauty to the residue of his people and a spirit of justice to him who sits in judgment, and strength to those who turn back the battle at the gate. They also reel with wine, and stagger with strong drink. The priest and the prophet reel with strong drink. They are swallowed up by wine. They stagger with strong drink. They err in vision. They stumble in judgment for all tables are completely full of filthy vomit and filthiness. Whom will he teach knowledge? To whom will he explain the message? Those who are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breasts? For it is precept on precept, precept on precept, line on line, line on line, here a little, there a little but he will speak to this nation with stammering lips and in another language, to whom he said, This is the resting place. Give rest to weary. And this is the refreshing. Yet they would not hear. Therefore Yahweh's word will be to them precept on precept, precept on precept, line on line, line on line, here a little, there a little, that they may go, fall backward, be broken, be snared, and be taken. Therefore, hear Yahweh's word, you scoffers that rule this people in Jerusalem, because you have said, We have made a covenant with death, and with Sheol are we in agreement. When the overflowing scourge passes through, it won't come to us 
for we have made lies our refuge, and we have hidden ourselves under falsehood. Therefore, thus says the Lord Yahweh, Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone of a sure foundation. He who believes shall not act hastily. I will make justice the measuring line, and righteousness the plumb line. The hail will sweep away the refuge of lies, and the waters will overflow the hiding place. Your covenant with death shall be annulled, and your agreement with Sheol shall not stand. When the overflowing scourge passes through, then you will be trampled down by it. As often as it passes through, it will seize you. For morning by morning it will pass through, by day and by night, and it will be nothing but terror to understand the message. For the bed is too short to stretch out on, and the blanket is too narrow to wrap oneself in. For Yahweh will rise up as on Mount Perizim. He will be angry as in the valley of Gibeon that he may do his work, his unusual work, and bring to pass his act, his extraordinary act. Now, therefore, don't be scoffers, lest your bonds be made strong. For I have heard a decree of destruction from the Lord, Yahweh of armies, on the whole earth. Give ear and hear my voice. Listen and hear my speech. Does he who plows to sow plow continually? Does he keep turning the soil and breaking the clods? When he has leveled its surface, doesn't he plant the deal and scatter the cumin seed and put in the wheat in rows, the barley in the appointed place and the spelt in its place? For his God instructs him in right judgment and teaches him. For the deal are not threshed with a sharp instrument, neither is a cartwheel turned over the cumin. But the deal is beaten out with a stick, and the cumin with a rod. Bread flour must be ground, so he will not always be threshing it. Although he drives the wheel of his threshing cart over it, his horses don't grind it. This also comes out from Yahweh of armies who is wonderful in counsel and excellent in wisdom. Chapter 29 Woe to Ariel, Ariel, the city where David encamped. Add year to year, let the feasts come around. Then I will distress Ariel, and there will be mourning and lamentation. She shall be to me as an altar hearth. I will encamp against you, all around you, and will lay siege against you with posted troops. I will raise siege works against you. You will be brought down, and will speak out of the ground. Your speech will mumble out of the dust. Your voice will be as of one who has a familiar spirit, out of the ground and your speech will whisper out of the dust. But the multitude of your foes will be like fine dust, and the multitude of the ruthless ones like chaff that blows away. Yes, it will be in an instant, suddenly. She will be visited by Yahweh of armies, with thunder, with earthquake, with great noise, with whirlwind and storm and with the flame of a devouring fire, the multitude of all the nations that fight against Ariel, even all who fight against her and her stronghold, and who distress her, will be like a dream, a vision of the night. It will be like when a hungry man dreams, and behold, he eats, but he awakes, and his hunger isn't satisfied, or like when a thirsty man dreams. And behold, he drinks. But he awakes, and behold, he is faint, and he is still thirsty. The multitude of all the nations that fight against Mount Zion will be like that. 
pause and wonder. Blind yourselves and be blind. They are drunken, but not with wine. They stagger, but not with strong drink. For Yahweh has poured out on you a spirit of deep sleep and has closed your eyes, the prophets, and he has covered your heads, the seers. All vision has become to you like the words of a book that is sealed, which men deliver to one who is educated, saying, Read this, please. And he says, I can't, for it is sealed. And the book is delivered to one who is not educated, saying, Read this, please. And he says, I can't read. The Lord said, Because this people draws near with their mouth and honors me with their lips, but they have removed their heart far from me, and their fear of me is a commandment of men which has been taught. Therefore, behold, I will proceed to do a marvelous work among this people, even a marvelous work and a wonder, and the wisdom of their wise men will perish, and the understanding of their prudent men will be hidden. Woe to those who deeply hide their counsel from Yahweh, and whose deeds are in the dark, and who say, Who sees us? And who knows us? You turn things upside down, should the potter be thought to be like clay, that the thing made should say about him who made it, He didn't make me. Or the thing formed say of him who formed it, He has no understanding. Isn't it yet a very little while, and Lebanon will be turned into a fruitful field, and the fruitful field will be regarded as a forest? In that day, the deaf will hear the words of the book and the eyes of the blind will see out of obscurity and out of darkness. The humble also will increase their joy in Yahweh, and the poor among men will rejoice in the Holy One of Israel. For the ruthless is brought to nothing, and the scoffer ceases, and all those who are alert to do evil are cut off, who cause a person to be indicted by a word and lay a snare for the arbiter in the gate, and who deprive the innocent of justice with false testimony. Therefore, Yahweh, who redeemed Abraham, says concerning the house of Jacob, Jacob shall no longer be ashamed, neither shall his face grow pale. But when he sees his children, the work of my hands in the middle of him, they will sanctify my name. Yes, they will sanctify the Holy One of Jacob and will stand in awe of the God of Israel. They also who err in spirit will come to understanding and those who grumble will receive instruction. Chapter 30 Woe to the rebellious children, says Yahweh, who take counsel, but not from me, and who make an alliance, but not with my spirit, that they may add sin to sin, who set out to go down into Egypt, and have not asked my advice, to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh, and to take refuge in the shadow of Egypt. Therefore, the strength of Pharaoh will be your shame, and the refuge in the shadow of Egypt, your confusion. For their princes are at Zoan, and their ambassadors have come to Hanes. They shall all be ashamed because of a people that can't profit them, that are not a help nor a profit, but a shame and also a reproach. The Burden of the Animals of the South through the land of trouble and anguish, of the lioness and the lion, the viper and fiery flying serpent. They carry their riches on the shoulders of young donkeys and their treasures on the humps of camels to an unprofitable people, for Egypt helps in vain and to no purpose. 
Therefore I have called her Rahab, who sits still. Now go, write it before them on a tablet, and inscribe it in a book, that it may be for the time to come, forever and ever. For it is a rebellious people, lying children, children who will not hear Yahweh's law, who tell the seers, don't see, and to the prophets, don't prophesy to us right things. Tell us pleasant things. Prophesy deceits. Get out of the way. Turn away from the path. Cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us. Therefore, thus says the Holy One of Israel, Because you despise this word, and trust in oppression and perverseness, and rely on it, Therefore, this iniquity shall be to you like a breach ready to fall, swelling out in a high wall, whose breaking comes suddenly in an instant. He will break it as a potter's vessel is broken, breaking it in pieces without sparing, so that there won't be found among the broken pieces a piece good enough to take fire from the hearth or to dip up water out of the cistern. For thus said the Lord Yahweh, the Holy One of Israel, You will be saved in returning and rest. Your strength will be in quietness and in confidence. You refused, but you said, No, for we will flee on horses. Therefore you will flee. And we will ride on the swift. Therefore those who pursue you will be swift. One thousand will flee at the threat of one. At the threat of five, you will flee until you are left like a beacon on the top of a mountain and like a banner on a hill. Therefore, Yahweh will wait that he may be gracious to you. And therefore, he will be exalted that he may have mercy on you. For Yahweh is a God of justice. Blessed are all those who wait for him. For the people will dwell in Zion at Jerusalem. You will weep no more. He will surely be gracious to you at the voice of your cry. When he hears you, he will answer you. Though the Lord may give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, yet your teachers won't be hidden any more. But your eyes will see your teachers. And when you turn to the right hand, and when you turn to the left, your ears will hear a voice behind you, saying, This is the way. Walk in it. You shall defile the overlaying of your engraved images of silver and the plating of your molten images of gold. You shall cast them away as an unclean thing. You shall tell it, Go away. He will give the rain for your seed, with which you will sow the ground and bread of the increase of the ground will be rich and plentiful. In that day, your livestock will feed in large pastures. The oxen likewise, and the young donkeys that till the ground, will eat savory feed, which has been winnowed with the shovel and with the fork. There shall be brooks and streams of water on every lofty mountain, and on every high hill in the day of the great slaughter when the towers fall. Moreover, the light of the moon will be like the light of the sun, and the light of the sun will be seven times brighter, like the light of seven days, in the day that Yahweh binds up the fracture of his people and heals the wound they were struck with. Behold, Yahweh's name comes from far away, burning with his anger, and in thick rising smoke, his lips are full of indignation, and his tongue is as a devouring fire. His breath is as an overflowing stream that reaches even to the neck to sift the nations with the sieve of destruction, and a bridle that leads to ruin will be in the jaws of the peoples. You will have a song, as in the night when a holy feast is kept, and gladness of heart as when one goes with a flute to come to Yahweh's mountain, to Israel's rock.
Yahweh will cause his glorious voice to be heard and will show the descent of his arm with the indignation of his anger and the flame of a devouring fire with a blast, storm, and hailstones. For through Yahweh's voice, the Assyrian will be dismayed. He will strike him with his rod, every stroke of the rod of punishment which Yahweh will lay on him will be with the sound of tambourines and harps. He will fight with them in battles, brandishing weapons, for his burning place has long been ready. Yes, for the king it is prepared. He has made its pyre deep and large, with fire and much wood. Yahweh's breath, like a stream of sulfur, kindles it. Chapter 31 Woe to those who go down to Egypt for help and rely on horses and trust in chariots because they are many and in horsemen because they are very strong but they don't look to the Holy One of Israel and they don't seek Yahweh yet he also is wise and will bring disaster and will not call back his words but will arise against the house of the evildoers and against the help of those who work iniquity. Now the Egyptians are men and not God, and their horses flesh and not spirit. When Yahweh stretches out his hand, both he who helps shall stumble and he who is helped shall fall, and they all shall be consumed together. For Yahweh says to me, as the lion and the young lion growling over his prey, if a multitude of shepherds is called together against him, will not be dismayed at their voice, nor abase himself for their noise. So Yahweh of armies will come down to fight on Mount Zion and on its heights. As birds hovering, so Yahweh of armies will protect Jerusalem. He will protect and deliver it. He will pass over and preserve it. Return to him from whom you have deeply revolted, children of Israel. For in that day, everyone shall cast away his idols of silver and his idols of gold, sin which your own hands have made for you. The Assyrian will fall by the sword, not of man, and the sword, not of mankind, shall devour him. He will flee from the sword, and his young men will become subject to forced labor. His rock will pass away by reason of terror, and his princess will be afraid of the banner, says Yahweh, whose fire is in Zion and his furnace in Jerusalem. Chapter 32 Behold, a king shall reign in righteousness, and princes shall rule in justice. A man shall be as a hiding place from the wind, and a covert from the storm, as streams of water in a dry place, as the shade of a large rock in a weary land. The eye of those who see will not be dim, and the ears of those who hear will listen. The heart of the rash will understand knowledge, and the tongue of the stammerers will be ready to speak plainly. The fool will no longer be called noble, nor the scoundrel be highly respected, for the fool will speak folly, and his heart will work iniquity, to practice profanity, and to utter error against Yahweh, to make empty the soul of the hungry, and to cause the drink of the thirsty to fail. The ways of the scoundrel are evil. He devises wicked plans to destroy the humble with lying words, even when the needy speaks right. But the noble devises noble things, and he will continue in noble things. Rise up, you women who are at ease. Hear my voice, you careless daughters, Give ear to my speech. For days beyond a year you will be troubled, you careless women, for the vintage shall fail. 
the harvest won't come. Tremble, you women who are at ease. Be troubled, you careless ones. Strip yourselves, make yourselves naked, and put sackcloth on your waist. Beat your breasts for the pleasant fields, for the fruitful vine. Thorns and briars will come up on my people's land. Yes, on all the houses of joy in the joyous city. For the palace will be forsaken. The populous city will be deserted. The hill and the watchtower will be for dens forever. A delight for wild donkeys, a pasture for flocks. Until the Spirit is poured on us from on high, and the wilderness becomes a fruitful field, and the fruitful field is considered a forest. Then justice will dwell in the wilderness, and righteousness will remain in the fruitful field. The work of righteousness will be peace, and the effect of righteousness, quietness, and confidence forever. My people will live in a peaceful habitation, in safe dwellings, and in quiet resting places. Though hail flattens the forest, and the city is leveled completely. Blessed are you who sow beside all waters, who send out the feet of the ox and the donkey. Chapter 33 Woe to you who destroy, but you weren't destroyed, and who betray, but nobody betrayed you. When you have finished destroying, you will be destroyed. And when you have finished betrayal, you will be betrayed. Yahweh, be gracious to us. We have waited for you. Be our strength every morning, our salvation also in the time of trouble. At the noise of the thunder, the peoples have fled. When you lift yourself up, the nations are scattered. Your plunder will be gathered as the caterpillar gathers. Men will leap on it as locusts leap. Yahweh is exalted, for he dwells on high. He has filled Zion with justice and righteousness. There will be stability in your times, abundance of salvation, wisdom, and knowledge. The fear of Yahweh is your treasure. Behold, their valiant ones cry outside. The ambassadors of peace weep bitterly. The highways are desolate. The traveling man ceases. The covenant is broken. He has despised the cities. He doesn't respect man. The land mourns and languishes. Lebanon is confounded and withers away. Sharon is like a desert and Bashan and Carmel are stripped bare. Now I will arise, says Yahweh. Now I will lift myself up. Now I will be exalted. You will conceive chaff. You will give birth to stubble. Your breath is a fire that will devour you. The peoples will be like the burning of lime, like thorns that are cut down and burned in the fire. Hear, you who are far off, what I have done, and you who are near, acknowledge my might. The sinners in Zion are afraid. Trembling has seized the godless ones. Who among us can live with the devouring fire? Who among us can live with everlasting burning? He who walks righteously and speaks blamelessly. He who despises the gain of oppressions, who gestures with his hands, refusing to take a bribe, who stops his ears from hearing of blood and shuts his eyes from looking at evil, he will dwell on high. His place of defense will be the fortress of rocks. His bread will be supplied. His waters will be sure. Your eyes will see the king in his beauty. They will see a distant land. Your heart will meditate on the terror. Where is he who counted? Where is he who weighed? Where is he who counted the towers? 
you will no longer see the fierce people, a people of a deep speech that you can't comprehend, with a strange language that you can't understand. Look at Zion, the city of our appointed festivals. Your eyes will see Jerusalem, a quiet habitation, a tent that won't be removed. Its stakes will never be plucked up, nor will any of its cords be broken. But there, Yahweh will be with us in majesty, a place of wide rivers and streams, in which no galley with oars will go, neither will any gallant ship pass by there. For Yahweh is our judge, Yahweh is our lawgiver, Yahweh is our king. He will save us. Your rigging is untied. They couldn't strengthen the foot of their mast. They couldn't spread the sail. Then the prey of a great plunder was divided. The lame took the prey. The inhabitant won't say, I am sick. The people who dwell therein will be forgiven their iniquity. Chapter 34 Come near, you nations, to hear. Listen, you peoples. Let the earth and all it contains hear, the world and everything that comes from it. For Yahweh is enraged against all the nations and angry with all their armies. He has utterly destroyed them. He has given them over for slaughter. Their slain will also be cast out, and the stench of their dead bodies will come up, and the mountains will melt in their blood. All of the army of the sky will be dissolved. The sky will be rolled up like a scroll, and all its armies will fade away, as a leaf fades from off a vine or a fig tree. For my sword has drunk its fill in the sky, Behold, it will come down on Edom and on the people of my curse for judgment. Yahweh's sword is filled with blood. It is covered with fat, with the blood of lambs and goats, with the fat of the kidneys of rams. For Yahweh has a sacrifice in Basra and a great slaughter in the land of Edom. The wild oxen will come down with them and the young bulls with the mighty bulls. And their land will be drunken with blood, and their dust made greasy with fat. For Yahweh has a day of vengeance, a year of recompense for the cause of Zion. Its streams will be turned into pitch, its dust into sulfur, and its land will become burning pitch. It won't be quenched night nor day, its smoke will go up forever. From generation to generation, it will lie waste. No one will pass through it forever and ever. But the pelican and the porcupine will possess it. The owl and the raven will dwell in it. He will stretch the line of confusion over it and the plumb line of emptiness. They shall call its nobles to the kingdom, but none shall be there and all its princes shall be nothing. Thorns will come up in its palaces, nettles and thistles in its fortresses. And it will be a habitation of jackals, a court for ostriches. The wild animals of the desert will meet with the wolves, and the wild goat will cry to his fellow. Yes, the night creature shall settle there, and shall find herself a place of rest, the arrow snake will make her nest there and lay, hatch, and gather under her shade. Yes, the kites will be gathered there, every one with her mate. Search in the book of Yahweh and read. Not one of these will be missing. None will lack her mate. For my mouth has commanded, and his spirit has gathered them. He has cast the lot for them and his hand has divided it to them with a measuring line. They shall possess it forever. From generation to generation they will dwell in it.
Chapter 35 The wilderness and the dry land will be glad. The desert will rejoice and blossom like a rose. It will blossom abundantly and rejoice even with joy and singing. Lebanon's glory will be given to it, the excellence of Carmel and Sharon. They will see Yahweh's glory, the excellence of our God. Strengthen the weak hands, and make firm the feeble knees. Tell those who have a fearful heart, be strong. Don't be afraid. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, God's retribution. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind will be opened, and the ears of the deaf will be unstopped. Then the lame man will leap like a deer and the tongue of the mute will sing. For waters will break out in the wilderness, and streams in the desert. The burning sand will become a pool, and the thirsty ground springs of water. Grass with reeds and rushes will be in the habitation of jackals where they lay. A highway will be there, a road, and it will be called the Holy Way. The unclean shall not pass over it, but it will be for those who walk in the way. Wicked fools will not go there. No lion will be there, nor will any ravenous animal go upon it. They will not be found there, but the redeemed will walk there. Then Yahweh's ransomed ones will return and come with singing to Zion and everlasting joy will be on their heads. They will obtain gladness and joy, and sorrow and sighing will flee away. Chapter 36 Now in the fourteenth year of King Hezekiah, Sennacherib, king of Assyria, attacked all of the fortified cities of Judah and captured them. The king of Assyria sent Rabshakeh from Lachish to Jerusalem to King Hezekiah with a large army. He stood by the aqueduct from the upper pool in the Fuller's Field Highway. Then Eliakim, the son of Hilkiah, who was over the household, and Shebna, the scribe, and Joah, the son of Asaph, the recorder, came out to him. Rabshakeh said to them, now tell Hezekiah, Thus says the great king, the king of Assyria, What confidence is this in which you trust? I say that your counsel and strength for the war are only vain words. Now, in whom do you trust that you have rebelled against me? Behold, you trust in the staff of this bruised reed, even in Egypt, which, if a man leans on it, it will go into his hand and pierce it. So is Pharaoh, king of Egypt, to all who trust in him. But if you tell me, we trust in Yahweh our God, isn't that he whose high places and whose altars Hezekiah has taken away and has said to Judah and to Jerusalem, you shall worship before this altar? Now, therefore, Please make a pledge to my master, the king of Assyria, and I will give you two thousand horses, if you are able on your part to set riders on them. How then can you turn away the face of one captain of the least of my master's servants and put your trust on Egypt for chariots and for horsemen? Have I come up now without Yahweh against this land to destroy it? Yahweh said to me, Go up against this land and destroy it. Then Eliakim, Shebna, and Joah said to Rabshakeh, Please speak to your servants in Aramaic, for we understand it, and don't speak to us in the Jews' language, in the hearing of the people who are on the wall. But Rabshakeh said, Has my master sent me only to your master and to you to speak these words? and not to the men who sit on the wall? 
who will eat their own dung and drink their own urine with you? Then Rabshakeh stood and called out with a loud voice in the Jews' language and said, Hear the words of the great king, the king of Assyria. Thus says the king, Don't let Hezekiah deceive you, for he will not be able to deliver you. Don't let Hezekiah make you trust in Yahweh, saying, Yahweh will surely deliver us. This city won't be given into the hand of the king of Assyria. Don't listen to Hezekiah, for thus says the king of Assyria, Make your peace with me, and come out to me, and each of you eat from his vine, and each one from his fig tree, and each one of you drink the waters of his own cistern until I come and take you away to a land like your own land, a land of grain and new wine, a land of bread and vineyards. Beware lest Hezekiah persuade you, saying, Yahweh will deliver us. Have any of the gods of the nations delivered their lands from the hand of the king of Assyria? Where are the gods of Hamath and Arpad? Where are the gods of Sepharvaim? Have they delivered Samaria from my hand? Who are they among all the gods of these countries that have delivered their country out of my hand, that Yahweh should deliver Jerusalem out of my hand? But they remained silent and said nothing in reply, for the king's commandment was, Don't answer him. Then Eliakim, the son of Hilkiah, who was over the household, and Shebna, the scribe, and Joah, the son of Asaph, the recorder, came to Hezekiah with their clothes torn, and told him the words of Rabshakeh. Chapter 37 When King Hezekiah heard it, he tore his clothes, covered himself with sackcloth, and went into Yahweh's house. He sent Eliakim, who was over the household, and Shebna, the scribe, and the elders of the priests, covered with sackcloth, to Isaiah, the prophet, the son of Amos. They said to him, Thus says Hezekiah, Today is a day of trouble, and of rebuke, and of rejection. For the children have come to the birth, and there is no strength to give birth. It may be Yahweh your God will hear the words of Rabshakeh, whom the king of Assyria, his master, has sent to defy the living God, and will rebuke the words which Yahweh your God has heard. Therefore, lift up your prayer for the remnant that is left. So the servants of King Hezekiah came to Isaiah. Isaiah said to them, Tell your master, Yahweh says, don't be afraid of the words that you have heard, with which the servants of the king of Assyria have blasphemed me. Behold, I will put a spirit in him, and he will hear news, and will return to his own land. I will cause him to fall by the sword in his own land. So Rabshakeh returned and found the king of Assyria warring against Libna, for he had heard that he was departed from Lachish. He heard news concerning Terheka, king of Ethiopia. He has come out to fight against you. When he heard it, he sent messengers to Hezekiah, saying, Thus you shall speak to Hezekiah, king of Judah, saying, Don't let your God in whom you trust deceive you, saying, Jerusalem won't be given into the hand of the king of Assyria. Behold, you have heard what the kings of Assyria have done to all lands by destroying them utterly. Shall you be delivered? Have the gods of the nations delivered them which my fathers have destroyed? Gozan, Haran, Rezeph, and the children of Eden who were in Telassar. Where is the king of Hamath and the king of Arpad and the king of the city of Sepharvaim, of Hena and Iva? 
Hezekiah received the letter from the hand of the messengers and read it. Then Hezekiah went up to Yahweh's house and spread it before Yahweh. Hezekiah prayed to Yahweh, saying, Yahweh of armies, the God of Israel, who is enthroned among the cherubim, you are the God, even you alone, of all the kingdoms of the earth. You have made heaven and earth. Turn your ear, Yahweh, and hear. Open your eyes, Yahweh, and behold. Hear all of the words of Sennacherib, who has sent to defy the living God. Truly, Yahweh, the kings of Assyria have destroyed all the countries and their land, and have cast their gods into the fire. For they were no gods, but the work of men's hands, wood and stone. Therefore they have destroyed them. Now therefore, Yahweh our God, save us from his hand, that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that you are Yahweh, even you only. Then Isaiah the son of Amos sent to Hezekiah, saying, Yahweh the God of Israel says, Because you have prayed to me against Sennacherib, king of Assyria, this is the word which Yahweh has spoken concerning him. The virgin daughter of Zion has despised you and ridiculed you. The daughter of Jerusalem has shaken her head at you. Whom have you defied and blasphemed? Against whom have you exalted your voice and lifted up your eyes on high? Against the Holy One of Israel. By your servants have you defied the Lord, and have said, With the multitude of my chariots I have come up to the height of the mountains, to the innermost parts of Lebanon. I will cut down its tall cedars and its choice cypress trees. I will enter into its farthest height, the forest of its fruitful field. I have dug and drunk water, and with the sole of my feet I will dry up all the rivers of Egypt. Have you not heard how I have done it long ago and formed it in ancient times? Now I have brought it to pass, that it should be yours to destroy fortified cities, turning them into ruinous heaps. Therefore their inhabitants had little power, they were dismayed and confounded. They were like the grass of the field and like the green herb, like the grass on the housetops and like a field before its crop has grown. But I know you're sitting down, you're going out, you're coming in, and you're raging against me. Because of your raging against me, and because your arrogance has come up into my ears. Therefore, I will put my hook in your nose and my bridle in your lips, and I will turn you back by the way by which you came. This shall be the sign to you. You will eat this year that which grows of itself, and in the second year that which springs from it, and in the third year, sow and reap and plant vineyards and eat their fruit. The remnant that is escaped of the house of Judah will again take root downward and bear fruit upward. For out of Jerusalem a remnant will go out and survivors will escape from Mount Zion. The zeal of Yahweh of armies will perform this. Therefore, Yahweh says concerning the king of Assyria, He will not come to this city, nor shoot an arrow there. Neither will he come before it with shield, nor cast up a mound against it. He will return the way that he came, and he won't come to this city, says Yahweh. For I will defend this city to save it for my own sake and for my servant David's sake. Then Yahweh's angel went out and struck 185,000 men 
in the camp of the Assyrians. When men arose early in the morning, behold, these were all dead bodies. So Sennacherib, king of Assyria, departed, went away, returned to Nineveh, and stayed there. As he was worshipping in the house of Nisroch, his god, Adramelech and Sherezer, his sons, struck him with the sword, and they escaped into the land of Ararat. Esarhaddon, his son, reigned in his place. Chapter 38 In those days Hezekiah was sick and near death. Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, came to him and said to him, Yahweh says, Set your house in order, for you will die and not live. Then Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and prayed to Yahweh and said, Remember now, Yahweh, I beg you, how I have walked before you in truth and with a perfect heart and have done that which is good in your sight. Hezekiah wept bitterly. Then Yahweh's word came to Isaiah, saying, Go and tell Hezekiah, Yahweh, the God of David, your father, says, I have heard your prayer, I have seen your tears. Behold, I will add fifteen years to your life. I will deliver you and this city out of the hand of the king of Assyria, and I will defend this city. This shall be the sign to you from Yahweh, that Yahweh will do this thing that he has spoken. Behold, I will cause the shadow on the sundial, which has gone down on the sundial of Ahaz with the sun, to return backward ten steps. So the sun returned ten steps on the sundial on which it had gone down. The writing of Hezekiah, king of Judah, when he had been sick and had recovered of his sickness. I said, In the middle of my life I go into the gates of Sheol. I am deprived of the residue of my years. I said, I won't see Yah. Yah in the land of the living. I will see man no more with the inhabitants of the world. My dwelling is removed and is carried away from me like a shepherd's tent. I have rolled up like a weaver my life. He will cut me off from the loom. From day, even to night, you will make an end of me. I waited patiently until morning. He breaks all my bones like a lion. From day, even to night, you will make an end of me. I chattered like a swallow or a crane. I moaned like a dove. My eyes weaken, looking upward. Lord, I am oppressed. Be my security. What will I say? He has both spoken to me and himself has done it. I will walk carefully all my years because of the anguish of my soul. Lord, men live by these things, and my spirit finds life in all of them. You restore me and cause me to live. Behold, for peace I had great anguish, but you have, in love for my soul, delivered it from the pit of corruption for you have cast all my sins behind your back. For Sheol can't praise you. Death can't celebrate you. Those who go down into the pit can't hope for your truth. The living, the living, he shall praise you as I do today. The Father shall make known your truth to the children. Yahweh will save me. Therefore, we will sing my songs with stringed instruments all the days of our life in Yahweh's house. Now Isaiah had said, 
Let them take a cake of figs and lay it for a poultice on the boil, and he shall recover. Hezekiah also had said, What is the sign that I will go up to Yahweh's house? Chapter 39 At that time, Merodach Baladan, the son of Baladan, king of Babylon, sent letters and a present to Hezekiah for he heard that he had been sick and had recovered. Hezekiah was pleased with them and showed them the house of his precious things, the silver and the gold, the spices and the precious oil, and all the house of his armor, and all that was found in his treasures. There was nothing in his house nor in all his dominion that Hezekiah didn't show them. Then Isaiah the prophet came to King Hezekiah and asked him, What did these men say? Where did they come from to you? Hezekiah said, They have come from a country far from me, even from Babylon. Then he asked, What have they seen in your house? Hezekiah answered, They have seen all that is in my house. There is nothing among my treasures that I have not shown them. Then Isaiah said to Hezekiah, Hear the word of Yahweh of armies. Behold, the days are coming when all that is in your house and that which your fathers have stored up until today will be carried to Babylon. Nothing will be left, says Yahweh. They will take away your sons who will issue from you, whom you shall father, and they will be eunuchs in the king of Babylon's palace. Then Hezekiah said to Isaiah, Yahweh's word which you have spoken is good. He said moreover, For there will be peace and truth in my days. Chapter 40 Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak comfortably to Jerusalem and call out to her that her warfare is accomplished, that her iniquity is pardoned, that she has received of Yahweh's hand double for all her sins. The voice of one who calls out, Prepare the way of Yahweh in the wilderness. Make a level highway in the desert for our God. Every valley shall be exalted, and every mountain and hill shall be made low. The uneven shall be made level, and the rough places a plain. Yahweh's glory shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of Yahweh has spoken it, the voice of one saying, Cry. One said, What shall I cry? All flesh is like grass, and all its glory is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, because Yahweh's breath blows on it. Surely the people are like grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God stands forever. You who tell good news to Zion, go up on a high mountain. You who tell good news to Jerusalem, lift up your voice with strength. Lift it up. Don't be afraid. Say to the cities of Judah, Behold your God. Behold, the Lord Yahweh will come as a mighty one and his arm will rule for him. Behold, his reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arm and carry them in his bosom. He will gently lead those who have their young. Who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand and marked off the sky with his span? and calculated the dust of the earth in a measuring basket, 
and weighed the mountains in scales and the hills in a balance who has directed yahweh's spirit or has taught him as his counselor who did he take counsel with and who instructed him and taught him in the path of justice and taught him knowledge and showed him the way of understanding behold the nations are like a drop in a bucket and are regarded as a speck of dust on a balance behold he lifts up the islands like a very little thing lebanon is not sufficient to burn nor its animals sufficient for a burnt offering all the nations are like nothing before him they are regarded by him as less than nothing and vanity to whom then will you liken god or what likeness will you compare to him a workman has cast an image and the goldsmith overlays it with gold and casts silver chains for it he who is too impoverished for such an offering chooses a tree that will not rot he seeks a skillful workman to set up a carved image for him that will not be moved haven't you known haven't you heard haven't you been told from the beginning haven't you understood from the foundations of the earth it is he who sits above the circle of the earth and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them out like a tent to dwell in who brings princes to nothing who makes the judges of the earth meaningless they are planted scarcely they are sown scarcely their stock has scarcely taken root in the ground he merely blows on them and they wither and the whirlwind takes them away as stubble to whom then will you liken me who is my equal says the holy one lift up your eyes on high and see who has created these who brings out their army by number he calls them all by name by the greatness of his might and because he is strong in power not one is lacking why do you say jacob and speak israel my way is hidden from yahweh and the justice due me is disregarded by my god haven't you known haven't you heard the everlasting god yahweh the creator of the ends of the earth doesn't faint he isn't weary his understanding is unsearchable he gives power to the weak he increases the strength of him who has no might even the youths faint and get weary and the young men utterly fall but those who wait for yahweh will renew their strength they will mount up with wings like eagles they will run and not be weary they will walk and not faint chapter 41 keep silent before me islands and let the peoples renew their strength let them come near then let them speak let's meet together for judgment who has raised up one from the east who called him to his foot in righteousness he hands over nations to him and makes him rule over kings he gives them like the dust to his sword like the driven stubble to his bow he pursues them and passes by safely even by a way that he had not gone with his feet who has worked and done it calling the generations from the beginning i yahweh the first and with the last i am he the islands have seen and fear the ends of the earth tremble they approach and come everyone helps his neighbor they say to their brothers be strong so the carpenter encourages the goldsmith he who smooths with the hammer encourages him who strikes the anvil saying of the soldering it is good 
and he fastens it with nails, that it might not totter. But you, Israel, my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, the offspring of Abraham, my friend, you, whom I have taken hold of from the ends of the earth, and called from its corners, and said to you, You are my servant. I have chosen you, and have not cast you away. Don't you be afraid, for I am with you. Don't be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. Yes, I will uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness. Behold, all those who are incensed against you will be disappointed and confounded. Those who strive with you will be like nothing and shall perish. You will seek them, and won't find them, even those who contend with you. Those who war against you will be as nothing, as a non-existent thing. For I, Yahweh your God, will hold your right hand, saying to you, Don't be afraid, I will help you. Don't be afraid, you worm, Jacob, and you men of Israel, I will help you, says Yahweh, and your Redeemer is the Holy One of Israel. Behold, I have made you into a new sharp threshing instrument with teeth. You will thresh the mountains and beat them small, and will make the hills like chaff. You will winnow them, and the wind will carry them away and the whirlwind will scatter them. You will rejoice in Yahweh. You will glory in the Holy One of Israel. The poor and needy seek water, and there is none. Their tongue fails for thirst. I, Yahweh, will answer them. I, the God of Israel, will not forsake them. I will open rivers on the bare heights and springs in the middle of the valleys. I will make the wilderness a pool of water, and the dry land springs of water. I will put cedar, acacia, myrtle, and oil trees in the wilderness. I will set cypress trees, pine, and box trees together in the desert, that they may see, know, consider, and understand together that Yahweh's hand has done this, and the Holy One of Israel has created it. Produce your cause, says Yahweh. Bring out your strong reasons, says the King of Jacob. Let them announce and declare to us what shall happen. Declare the former things, what they are, that we may consider them and know the latter end of them or show us things to come. Declare the things that are to come hereafter, that we may know that you are gods. Yes, do good, or do evil, that we may be dismayed, and see it together. Behold, you are of nothing, and your work is of nothing. He who chooses you is an abomination. I have raised up one from the north, and he has come. From the rising of the sun, one who calls on my name. And he shall come on rulers as on mortar, and as the potter treads clay. Who has declared it from the beginning, that we may know? And before, that we may say, he is right. Surely there is no one who declares. Surely there is no one who shows. Surely there is no one who hears your words. I am the first to say to Zion, Behold, look at them, and I will give one who brings good news to Jerusalem. When I look, there is no man. Even among them there is no counselor who, when I ask of them, can answer a word. Behold, all of them, their deeds, are vanity and nothing. 
their molten images are wind and confusion. Chapter 42 Behold, my servant, whom I uphold, my chosen, in whom my soul delights, I have put my spirit on him. He will bring justice to the nations. He will not shout, nor raise his voice, nor cause it to be heard in the street. He won't break a bruised reed. He won't quench a dimly burning wick. He will faithfully bring justice. He will not fail, nor be discouraged, until he has set justice in the earth and the islands will wait for his law. Thus says God, Yahweh, He who created the heavens and stretched them out, He who spread out the earth and that which comes out of it, He who gives breath to its people and spirit to those who walk in it. I, Yahweh, have called you in righteousness and will hold your hand and will keep you and make you a covenant for the people, as a light for the nations, to open the blind eyes, to bring the prisoners out of the dungeon, and those who sit in darkness out of the prison. I am Yahweh. That is my name. I will not give my glory to another, nor my praise to engraved images. Behold, the former things have happened, and I declare new things. I tell you about them before they come up. Sing to Yahweh a new song, and his praise from the end of the earth. You who go down to the sea, and all that is therein, the islands and their inhabitants. Let the wilderness and its cities raise their voices, with the villages that Kedar inhabits. Let the inhabitants of Selah sing. Let them shout from the top of the mountains. Let them give glory to Yahweh and declare his praise in the islands. Yahweh will go out like a mighty man. He will stir up zeal like a man of war. He will raise a war cry. Yes, he will shout aloud. He will triumph over his enemies. I have been silent a long time. I have been quiet and restrained myself. Now I will cry out like a travailing woman. I will both gasp and pant. I will destroy mountains and hills and dry up all their herbs. I will make the rivers islands and will dry up the pools. I will bring the blind by a way that they don't know. I will lead them in paths that they don't know. I will make darkness light before them and crooked places straight. I will do these things, and I will not forsake them. Those who trust in engraved images, who tell molten images, you are our gods, will be turned back they will be utterly disappointed. Hear, you deaf, and look, you blind, that you may see. Who is blind but my servant? Or who is as deaf as my messenger, whom I send? Who is as blind as he who is at peace, and as blind as Yahweh's servant? You see many things, but don't observe. His ears are open but he doesn't listen. It pleased Yahweh for his righteousness sake to magnify the law and make it honorable. But this is a robbed and plundered people. All of them are snared in holes and they are hidden in prisons. They have become captives and no one delivers and a plunder and no one says, restore them. Who is there among you who will give ear to this? Who will listen and hear for the time to come? Who gave Jacob as plunder and Israel to the robbers? Didn't Yahweh, he against whom we have sinned, 
for they would not walk in his ways, and they disobeyed his law. Therefore he poured the fierceness of his anger on him, and the strength of battle. And it set him on fire all around, but he didn't know. And it burned him, but he didn't take it to heart. Chapter 43 But now Yahweh, who created you, Jacob, and he who formed you, Israel, says, Don't be afraid, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they will not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned, and flame will not scorch you. For I am Yahweh your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I have given Egypt as your ransom, Ethiopia and Seba in your place, since you have been precious and honored in my sight, and I have loved you. Therefore, I will give people in your place and nations instead of your life. Don't be afraid, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east and gather you from the west. I will tell the north, give them up, and tell the south, don't hold them back. Bring my sons from far, and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, and whom I have created for my glory, whom I have formed, yes, whom I have made. Bring out the blind people who have eyes, and the deaf who have ears. Let all the nations be gathered together, and let the peoples be assembled. Who among them can declare this and show us former things? Let them bring their witnesses, that they may be justified, or let them hear and say, That is true. You are my witnesses, says Yahweh, with my servant whom I have chosen, that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God formed, neither will there be after me. I myself am Yahweh, and besides me there is no Savior. I have declared, I have saved, and I have shown, and there was no strange God among you. Therefore you are my witnesses, says Yahweh, and I am God. Yes, since the day was, I am he and there is no one who can deliver out of my hand. I will work, and who can hinder it? Yahweh, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, says, For your sake I have sent to Babylon, and I will bring all of them down as fugitives, even the Chaldeans, in the ships of their rejoicing. I am Yahweh, your Holy One, the Creator of Israel, your King. Yahweh, who makes a way in the sea, and a path in the mighty waters, says, Who brings out the chariot and horse, the army and the mighty man. They lie down together, they shall not rise. They are extinct, they are quenched like a wick. Don't remember the former things, and don't consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. It springs out now. Don't you know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The animals of the field shall honor me, the jackals and the ostriches, because I give water in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my people, my chosen, the people which I formed for myself that they might declare my praise. Yet you have not called on me, Jacob, but you have been weary of me, Israel. You have not brought me of your sheep for burnt offerings, neither have you honored me with your sacrifices. I have not burdened you with offerings, nor wearied you with frankincense. 
You have bought me no sweet cane with money, nor have you filled me with the fat of your sacrifices. But you have burdened me with your sins. You have wearied me with your iniquities. I, even I, am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake, and I will not remember your sins. Put me in remembrance. Let us plead together. Declare your case, that you may be justified. Your first father sinned, and your teachers have transgressed against me. Therefore, I will profane the princes of the sanctuary, and I will make Jacob a curse, and Israel an insult. Chapter 44 Yet listen now, Jacob my servant, and Israel whom I have chosen. This is what Yahweh who made you and formed you from the womb, who will help you, says, Don't be afraid, Jacob my servant, and you, Jeshurun, whom I have chosen, for I will pour water on him who is thirsty, and streams on the dry ground. I will pour my spirit on your descendants, and my blessing on your offspring and they will spring up among the grass, as willows by the watercourses. One will say, I am Yahweh's, and another will be called by the name of Jacob, and another will write with his hand to Yahweh, and honor the name of Israel. This is what Yahweh, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, Yahweh of armies, says, I am the first, and I am the last, and besides me there is no God. Who is like me? Who will call, and will declare it, and set it in order for me, since I established the ancient people? Let them declare the things that are coming, and that will happen. Don't fear, neither be afraid. Haven't I declared it to you long ago, and shown it? You are my witnesses. Is there a God besides me? Indeed, there is not. I don't know any other rock. Everyone who makes a carved image is vain. The things that they delight in will not profit. Their own witnesses don't see, nor know, that they may be disappointed. Who has fashioned a God, or molds an image that is profitable for nothing? Behold, all his fellows will be disappointed, and the workmen are mere men. Let them all be gathered together. Let them stand up. They will fear. They will be put to shame together. The blacksmith takes an axe, works in the coals, fashions it with hammers, and works it with his strong arm. He is hungry, and his strength fails. He drinks no water and is faint. The carpenter stretches out a line. He marks it out with a pencil. He shapes it with planes. He marks it out with compasses, and shapes it like the figure of a man, with the beauty of a man, to reside in a house. He cuts down cedars for himself, and takes the cypress and the oak, and strengthens for himself one among the trees of the forest. He plants a cypress tree, and the rain nourishes it. Then it will be for a man to burn, and he takes some of it and warms himself. Yes, he burns it and bakes bread. Yes, he makes a god and worships it. He makes it a carved image and falls down to it. He burns part of it in the fire. With part of it he eats meat. He roasts a roast and is satisfied. Yes, he warms himself and says, Aha, I am warm. I have seen the fire. The rest of it he makes into a god, even his engraved image. He bows down to it and worships and prays to it and says, Deliver me, for you are my god. They don't know, neither do they consider. For he has shut their eyes that they can't see, and their hearts that they can't understand. 
no one thinks, neither is there knowledge nor understanding to say, I have burned part of it in the fire. Yes, I have also baked bread on its coals. I have roasted meat and eaten it. Shall I make the rest of it into an abomination? Shall I bow down to a tree trunk? He feeds on ashes. A deceived heart has turned him aside, and he can't deliver his soul. Nor say, Isn't there a lie in my right hand? Remember these things, Jacob and Israel, for you are my servant. I have formed you. You are my servant. Israel, you will not be forgotten by me. I have blotted out as a thick cloud your transgressions, and as a cloud your sins. Return to me, for I have redeemed you. Sing, you heavens, for Yahweh has done it. Shout, you lower parts of the earth. Break out into singing, you mountains, O forest, all of your trees. For Yahweh has redeemed Jacob and will glorify himself in Israel. Yahweh, your Redeemer, and he who formed you from the womb, says, I am Yahweh who makes all things, who alone stretches out the heavens, who spreads out the earth by myself, who frustrates the signs of the liars and makes diviners mad, who turns wise men backward and makes their knowledge foolish, who confirms the word of his servant and performs the counsel of his messengers, who says of Jerusalem, she will be inhabited, and of the cities of Judah, they will be built, and I will raise up its waste places, who says to the deep, Be dry, and I will dry up your rivers, who says of Cyrus, He is my shepherd, and shall perform all my pleasure, even saying of Jerusalem, She will be built, and of the temple, your foundation will be laid. Chapter 45 Yahweh says to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have held, to subdue nations before him, and strip kings of their armor, to open the doors before him, and the gates shall not be shut. I will go before you, and make the rough places smooth. I will break the doors of bronze in pieces, and cut apart the bars of iron. I will give you the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places, that you may know that it is I, Yahweh, who call you by your name, even the God of Israel. For Jacob, my servant's sake, and Israel, my chosen, I have called you by your name. I have given you a title, though you have not known me. I am Yahweh and there is no one else. Besides me, there is no God. I will strengthen you, though you have not known me, that they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is no one besides me. I am Yahweh, and there is no one else. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create calamity. I am Yahweh who does all these things. Rain, you heavens, from above, and let the skies pour down righteousness. Let the earth open that it may produce salvation, and let it cause righteousness to spring up with it. I, Yahweh, have created it. Woe to him who strives with his Maker, a clay pot among the clay pots of the earth. Shall the clay ask him who fashions it, What are you making? Or your work? He has no hands. Woe to him who says to a father, What have you become the father of? Or to a mother, To what have you given birth? Yahweh, the Holy One of Israel, and his Maker, says, you ask me about the things that are to come, 
concerning my sons, and you command me concerning the work of my hands. I have made the earth and created man on it. I, even my hands, have stretched out the heavens, and I have commanded all their army. I have raised him up in righteousness, and I will make straight all his ways. He shall build my city, and he shall let my exiles go free, not for price nor reward, says Yahweh of armies. Yahweh says, The labor of Egypt and the merchandise of Ethiopia, and the Sabaeans, men of stature, shall come over to you, and they shall be yours. They will go after you. They shall come over in chains, and they will bow down to you. They will make supplication to you. Surely God is in you, and there is no one else. There is no other God. Most certainly you are a God who has hidden yourself. God of Israel, the Savior. They will be disappointed, yes, confounded, all of them. Those who are makers of idols will go into confusion together. Israel will be saved by Yahweh with an everlasting salvation. You will not be disappointed nor confounded to ages everlasting. For Yahweh, who created the heavens, the God who formed the earth and made it, who established it and didn't create it a waste, who formed it to be inhabited, says, I am Yahweh, and there is no other. I have not spoken in secret in a place of the land of darkness. I didn't say to the offspring of Jacob, Seek me in vain. I, Yahweh, speak righteousness. I declare things that are right. Assemble yourselves and come. Draw near together, you who have escaped from the nations. Those have no knowledge who carry the wood of their engraved image and pray to a God that can't save. Declare and present it. Yes, let them take counsel together. Who has shown this from ancient times? Who has declared it of old? Haven't I, Yahweh? There is no other God besides me, a just God and a Savior. There is no one besides me. Look to me and be saved, all the ends of the earth, for I am God and there is no other. I have sworn by myself. The word has gone out of my mouth in righteousness and will not be revoked, that to me every knee shall bow, every tongue shall take an oath. They will say of me, There is righteousness and strength only in Yahweh. Even to him shall men come, and all those who raged against him shall be disappointed. All the offspring of Israel will be justified in Yahweh and will rejoice. Chapter 46 Baal bows down, Nebo stoops. Their idols are carried by animals and on the livestock. The things that you carried around are heavy loads, a burden for the weary. They stoop and they bow down together. They could not deliver the burden, but they have gone into captivity. Listen to me, house of Jacob and all the remnant of the house of Israel that have been carried from their birth, that have been carried from the womb. Even to old age, I am he, and even to gray hairs I will carry you. I have made, and I will bear. Yes, I will carry, and will deliver. To whom will you compare me, and consider my equal, and compare me as if we were the same? Some pour out gold from the bag and weigh silver in the balance. They hire a goldsmith, and he makes it a god. They fall down. Yes, they worship. They bear it on their shoulder. They carry it and set it in its place, and it stands there. 
It cannot move from its place. Yes, one may cry to it, yet it cannot answer. It cannot save him out of his trouble. Remember this and show yourselves men. Bring it to mind again, you transgressors. Remember the former things of old. For I am God and there is no other. I am God and there is none like me. I declare the end from the beginning and from ancient times things that are not yet done. I say, my counsel will stand, and I will do all that I please. I call a ravenous bird from the east, the man of my counsel, from a far country. Yes, I have spoken. I will also bring it to pass. I have planned. I will also do it. Listen to me, you stubborn-hearted, who are far from righteousness. I bring my righteousness near, it is not far off, and my salvation will not wait. I will grant salvation to Zion, my glory to Israel. Chapter 47 Come down and sit in the dust, virgin daughter of Babylon. Sit on the ground without a throne, daughter of the Chaldeans. For you will no longer be called tender and delicate. Take the millstones and grind flour. Remove your veil. Lift up your skirt. Uncover your legs and wade through the rivers. Your nakedness will be uncovered. Yes, your shame will be seen. I will take vengeance and will spare no one. Our Redeemer. Yahweh of armies is his name, is the Holy One of Israel. Sit in silence and go into darkness, daughter of the Chaldeans, for you shall no longer be called the mistress of kingdoms. I was angry with my people. I profaned my inheritance and gave them into your hand. You showed them no mercy. You laid a very heavy yoke on the aged, you said, I will be a princess forever, so that you didn't lay these things to your heart, nor did you remember the results. Now, therefore, hear this, you who are given to pleasures, who sit securely, who say in your heart, I am, and there is no one else besides me. I shall not sit as a widow, neither shall I know the loss of children. But these two things shall come to you in a moment, in one day, the loss of children and widowhood. They will come on you in their full measure, in the multitude of your sorceries and the great abundance of your enchantments, for you have trusted in your wickedness. You have said, No one sees me. Your wisdom and your knowledge has perverted you. You have said in your heart, I am, and there is no one else besides me. Therefore, disaster will come on you. You won't know when it dawns. Mischief will fall on you. You won't be able to put it away. Desolation will come on you suddenly, which you don't understand. Stand now with your enchantments and with the multitude of your sorceries in which you have labored from your youth as if you might profit, as if you might prevail. You are wearied in the multitude of your counsels. Now let the astrologers, the stargazers, and the monthly prognosticators stand up and save you from the things that will come on you. Behold, they are like stubble. The fire will burn them. They won't deliver themselves from the power of the flame. It won't be a coal to warm at or a fire to sit by. The things that you labored in will be like this. Those who have trafficked with you from your youth will each wander in his own way. There will be no one to save you. Chapter 48 Hear this, house of Jacob, 
you who are called by the name of Israel and have come out of the waters of Judah? You swear by Yahweh's name and make mention of the God of Israel, but not in truth nor in righteousness. For they call themselves citizens of the holy city and rely on the God of Israel. Yahweh of armies is his name. I have declared the former things from of old. Yes, they went out of my mouth, and I revealed them. I did them suddenly, and they happened, because I knew that you are obstinate, and your neck is an iron sinew, and your brow bronze. Therefore I have declared it to you from of old. Before it came to pass, I showed it to you, lest you should say, My idol has done them, and my engraved image, and my molten image has commanded them. You have heard it. See all this. And you, won't you declare it? I have shown you new things from this time, even hidden things, which you have not known. They are created now, and not from of old. And before today you didn't hear them lest you should say, Behold, I knew them. Yes, you didn't hear. Yes, you didn't know. Yes, from of old your ear was not opened, for I knew that you dealt very treacherously and were called a transgressor from the womb. For my name's sake I will defer my anger, and for my praise I hold it back for you so that I don't cut you off. Behold, I have refined you, but not as silver. I have chosen you in the furnace of affliction for my own sake. For my own sake I will do it. For how would my name be profaned? I will not give my glory to another. Listen to me, O Jacob, and Israel, my called. I am he. I am the first, I am also the last. Yes, my hand has laid the foundation of the earth, and my right hand has spread out the heavens. When I call to them, they stand up together. Assemble yourselves, all of you, and hear. Who among them has declared these things? He whom Yahweh loves will do what he likes to Babylon and his arm will be against the Chaldeans. I, even I, have spoken. Yes, I have called him. I have brought him, and he shall make his way prosperous. Come near to me and hear this. From the beginning I have not spoken in secret. From the time that it happened, I was there. Now the Lord Yahweh has sent me with his Spirit, Yahweh, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, says, I am Yahweh, your God, who teaches you to profit, who leads you by the way that you should go. Oh, that you had listened to my commandments. Then your peace would have been like a river, and your righteousness like the waves of the sea. Your offspring also would have been as the sand, and the descendants of your body, like its grains. His name would not be cut off nor destroyed from before me. Leave Babylon, flee from the Chaldeans. With a voice of singing, announce this. Tell it even to the end of the earth. Say, Yahweh has redeemed his servant Jacob. They didn't thirst when he led them through the deserts. He caused the waters to flow out of the rock for them. He split the rock also, and the waters gushed out. There is no peace, says Yahweh, for the wicked. Chapter 49 Listen, islands, to me. Listen, you peoples, from afar. Yahweh has called me from the womb. From the inside of my mother he has mentioned my name. He has made my mouth like a sharp sword. He has hidden me in the shadow of his hand. He has made me a polished shaft. He has kept me close in his quiver. He said to me, 
you are my servant, Israel, in whom I will be glorified. But I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength in vain for nothing. Yet surely the justice due to me is with Yahweh, and my reward with my God. Now Yahweh says, He who formed me from the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob again to him, and to gather Israel to him. For I am honorable in Yahweh's eyes, and my God has become my strength. Indeed, he says, It is too light a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the preserved of Israel. I will also give you as a light to the nations, that you may be my salvation to the end of the earth. Yahweh, the Redeemer of Israel and His Holy One, says to him whom man despises, to him whom the nation abhors, to a servant of rulers, kings shall see and rise up, princes, and they shall worship, because of Yahweh, who is faithful, even the Holy One of Israel, who has chosen you. Yahweh says, In an acceptable time I have answered you, and in a day of salvation I have helped you. I will preserve you and give you for a covenant of the people, to raise up the land, to make them inherit the desolate heritage, saying to those who are bound, Come out, to those who are in darkness, show yourselves. They shall feed along the paths, and their pastures shall be on all treeless heights. They shall not hunger nor thirst, neither shall the heat nor sun strike them. For he who has mercy on them will lead them. He will guide them by springs of water. I will make all my mountains a road, and my highways shall be exalted. Behold, these shall come from afar, and behold, these from the north and from the west, and these from the land of Sinem. Sing, heavens, and be joyful, earth, and break out into singing, mountains. For Yahweh has comforted his people and will have compassion on his afflicted. But Zion said, Yahweh has forsaken me, and the Lord has forgotten me. Can a woman forget her nursing child? that she should not have compassion on the son of her womb? Yes, these may forget, yet I will not forget you. Behold, I have engraved you on the palms of my hands. Your walls are continually before me. Your children hurry. Your destroyers and those who devastated you will leave you. Lift up your eyes all around and see. All these gather themselves together and come to you. As I live, says Yahweh, you shall surely clothe yourself with them all as with an ornament and dress yourself with them like a bride. For as for your waste and your desolate places and your land that has been destroyed, surely now that land will be too small for the inhabitants and those who swallowed you up will be far away. The children of your bereavement will say in your ears, This place is too small for me. Give me a place to live in. Then you will say in your heart, Who has conceived these for me, since I have been bereaved of my children, and am solitary, an exile, and wandering back and forth? Who has brought these up? Behold, I was left alone. Where were these? Thus says the Lord Yahweh, Behold, I will lift up my hand to the nations and lift up my banner to the peoples, and they shall bring your sons in their bosom, and your daughters shall be carried on their shoulders. Kings shall be your foster fathers, and their queens your nursing mothers. They will bow down to you with their faces to the earth and lick the dust of your feet. Then you will know that I am Yahweh, and those who wait for me shall not be disappointed. Shall the plunder be taken from the mighty, or the lawful captives be delivered? 
But Yahweh says, Even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away, and the plunder retrieved from the fierce. For I will contend with him who contends with you, and I will save your children. I will feed those who oppress you with their own flesh, and they will be drunk on their own blood, as with sweet wine. Then all flesh shall know that I, Yahweh, am your Savior and your Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob. Chapter 50 Yahweh says, Where is the bill of your mother's divorce, with which I have put her away? Or to which of my creditors have I sold you? Behold, you were sold for your iniquities, and your mother was put away for your transgressions. Why, when I came, was there no one? When I called, why was there no one to answer? Is my hand shortened at all that it can't redeem? Or have I no power to deliver? Behold, at my rebuke I dry up the sea. I make the rivers a wilderness. Their fish stink because there is no water and die for thirst. I clothe the heavens with blackness and I make sackcloth their covering. The Lord Yahweh has given me the tongue of those who are taught, that I may know how to sustain with words him who is weary. He wakens morning by morning. He wakens my ear to hear as those who are taught. The Lord Yahweh has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, and my cheeks to those who plucked off the hair. I didn't hide my face from shame and spitting, for the Lord Yahweh will help me. Therefore, I have not been confounded. Therefore, I have set my face like a flint, and I know that I shall not be disappointed. He who justifies me is near. Who will bring charges against me? Let us stand up together. Who is my adversary? Let him come near to me. Behold, the Lord Yahweh will help me. Who is he who will condemn me? Behold, they will all grow old like a garment. The moths will eat them up. Who among you fears Yahweh and obeys the voice of his servant? He who walks in darkness and has no light, let him trust in Yahweh's name and rely on his God. Behold, all you who kindle a fire, who adorn yourselves with torches around yourselves, walk in the flame of your fire and among the torches that you have kindled. You will have this from my hand. You will lie down in sorrow. Chapter 51 Listen to me you who follow after righteousness, you who seek Yahweh. Look to the rock you were cut from and to the quarry you were dug from. Look to Abraham, your father, and to Sarah, who bore you. For when he was but one, I called him, and I blessed him, and made him many. For Yahweh has comforted Zion. He has comforted all her waste places, and has made her wilderness like Eden, and her desert like the garden of Yahweh. Joy and gladness will be found therein, thanksgiving and the voice of melody. Listen to me, my people, and hear me, my nation, for a law will go out from me, and I will establish my justice for a light to the peoples. My righteousness is near, my salvation has gone out, and my arms will judge the peoples. The islands will wait for me, and they will trust my arm. Lift up your eyes to the heavens, and look on the earth beneath, for the heavens will vanish away like smoke, and the earth will wear out like a garment, and its inhabitants will die in the same way. But my salvation will be forever. 
and my righteousness will not be abolished. Listen to me, you who know righteousness, the people in whose heart is my law. Don't fear the reproach of men, and don't be dismayed at their insults, for the moth will eat them up like a garment, and the worm will eat them like wool. But my righteousness will be forever and my salvation to all generations. Awake, awake, put on strength, arm of Yahweh. Awake as in the days of old, the generations of ancient times. Isn't it you who cut Rahab in pieces, who pierced the monster? Isn't it you who dried up the sea, the waters of the great deep? who made the depths of the sea a way for the redeemed to pass over, those ransomed by Yahweh will return and come with singing to Zion, and everlasting joy shall be on their heads. They will obtain gladness and joy. Sorrow and sighing shall flee away. I, even I, am he who comforts you. Who are you? that you are afraid of man who shall die, and of the son of man who will be made as grass. Have you forgotten Yahweh your maker, who stretched out the heavens and laid the foundations of the earth? Do you live in fear continually all day because of the fury of the oppressor when he prepares to destroy? Where is the fury of the oppressor? the captive exile will speedily be freed, and he will not die and go down into the pit, and his bread will not fail. For I am Yahweh your God who stirs up the sea so that its waves roar. Yahweh of armies is his name. I have put my words in your mouth and have covered you in the shadow of my hand that I may plant the heavens and lay the foundations of the earth, and tell Zion, You are my people. Awake, awake, stand up, Jerusalem, you who have drunk from Yahweh's hand the cup of his wrath. You have drunken the bowl of the cup of staggering, and drained it. There is no one to guide her among all the sons to whom she has given birth, and there is no one who takes her by the hand, among all the sons who she has brought up. These two things have happened to you. Who will grieve with you? Desolation and destruction and famine and the sword. How can I comfort you? Your sons have fainted. They lie at the head of all the streets, like an antelope in a net. They are full of Yahweh's wrath, the rebuke of your God. Therefore now, hear this, you afflicted and drunken, but not with wine. Thus says your Lord Yahweh, your God, who pleads the cause of his people. Behold, I have taken out of your hand the cup of staggering, even the bowl of the cup of my wrath. You will not drink it any more, and I will put it into the hand of those who afflict you, who have said to your soul, Bow down, that we may walk over you. And you have laid your back as the ground, like a street to those who walk over. Chapter 52 Awake, awake, put on your strength, Zion. Put on your beautiful garments, Jerusalem, the holy city. For from now on, the uncircumcised and the unclean will no more come into you. Shake yourself from the dust. Arise, sit up, Jerusalem. Release yourself from the bonds of your neck, captive daughter of Zion. For Yahweh says, You were sold for nothing, and you will be redeemed without money. For thus says the Lord Yahweh, my people went down at the first into Egypt to live there, and the Assyrian has oppressed them without cause. Now therefore, what do I do here, says Yahweh, seeing that my people are taken away for nothing? Those who rule over them mock, 
says Yahweh, and my name is blasphemed continually all day long. Therefore they shall know in that day that I am he who speaks. Behold, it is I. How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news, who publishes peace, who brings good news, who proclaims salvation, who says to Zion, Your God reigns. Your watchmen lift up their voice, together they sing, for they shall see eye to eye when Yahweh returns to Zion. Break out into joy. Sing together, you waste places of Jerusalem, for Yahweh has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. Yahweh has made bare his holy arm in the eyes of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Depart, depart, go out from there. Touch no unclean thing. Go out from among her. Cleanse yourselves, you who carry Yahweh's vessels, for you shall not go out in haste, neither shall you go by flight, for Yahweh will go before you, and the God of Israel will be your rear guard. Behold, my servant will deal wisely. He will be exalted and lifted up, and will be very high, just as many were astonished at you. His appearance was marred more than any man, and his form more than the sons of men. So he will cleanse many nations. Kings will shut their mouths at him, for they will see that which had not been told them, and they will understand that which they had not heard. Chapter 53 Who has believed our message? To whom has the arm of Yahweh been revealed? For he grew up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground. He has no good looks or majesty. When we see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of suffering and acquainted with disease. He was despised as one from whom men hide their face and we didn't respect him. Surely he has borne our sickness and carried our suffering. Yet we considered him plagued, struck by God, and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought our peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. All we, like sheep, have gone astray, Every one has turned to his own way, and Yahweh has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, yet when he was afflicted, he didn't open his mouth. As a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and as a sheep that before its shearers is silent, so he didn't open his mouth. He was taken away by oppression and judgment, and as for his generation, who considered that he was cut off out of the land of the living and stricken for the disobedience of my people? They made his grave with the wicked and with a rich man in his death, although he had done no violence nor was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased Yahweh to bruise him. He has caused him to suffer. When you make his soul an offering for sin, he will see his offspring. He will prolong his days, and Yahweh's pleasure will prosper in his hand. After the suffering of his soul, he will see the light and be satisfied. My righteous servant will justify many by the knowledge of himself, and he will bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will give him a portion with the great, and he will divide the plunder with the strong because he poured out his soul to death and was counted with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sins of many and made intercession for the transgressors. Chapter 54 Sing, barren, 
you who didn't give birth? Break out into singing and cry aloud, you who didn't travail with child. For more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife, says Yahweh. Enlarge the place of your tent, and let them stretch out the curtains of your habitations. Don't spare. Lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes, for you will spread out on the right hand and on the left, and your offspring will possess the nations and settle in desolate cities. Don't be afraid, for you will not be ashamed. Don't be confounded for you will not be disappointed. For you will forget the shame of your youth, and the reproach of your widowhood you shall remember no more. For your Maker is your husband, Yahweh of armies is his name. The Holy One of Israel is your Redeemer. He will be called the God of the whole earth. For Yahweh has called you as a wife forsaken and grieved in spirit. Even a wife of youth, when she is cast off, says your God. For a small moment I have forsaken you, but I will gather you with great mercies. In overflowing wrath I hid my face from you for a moment, but with everlasting loving kindness I will have mercy on you, says Yahweh, your Redeemer. For this is like the waters of Noah to me, for as I have sworn that the waters of Noah will no more go over the earth, so I have sworn that I will not be angry with you, nor rebuke you. For the mountains may depart, and the hills be removed, but my loving kindness will not depart from you, and my covenant of peace will not be removed, says Yahweh, who has mercy on you. You afflicted, tossed with storms, and not comfort it. Behold, I will set your stones in beautiful colors, and lay your foundations with sapphires. I will make your pinnacles of rubies, your gates of sparkling jewels, and all your walls of precious stones. All your children will be taught by Yahweh, and your children's peace will be great. In righteousness you will be established. You will be far from oppression, for you will not be afraid, and far from terror, for it shall not come near you. Behold, they may gather together, but not by me. Whoever gathers together against you will fall because of you. Behold, I have created the blacksmith who fans the coals into flame and forges a weapon for his work and I have created the destroyer to destroy. No weapon that is formed against you will prevail, and you will condemn every tongue that rises against you in judgment. This is the heritage of Yahweh's servants, and their righteousness is of me, says Yahweh. Chapter 15 Hey! Come, everyone who thirsts to the waters. Come, he who has no money, buy and eat. Yes, come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which doesn't satisfy? Listen diligently to me, and eat that which is good and let your soul delight itself in richness. Turn your ear and come to me. Hear, and your soul will live, and I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. Behold, I have given him for a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander to the peoples. Behold, you shall call a nation that you don't know, and a nation that didn't know you shall run to you because of Yahweh your God and for the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek Yahweh while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. 
Let him return to Yahweh, and he will have mercy on him, and to our God, for he will freely pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, and your ways are not my ways, says Yahweh. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain comes down, and the snow from the sky, and doesn't return there, but waters the earth, and makes it grow and bud, and gives seed to the sower, and bread to the eater, so is my word that goes out of my mouth, it will not return to me void, but it will accomplish that which I please, and it will prosper in the thing I sent it to do. For you shall go out with joy, and be led out with peace. The mountains and the hills will break out before you into singing, and all the trees of the fields will clap their hands. Instead of the thorn, the cypress tree will come up, and instead of the briar, the myrtle tree will come up and it will make a name for Yahweh, for an everlasting sign that will not be cut off. Chapter 56 Yahweh says, Maintain justice, and do what is right, for my salvation is near, and my righteousness will soon be revealed. Blessed is the man who does this, and the son of man who holds it fast, who keeps the Sabbath without profaning it, and keeps his hand from doing any evil. Let no foreigner who has joined himself to Yahweh speak, saying, Yahweh will surely separate me from his people. Do not let the eunuch say, Behold, I am a dry tree. For Yahweh says, To the eunuchs who keep my Sabbaths, and choose the things that please me, and hold fast to my covenant. I will give them in my house and within my walls a memorial and a name better than of sons and of daughters. I will give them an everlasting name that will not be cut off. Also, the foreigners who join themselves to Yahweh to serve him and to love Yahweh's name, to be his servants, Everyone who keeps the Sabbath from profaning it and holds fast my covenant, I will bring these to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar, for my house will be called a house of prayer for all peoples. The Lord Yahweh, who gathers the outcasts of Israel, says, I will yet gather others to him, in addition to his own who are gathered. All you animals of the field, come to devour. All you animals in the forest, his watchmen are blind. They are all without knowledge. They are all mute dogs. They can't bark. Dreaming, lying down, loving to slumber. Yes, the dogs are greedy. They can never have enough. They are shepherds who can't understand. They have all turned to their own way, each one to his gain from every quarter. Come, say they, I will get wine, and we will fill ourselves with strong drink, and tomorrow will be as today, great beyond measure. Chapter 57 the righteous perish, and no one lays it to heart. Merciful men are taken away, and no one considers that the righteous is taken away from the evil. He enters into peace. They rest in their beds, each one who walks in his uprightness. But draw near here, you sons of a sorceress, you offspring of adulterers and prostitutes. Whom do you mock? Against whom do you make a wide mouth and stick out your tongue? Aren't you children of disobedience and offspring of falsehood? You who inflame yourselves among the oaks, under every green tree, 
who killed the children in the valleys under the clefts of the rocks among the smooth stones of the valley is your portion they they are your lot you have even poured a drink offering to them you have offered an offering shall i be appeased for these things on a high and lofty mountain you have set your bed you also went up there to offer sacrifice you have set up your memorial behind the doors and the posts for you have exposed yourself to someone besides me and have gone up you have enlarged your bed and made you a covenant with them you loved what you saw on their bed you went to the king with oil and increased your perfumes and sent your ambassadors far off and degraded yourself even to sheol you were wearied with the length of your ways yet you didn't say it is in vain you found a reviving of your strength therefore you weren't faint whom have you dreaded and feared so that you lie and have not remembered me nor laid it to your heart haven't i held my peace for a long time and you don't fear me i will declare your righteousness and as for your works they will not benefit you when you cry let those whom you have gathered deliver you but the wind will take them a breath will carry them all away but he who takes refuge in me will possess the land and will inherit my holy mountain he will say build up build up prepare the way remove the stumbling block out of the way of my people for thus says the high and lofty one who inhabits eternity whose name is holy i dwell in the high and holy place with him also who is of a contrite and humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite for i will not contend for ever neither will i always be angry for the spirit would faint before me and the souls whom i have made i was angry because of the iniquity of his covetousness and struck him i hid myself and was angry and he went on backsliding in the way of his heart i have seen his ways and i will heal him i will lead him also and restore comforts to him and to his mourners I create the fruit of the lips. Peace, peace to him who is far off and to him who is near, says Yahweh, and I will heal them. But the wicked are like the troubled sea, for it can't rest, and its waters cast up mire and mud. There is no peace, says my God, for the wicked. Chapter 58 cry aloud don't spare lift up your voice like a trumpet declare to my people their disobedience and to the house of jacob their sins yet they seek me daily and delight to know my ways as a nation that did righteousness and didn't forsake the ordinance of their god they ask of me righteous judgments they delight to draw near to god why have we fasted they say and you don't see why have we afflicted our soul and you don't notice behold in the day of your fast you find pleasure and oppress all your laborers behold you fast for strife and contention and to strike with the fist of wickedness you don't fast today so as to make your voice to be heard on high is this the fast that i have chosen a day for a man to humble his soul is it to bow down his head like a reed and to spread sackcloth and ashes under himself will you call this a fast and an acceptable day to yahweh isn't this the fast that i have chosen to release the bonds of wickedness to undo the straps of the yoke to let the oppressed go free and that you break every yoke 
isn't it to distribute your bread to the hungry, and that you bring the poor who are cast out to your house? When you see the naked, that you cover him, and that you not hide yourself from your own flesh? Then your light will break out as the morning, and your healing will appear quickly. Then your righteousness shall go before you, and Yahweh's glory will be your rear guard. Then you will call, and Yahweh will answer. You will cry for help, and he will say, Here I am. If you take away from among you the yoke, finger-pointing and speaking wickedly, and if you pour out your soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul, then your light will rise in darkness, and your obscurity will be as the noonday, and Yahweh will guide you continually and satisfy your soul in dry places and make your bones strong, and you shall be like a watered garden and like a spring of water whose waters don't fail. Those who shall be of you shall build the old waste places. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations, and you shall be called repairer of the breach, restorer of paths with dwellings. If you turn away your foot from the Sabbath, from doing your pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, and the holy of Yahweh honorable, and shall honor it, not doing your own ways, nor finding your own pleasure, nor speaking your own words. Then you shall delight yourself in Yahweh, and I will make you to ride on the high places of the earth, and I will feed you with the heritage of Jacob your father, for Yahweh's mouth has spoken it. Chapter 59 Behold, Yahweh's hand is not shortened that it can't save, nor his ear dull that it can't hear. But your iniquities have separated you and your God, and your sins have hidden his face from you, so that he will not hear. For your hands are defiled with blood, and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies. Your tongue mutters wickedness. No one sues in righteousness, and no one pleads in truth. They trust in vanity and speak lies. They conceive mischief and give birth to iniquity. They hatch adder's eggs and weave the spider's web. He who eats of their eggs dies, and that which is crushed breaks out into a viper. Their webs won't become garments. They won't cover themselves with their works. Their works are works of iniquity, and acts of violence are in their hands. Their feet run to evil, and they hurry to shed innocent blood. Their thoughts are thoughts of iniquity. Desolation and destruction are in their paths. They don't know the way of peace, and there is no justice in their ways. They have made crooked paths for themselves. Whoever goes in them doesn't know peace. Therefore, justice is far from us, and righteousness doesn't overtake us. We look for light, but see darkness, for brightness, but we walk in obscurity. We grope for the wall like the blind. Yes, we grope as those who have no eyes. We stumble at noon as if it were twilight. Among those who are strong, we are like dead men. We all roar like bears and moan bitterly like doves. We look for justice, but there is none. For salvation, but it is far off from us. For our transgressions are multiplied before you, and our sins testify against us. For our transgressions are with us, and as for our iniquities, we know them, transgressing and denying Yahweh, and turning away from following our God, speaking oppression and revolt, conceiving and uttering from the heart words of falsehood, 
justice is turned away backward, and righteousness stands far away, for truth has fallen in the street, and uprightness can't enter. Yes, truth is lacking, and he who departs from evil makes himself a prey. Yahweh saw it, and it displeased him that there was no justice. He saw that there was no man, and wondered that there was no intercessor. Therefore, his own arm brought salvation to him, and his righteousness sustained him. He put on righteousness as a breastplate and a helmet of salvation on his head. He put on garments of vengeance for clothing and was clad with zeal as a mantle. According to their deeds, he will repay as appropriate wrath to his adversaries, recompense to his enemies, he will repay the islands their due, so they will fear Yahweh's name from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun, for he will come as a rushing stream which Yahweh's breath drives. A redeemer will come to Zion and to those who turn from disobedience in Jacob, says Yahweh. As for me, this is my covenant with them, says Yahweh my spirit who is on you and my words which i have put in your mouth shall not depart out of your mouth nor out of the mouth of your offspring nor out of the mouth of your offspring's offspring says yahweh from henceforth and forever chapter 60 arise shine for your light has come, and Yahweh's glory has risen on you. For behold, darkness will cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But Yahweh will arise on you, and his glory shall be seen on you. Nations will come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. Lift up your eyes all around, and see. They all gather themselves together. They come to you. Your sons will come from far away, and your daughters will be carried in arms. Then you shall see and be radiant, and your heart will thrill and be enlarged, because the abundance of the sea will be turned to you. The wealth of the nations will come to you. A multitude of camels will cover you the dromedaries of Midian and Ephah. All from Sheba will come. They will bring gold and frankincense and will proclaim the praises of Yahweh. All the flocks of Keter will be gathered together to you. The rams of Nebaioth will serve you. They will be accepted as offerings on my altar, and I will beautify my glorious house. Who are these who fly as a cloud? and as the doves to their windows. Surely the islands will wait for me, and the ships of Tarshish first, to bring your sons from far, their silver and their gold with them. For the name of Yahweh your God, and for the Holy One of Israel, because he has glorified you. Foreigners will build up your walls, and their kings will serve you. For in my wrath I struck you, but in my favor I have had mercy on you. Your gates also shall be open continually. They shall not be shut day nor night, that men may bring to you the wealth of the nations and their kings led captive. For that nation and kingdom that will not serve you shall perish. Yes, those nations shall be utterly wasted. The glory of Lebanon shall come to you, the cypress tree, the pine, and the box tree together, to beautify the place of my sanctuary. And I will make the place of my feet glorious. The sons of those who afflicted you will come bowing to you, and all those who despised you will bow themselves down at the soles of your feet. They will call you Yahweh's city the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Whereas you have been forsaken and hated, 
so that no one passed through you. I will make you an eternal excellency, a joy of many generations. You will also drink the milk of the nations and will nurse from royal breasts. Then you will know that I, Yahweh, am your Savior, your Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob. For bronze I will bring gold, for iron I will bring silver, for wood bronze, and for stones iron. I will also make peace your governor, and righteousness your ruler. Violence shall no more be heard in your land, nor desolation or destruction within your borders. But you will call your walls salvation, and your gates praise. The sun will be no more your light by day, nor will the brightness of the moon give light to you. But Yahweh will be your everlasting light, and your God will be your glory. Your sun will not go down any more, nor will your moon withdraw itself. For Yahweh will be your everlasting light, and the days of your mourning will end. Then your people will all be righteous. They will inherit the land forever. The branch of my planting, the work of my hands, that I may be glorified. The little one will become a thousand, and the small one a strong nation. I, Yahweh, will do this quickly in its time. Chapter 61 The Lord Yahweh's Spirit is on me, because Yahweh has anointed me to preach good news to the humble. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and release to those who are bound, to proclaim the year of Yahweh's favor, and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give to them a garland for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of Yahweh, that he may be glorified. They will rebuild the old ruins, they will raise up the places long devastated. They will repair the ruined cities that have been devastated for many generations. Strangers will stand and feed your flocks, and foreigners will work your fields and your vineyards. But you will be called Yahweh's priests. Men will call you the servants of our God. You will eat the wealth of the nations, and you will boast in their glory. Instead of your shame, you will have double. Instead of dishonor, they will rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in their land, they will possess double. Everlasting joy will be to them. For I, Yahweh, love justice. I hate robbery and iniquity. I will give them their reward in truth and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their seed will be known among the nations, and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them will acknowledge them, that they are the offspring which Yahweh has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in Yahweh. My soul will be joyful in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth produces its bud, and as the garden causes the things that are sown in it to spring up, so the Lord Yahweh will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. Chapter 62 For Zion's sake I will not hold my peace, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest until her righteousness shines out like the dawn and her salvation like a burning lamp. The nations will see your righteousness and all kings your glory, 
and you will be called by a new name, which Yahweh's mouth will name. You will also be a crown of beauty in Yahweh's hand, and a royal diadem in your God's hand. You will not be called forsaken any more, nor will your land be called desolate any more, but you will be called Hephzibah, and your land Beulah, for Yahweh delights in you, and your land will be married. For as a young man marries a virgin, so your sons will marry you. As a bridegroom rejoices over his bride, so your God will rejoice over you. I have set watchmen on your walls, Jerusalem. They will never be silent, day nor night. You who call on Yahweh, take no rest and give him no rest until he establishes and until he makes Jerusalem a praise in the earth. Yahweh has sworn by his right hand and by the arm of his strength, Surely I will no more give your grain to be food for your enemies, and foreigners will not drink your new wine for which you have labored, but those who have harvested it will eat it and praise Yahweh, and those who have gathered it will drink it in the courts of my sanctuary. Go through, go through the gates, prepare the way of the people, build up, build up the highway, gather out the stones, lift up a banner for the peoples. Behold, Yahweh has proclaimed to the end of the earth, say to the daughter of Zion, Behold, your salvation comes, behold, his reward is with him and his recompense before him. They will call them the holy people, Yahweh's redeemed. You will be called sought out, a city not forsaken. Chapter 63 Who is this who comes from Edom with dyed garments from Basra? Who is this who is glorious in his clothing? marching in the greatness of his strength. It is I who speak in righteousness, mighty to save. Why is your clothing red, and your garments like him who treads in the wine vat? I have trodden the winepress alone, and of the peoples no one was with me. Yes, I trod them in my anger, and trampled them in my wrath. Their life blood is sprinkled on my garments, and I have stained all my clothing. For the day of vengeance was in my heart, and the year of my redeemed has come. I looked, and there was no one to help, and I wondered that there was no one to uphold. Therefore my own arm brought salvation to me, and my own wrath upheld me. I trod down the peoples in my anger, and made them drunk in my wrath, and I poured out their life blood on the earth. I will tell of the loving kindnesses of Yahweh and the praises of Yahweh, according to all that Yahweh has given to us, and the great goodness toward the house of Israel, which he has given to them according to his mercies and according to the multitude of his loving kindnesses. For he said, Surely they are my people, children who will not deal falsely. So he became their savior. In all their affliction he was afflicted, and the angel of his presence saved them. In his love and in his pity he redeemed them. He bore them and carried them all the days of old, but they rebelled and grieved his Holy Spirit. Therefore he turned and became their enemy, and he himself fought against them. Then he remembered the days of old, Moses and his people saying, Where is he who brought them up out of the sea with the shepherds of his flock? Where is he who put his Holy Spirit among them, who caused his glorious arm to be at Moses' right hand? who divided the waters before them to make himself an everlasting name, who led them through the depths 
like a horse in the wilderness, so that they didn't stumble. As the livestock that go down into the valley, Yahweh's spirit caused them to rest. So you led your people to make yourself a glorious name. Look down from heaven and see from the habitation of your holiness and of your glory. Where are your zeal and your mighty acts? The yearning of your heart and your compassion is restrained toward me, for you are our father, though Abraham doesn't know us, and Israel does not acknowledge us. You, Yahweh, are our father. Our Redeemer from everlasting is your name. O oh, Yahweh, why do you make us wander from your ways and harden our heart from your fear? Return for your servants' sake, the tribes of your inheritance. Your holy people possessed it but a little while. Our adversaries have trodden down your sanctuary. We have become like those over whom you never ruled, like those who were not called by your name. Chapter 64 Oh, that you would tear the heavens! that you would come down, that the mountains might quake at your presence, as when fire kindles the brushwood and the fire causes the water to boil. Make your name known to your adversaries, that the nations may tremble at your presence. When you did awesome things which we didn't look for, you came down and the mountains quaked at your presence. For from of old, Men have not heard, nor perceived by the ear, nor has the eye seen a God besides you, who works for him, who waits for him. You meet him who rejoices and does righteousness, those who remember you in your ways. Behold, you were angry, and we sinned. We have been in sin for a long time. Shall we be saved? For we have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteousness is like a polluted garment. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, take us away. There is no one who calls on your name, who stirs himself up to take hold of you. For you have hidden your face from us, and have consumed us by means of our iniquities. But now, Yahweh, you are our father. We are the clay, and you our potter. We all are the work of your hand. Don't be furious, Yahweh, and don't remember iniquity forever. Look and see, we beg you. We are all your people. Your holy cities have become a wilderness. Zion has become a wilderness. Jerusalem, a desolation our holy and our beautiful house, where our fathers praised you, is burned with fire, and all our pleasant places are laid waste. Will you hold yourself back for these things, Yahweh? Will you keep silent and punish us very severely? Chapter 65 I am inquired of by those who didn't ask. I am found by those who didn't seek me. I said, See me, see me, to a nation that was not called by my name. I have spread out my hands all day to a rebellious people who walk in a way that is not good after their own thoughts, a people who provoke me to my face continually, sacrificing in gardens, and burning incense on bricks, who sit among the graves and spend nights in secret places, who eat pig's meat, and broth of abominable things is in their vessels, who say, Stay by yourself, don't come near to me, for I am holier than you. These are smoke in my nose, a fire that burns all day. Behold, it is written before me, I will not keep silence, but will repay. Yes, I will repay into their bosom. 
your own iniquities and the iniquities of your fathers together, says Yahweh, who have burned incense on the mountains and blasphemed me on the hills. Therefore I will first measure their work into their bosom. Yahweh says, As the new wine is found in the cluster, and one says, Don't destroy it, for a blessing is in it. So I will do for my servants' sake that I may not destroy them all. I will bring offspring out of Jacob and out of Judah an inheritor of my mountains. My chosen will inherit it, and my servants will dwell there. Sharon will be a fold of flocks, and the valley of Achor a place for herds to lie down in, for my people who have sought me. But you who forsake Yahweh, who forget my holy mountain, who prepare a table for fortune, and who fill up mixed wine to destiny. I will destine you to the sword, and you will all bow down to the slaughter, because when I called, you didn't answer. When I spoke, you didn't listen. But you did that which was evil in my eyes, and chose that in which I didn't delight. Therefore, thus says the Lord Yahweh, Behold, my servants will eat, but you will be hungry. Behold, my servants will drink, but you will be thirsty. Behold, my servants will rejoice, but you will be disappointed. Behold, my servants will sing for joy of heart, but you will cry for sorrow of heart and will wail for anguish of spirit. You will leave your name for a curse to my chosen, and the Lord Yahweh will kill you. He will call his servants by another name, so that he who blesses himself in the earth will bless himself in the God of truth, and he who swears in the earth will swear by the God of truth. Because the former troubles are forgotten, and because they are hidden from my eyes. For, behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former things will not be remembered nor come into mind. But be glad and rejoice forever in that which I create. For, behold, I create Jerusalem to be a delight, and her people a joy. I will rejoice in Jerusalem, and delight in my people. And the voice of weeping and the voice of crying will be heard in her no more. No more will there be an infant who only lives a few days, nor an old man who has not filled his days. For the child will die one hundred years old, and the sinner being one hundred years old will be accursed. They will build houses and inhabit them, they will plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They will not build and another inhabit. They will not plant and another eat. For the days of my people will be like the days of a tree, and my chosen will long enjoy the work of their hands. They will not labor in vain, nor give birth for calamity. For they are the offspring of Yahweh's blessed and their descendants with them. It will happen that, before they call, I will answer, and while they are yet speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb will feed together, and the lion will eat straw like the ox. Dust will be the serpent's food. They will not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, says Yahweh. Chapter 66 Yahweh says, Heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. What kind of house will you build to me? Where will I rest? For my hand has made all these things, and so all these things came to be, says Yahweh. But I will look to this man, even to he who is poor and of a contrite spirit, and who trembles at my word. 
He who kills an ox is as he who kills a man. He who sacrifices a lamb as he who breaks a dog's neck. He who offers an offering as he who offers pig's blood. He who burns frankincense as he who blesses an idol. Yes, they have chosen their own ways and their soul delights in their abominations. I also will choose their delusions and will bring their fears on them because when I called, no one answered. When I spoke, they didn't listen but they did that which was evil in my eyes and chose that in which I didn't delight. Hear Yahweh's word, you who tremble at his word, your brothers who hate you, who cast you out for my name's sake, have said, Let Yahweh be glorified that we may see your joy. But it is those who shall be disappointed, a voice of tumult from the city, a voice from the temple, a voice of Yahweh that repays his enemies what they deserve. Before she travailed, she gave birth. Before her pain came, she delivered a son. Who has heard of such a thing? Who has seen such things? Shall a land be born in one day? Shall a nation be born at once? For as soon as Zion travailed, she gave birth to her children. Shall I bring to the birth and not cause to be delivered? Says Yahweh. Shall I who cause to give birth shut the womb? Says your God. Rejoice with Jerusalem and be glad for her, all you who love her. Rejoice for joy with her, all you who mourn over her that you may nurse and be satisfied at the comforting breasts, that you may drink deeply and be delighted with the abundance of her glory. For Yahweh says, Behold, I will extend peace to her like a river, and the glory of the nations like an overflowing stream, and you will nurse. You will be carried on her side and will be dandled on her knees as one whom his mother comforts, so I will comfort you. You will be comforted in Jerusalem. You will see it, and your heart shall rejoice, and your bones will flourish like the tender grass. Yahweh's hand will be known among his servants, and he will have indignation against his enemies. For, behold, Yahweh will come with fire, and his chariots will be like the whirlwind to render his anger with fierceness and his rebuke with flames of fire. For Yahweh will execute judgment by fire and by his sword on all flesh. And those slain by Yahweh will be many. Those who sanctify themselves and purify themselves to go to the gardens behind one in the middle, eating pig's meat, abominable things, and the mouse, they shall come to an end together, says Yahweh. For I know their works and their thoughts. The time comes that I will gather all nations and languages, and they will come and will see my glory. I will set a sign among them, and I will send those who escape of them to the nations, to Tarshish, Pool, and Lud, who draw the bow, to Tubal and Javan, to faraway islands, who have not heard my fame, nor have seen my glory. And they shall declare my glory among the nations. They shall bring all your brothers out of all the nations for an offering to Yahweh, on horses, in chariots, in litters, on mules, and on camels to my holy mountain Jerusalem, says Yahweh, as the children of Israel bring their offering in a clean vessel into Yahweh's house. Of them I will also select priests and Levites, says Yahweh. For as the new heavens and the new earth, which I will make, 
shall remain before me, says Yahweh, so your offspring and your name shall remain. It shall happen that from one new moon to another, and from one Sabbath to another, all flesh will come to worship before me, says Yahweh. They will go out and look at the dead bodies of the men who have transgressed against me, for their worm will not die, nor will their fire be quenched, and they will be loathsome to all mankind. The Book of Jeremiah Chapter 1 The Words of Jeremiah, the son of Hilkiah one of the priests who were in Anathoth in the land of Benjamin. Yahweh's word came to him in the days of Josiah, the son of Ammon, king of Judah, in the thirteenth year of his reign. It came also in the days of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, to the end of the eleventh year of Zedekiah, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, to the carrying away of Jerusalem captive in the fifth month. Now Yahweh's word came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I have appointed you a prophet to the nations. Then I said, Ah, Lord Yahweh, behold, I don't know how to speak, for I... I am a child. But Yahweh said to me, Don't say, I am a child, for you must go to whomever I send you, and you must say whatever I command you. Don't be afraid because of them, for I am with you to rescue you, says Yahweh. Then Yahweh stretched out his hand and touched my mouth. Then Yahweh said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. Behold, I have today set you over the nations and over the kingdoms to uproot and to tear down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. Moreover, Yahweh's word came to me, saying, Jeremiah, what do you see? I said, I see a branch of an almond tree. Then Yahweh said to me, You have seen well, for I watch over my word to perform it. Yahweh's word came to me the second time, saying, What do you see? I said, I see a boiling cauldron, and it is tipping away from the north. Then Yahweh said to me, Out of the north evil will break out on all the inhabitants of the land. For, behold, I will call all the families of the kingdoms of the north, says Yahweh. They will come, and they will each set his throne at the entrance of the gates of Jerusalem, and against all its walls all around, and against all the cities of Judah. I will utter my judgments against them, concerning all their wickedness, in that they have forsaken me, and have burned incense to other gods, and worshipped the works of their own hands. You, therefore, put your belt on your waist, arise, and say to them all that I command you. Don't be dismayed at them, lest I dismay you before them. For, behold, I have made you today a fortified city, an iron pillar, and bronze walls against the whole land, against the kings of Judah, against its princes, against its priests, and against the people of the land. They will fight against you, but they will not prevail against you, for I am with you, says Yahweh to rescue you. Chapter 2 Yahweh's word came to me, saying, Go and proclaim in the ears of Jerusalem, saying, Yahweh says, 
I remember for you the kindness of your youth, the love of your weddings, how you went after me in the wilderness, in a land that was not sown. Israel was holiness to Yahweh, the first fruits of his increase. All who devour him will be held guilty. Evil will come on them, says Yahweh. Hear Yahweh's word, O house of Jacob, and all the families of the house of Israel. Yahweh says, What unrighteousness have your fathers found in me, that they have gone far from me, and have walked after worthless vanity, and have become worthless? They didn't say, Where is Yahweh who brought us up out of the land of Egypt, who led us through the wilderness, through a land of deserts and of pits, through a land of drought and of the shadow of death, through a land that no one passed through and where no man lived? I brought you into a plentiful land to eat its fruit and its goodness. But when you entered, you defiled my land, and made my heritage an abomination. The priests didn't say, Where is Yahweh? And those who handled the law didn't know me. The rulers also transgressed against me, and the prophets prophesied by Baal, and followed things that do no profit. Therefore, I will yet contend with you, says Yahweh and I will contend with your children's children. For pass over to the islands of Kittim and see, and send to Kedar and consider diligently, and see if there has been such a thing. Has a nation changed its gods, which really are no gods? But my people have changed their glory for that which doesn't profit. Be astonished, you heavens, at this, and be horribly afraid. Be very desolate, says Yahweh, for my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the spring of living waters, and cut out cisterns for themselves, broken cisterns that can't hold water. Is Israel a slave? Is he born into slavery? Why has he become a captive? The young lions have roared at him and yelled. They have made his land waste. His cities are burned up without inhabitant. The children also of Memphis and Tophanes have broken the crown of your head. Haven't you brought this on yourself? in that you have forsaken Yahweh your God when he led you by the way? Now what do you gain by going to Egypt to drink the waters of the Shihor? Or why do you go on the way to Assyria to drink the waters of the river? Your own wickedness will correct you, and your backsliding will rebuke you. Know, therefore, and see that it is an evil and bitter thing that you have forsaken Yahweh your God, and that my fear is not in you, says the Lord, Yahweh of armies. For long ago I broke off your yoke and burst your bonds. You said, I will not serve, for on every high hill and under every green tree you bowed yourself, playing the prostitute. Yet I had planted you a noble vine, a pure and faithful seed. How then have you turned into the degenerate branches of a foreign vine to me? For though you wash yourself with lye and use much soap, yet your iniquity is marked before me, says the Lord Yahweh. How can you say, I am not defiled? I have not gone after the bales. See your way in the valley. Know what you have done. You are a swift dromedary traversing her ways, a wild donkey used to the wilderness that sniffs the wind in her craving. When she is in heat, who can turn her away? 
all those who seek her will not weary themselves. In her month they will find her. Keep your feet from being bare, and your throat from thirst. But you said, It is in vain. No, for I have loved strangers, and I will go after them. As the thief is ashamed when he is found, so the house of Israel is ashamed. They, their kings, their princes, their priests, and their prophets, who tell wood, You are my father, and a stone, you have given birth to me. For they have turned their back to me, and not their face. But in the time of their trouble, they will say, Arise and save us. But where are your gods that you have made for yourselves? Let them arise, if they can save you in the time of your trouble. For you have as many gods as you have towns, O Judah. Why will you contend with me? You all have transgressed against me, says Yahweh. I have struck your children in vain. They received no correction. Your own sword has devoured your prophets, like a destroying lion. Generation, consider Yahweh's word. Have I been a wilderness to Israel, or a land of thick darkness? Why do my people say, we have broken loose. We will come to you no more. Can a virgin forget her ornaments, or a bride her attire? Yet my people have forgotten me for days without number. How well you prepare your way to seek love. Therefore, you have even taught the wicked women your ways. Also, the blood of the souls of the innocent poor is found in your skirts. You didn't find them breaking in, but it is because of all these things. Yet you said, I am innocent. Surely his anger has turned away from me. Behold, I will judge you, because you say, I have not sinned. Why do you go about so much to change your ways? You will be ashamed of Egypt also, as you were ashamed of Assyria. You will also leave that place with your hands on your head, for Yahweh has rejected those in whom you trust, and you won't prosper with them. Chapter 3 They say, If a man puts away his wife, and she goes from him, and becomes another man, should he return to her again? Wouldn't that land be greatly polluted? But you have played the prostitute with many lovers, yet return again to me, says Yahweh. Lift up your eyes to the bare heights and see, where have you not been lain with? You have sat waiting for them by the road, as an Arabian in the wilderness. You have polluted the land with your prostitution and with your wickedness. Therefore, the showers have been withheld, and there has been no latter rain. Yet you have had a prostitute's forehead, and you refused to be ashamed. Will you not from this time cry to me, My father, you are the guide of my youth? Will he retain his anger forever? Will he keep it to the end? Behold, you have spoken, and have done evil things, and have had your way. Moreover, Yahweh said to me in the days of Josiah the king, Have you seen that which backsliding Israel has done? She has gone up on every high mountain, and under every green tree, and has played the prostitute there. I said, after she had done all these things, she will return to me. But she didn't return, and her treacherous sister Judah saw it. I saw when, for this very cause, that backsliding Israel had committed adultery. I had put her away and given her a certificate of divorce. Yet treacherous Judah, her sister, had no fear. But she also went and played the prostitute. 
because she took her prostitution lightly, the land was polluted, and she committed adultery with stones and with wood. Yet for all this, her treacherous sister Judah has not returned to me with her whole heart, but only in pretense, says Yahweh. Yahweh said to me, Backsliding Israel has shown herself more righteous than treacherous Judah. Go and proclaim these words toward the north, and say, Return, you backsliding Israel, says Yahweh. I will not look in anger on you, for I am merciful, says Yahweh. I will not keep anger forever. Only acknowledge your iniquity, that you have transgressed against Yahweh your God, and have scattered your ways to the strangers under every green tree. And you have not obeyed my voice, says Yahweh. Return, backsliding children, says Yahweh, for I am a husband to you. I will take one of you from a city, and two from a family, and I will bring you to Zion. I will give you shepherds according to my heart, who will feed you with knowledge and understanding. It will come to pass, when you are multiplied and increased in the land. In those days, says Yahweh, they will no longer say, The ark of Yahweh's covenant. It will not come to mind. They won't remember it. They won't miss it, nor will another be made. At that time they will call Jerusalem Yahweh's throne, and all the nations will be gathered to it, to Yahweh's name, to Jerusalem. They will no longer walk after the stubbornness of their evil heart. In those days the house of Judah will walk with the house of Israel, and they will come together out of the land of the north to the land that I gave for an inheritance to your fathers. But I said, How I desire to put you among the children, and give you a pleasant land, a goodly heritage of the armies of the nations. And I said, You shall call me my father, and shall not turn away from following me. Surely as a wife treacherously departs from her husband, so you have dealt treacherously with me, house of Israel, says Yahweh. A voice is heard on the bare heights, the weeping and the petitions of the children of Israel, because they have perverted their way. They have forgotten Yahweh, their God. Return, you backsliding children, and I will heal your backsliding. Behold, we have come to you, for you are Yahweh, our God. Truly in vain is help from the hills, the tumult on the mountains, Truly, the salvation of Israel is in Yahweh, our God. But the shameful thing has devoured the labor of our fathers from our youth, their flocks and their herds, their sons and their daughters. Let us lie down in our shame, and let our confusion cover us. For we have sinned against Yahweh, our God, we and our fathers, from our youth even to this day. We have not obeyed Yahweh our God's voice. Chapter 4 If you will return, Israel, says Yahweh, if you will return to me, and if you will put away your abominations out of my sight, then you will not be removed, and you will swear as Yahweh lives in truth, in justice, and in righteousness. The nations will bless themselves in him, and they will glory in him. For Yahweh says to the men of Judah and to Jerusalem, Break up your fallow ground, and don't sow among thorns. Circumcise yourselves to Yahweh, and take away the foreskins of your heart, you men of Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem, lest my wrath go out like fire and burn so that no one can quench it because of the evil of your doings. Declare in Judah and publish in Jerusalem and say, Blow the trumpet in the land. Cry aloud and say, Assemble yourselves. 
Let's go into the fortified cities. Set up a standard toward Zion. Flee for safety. Don't wait, for I will bring evil from the north and a great destruction. A lion has gone up from his thicket and a destroyer of nations. He is on his way. He has gone out from his place to make your land desolate, that your cities be laid waste without inhabitant. For this, clothe yourself with sackcloth, lament and wail, for the fierce anger of Yahweh hasn't turned back from us. It will happen at that day, says Yahweh, that the heart of the king will perish along with the heart of the princes. The priests will be astonished, and the prophets will wonder. Then I said, Ah, Lord Yahweh, surely you have greatly deceived this people in Jerusalem, saying, You will have peace, whereas the sword reaches to the heart. At that time it will be said to this people and to Jerusalem, A hot wind from the bare heights in the wilderness toward the daughter of my people, not to winnow, nor to cleanse. A full wind from these will come for me. Now I will also utter judgments against them. Behold, he will come up as clouds, and his chariots will be as the whirlwind. His horses are swifter than eagles. Woe to us, for we are ruined. Jerusalem, Wash your heart from wickedness, that you may be saved. How long will your evil thoughts lodge within you? For a voice declares from Dan, and publishes evil from the hills of Ephraim. Tell the nations, Behold, publish against Jerusalem. Watchers come from a far country, and raise their voice against the cities of Judah, as keepers of a field. They are against her all around, because she has been rebellious against me, says Yahweh. Your way and your doings have brought these things to you. This is your wickedness, for it is bitter, for it reaches to your heart. My anguish, my anguish, I am pained at my very heart. My heart trembles within me. I can't hold my peace. Because you have heard, O my soul, the sound of the trumpet, the alarm of war. Destruction on destruction is decreed, for the whole land is laid waste. Suddenly my tents are destroyed, and my curtains gone in a moment. How long will I see the standard and hear the sound of the trumpet? For my people are foolish. They don't know me. They are foolish children and they have no understanding. They are skillful in doing evil, but they don't know how to do good. I saw the earth, and, behold, it was waste and void, and the heavens, and they had no light. I saw the mountains, and, behold, they trembled, and all the hills moved back and forth. I saw, and, behold, there was no man, and all the birds of the sky had fled. I saw, and behold, the fruitful field was a wilderness, and all its cities were broken down at the presence of Yahweh, before his fierce anger. For Yahweh says, The whole land will be a desolation, yet I will not make a full end. For this the earth will mourn, and the heavens above be black because I have spoken it. I have planned it, and I have not repented, neither will I turn back from it. Every city flees for the noise of the horsemen and archers. They go into the thickets and climb up on the rocks. Every city is forsaken, and not a man dwells therein. You, when you are made desolate, what will you do? Though you clothe yourself with scarlet, though you deck yourself with ornaments of gold, though you enlarge your eyes with makeup, you make yourself beautiful in vain. Your lovers despise you. They seek your life. For I have heard a voice as of a woman in travail. 
the anguish as of her who gives birth to her first child, the voice of the daughter of Zion, who gasps for breath, who spreads her hands, saying, Woe is me now, for my soul faints before the murderers. Chapter 5 Run back and forth through the streets of Jerusalem, and see now, and know, and seek in its wide places, if you can find a man, if there is anyone who does justly, who seeks truth, then I will pardon her. Though they say, as Yahweh lives, surely they swear falsely. O oh, Yahweh, don't your eyes look on truth? You have stricken them, but they were not grieved. You have consumed them but they have refused to receive correction. They have made their faces harder than a rock. They have refused to return. Then I said, Surely these are poor. They are foolish, for they don't know the way of Yahweh, nor the law of their God. I will go to the great men and will speak to them, for they know the way of Yahweh and the law of their God. But these with one accord have broken the yoke and burst the bonds. Therefore a lion out of the forest will kill them. A wolf of the evenings will destroy them. A leopard will watch against their cities. Everyone who goes out there will be torn in pieces, because their transgressions are many and their backsliding has increased. How can I pardon you? Your children have forsaken me and sworn by what are no gods. When I had fed them to the full, they committed adultery and assembled themselves in troops at the prostitutes' houses. They were as fed horses roaming at large. Everyone neighed after his neighbor's wife. Shouldn't I punish them for these things, says Yahweh? Shouldn't my soul be avenged on such a nation as this? Go up on her walls and destroy, but don't make a full end. Take away her branches, for they are not Yahweh's. For the house of Israel and the house of Judah have dealt very treacherously against me, says Yahweh. They have denied Yahweh and said, It is not he evil won't come on us. We won't see sword or famine. The prophets will become wind, and the word is not in them. Thus it will be done to them. Therefore, Yahweh, the God of armies, says, Because you speak this word, behold, I will make my words in your mouth fire, and this people wood, and it will devour them. Behold, I will bring a nation on you from far away, house of Israel, says Yahweh. It is a mighty nation. It is an ancient nation, a nation whose language you don't know and don't understand what they say. Their quiver is an open tomb. They are all mighty men. They will eat up your harvest and your bread, which your sons and your daughters should eat. They will eat up your flocks and your herds. They will eat up your vines and your fig trees. They will beat down your fortified cities in which you trust with the sword. But even in those days, says Yahweh, I will not make a full end of you. It will happen when you say, Why has Yahweh our God done all these things to us? Then you shall say to them, just as you have forsaken me and served foreign gods in your land, so you will serve strangers in a land that is not yours. Declare this in the house of Jacob and publish it in Judah, saying, Hear this now, foolish people without understanding, who have eyes and don't see, who have ears and don't hear. Don't you fear me, says Yahweh, 
Won't you tremble at my presence? Who have placed the sand for the bound of the sea by a perpetual decree that it can't pass it? Though its waves toss themselves, yet they can't prevail. Though they roar, they still can't pass over it. But this people has a revolting and a rebellious heart. They have revolted and gone. They don't say in their heart, Let's now fear Yahweh our God, who gives rain, both the former and the latter, in its season, who preserves to us the appointed weeks of the harvest. Your iniquities have turned away these things, and your sins have withheld good from you. For among my people are found wicked men. They watch as fowlers lie in wait. They set a trap. They catch men. As a cage is full of birds, so are their houses full of deceit. Therefore they have become great and grew rich. They have grown fat. They shine. Yes, they excel in deeds of wickedness. They don't plead the cause, the cause of the fatherless, that they may prosper, and they don't judge the right of the needy. Shouldn't I punish for these things, says Yahweh? Shouldn't my soul be avenged on such a nation as this? An astonishing and horrible thing has happened in the land. The prophets prophesy falsely, and the priests rule by their own authority. And my people love to have it so. What will you do in the end of it? Chapter 6 Flee for safety, you children of Benjamin, out of the middle of Jerusalem. Blow the trumpet in Tekoa, and raise up a signal on beth for evil looks out from the north with a great destruction. I will cut off the beautiful and delicate one, the daughter of Zion. Shepherds with their flocks will come to her, they will pitch their tents against her all around. They will feed everyone in his place. Prepare war against her. Arise, let's go up at noon. Woe to us, for the day declines, for the shadows of the evening are stretched out. Arise, let's go up by night, and let's destroy her palaces. For Yahweh of armies said, Cut down trees, and cast up a mound against Jerusalem. This is the city to be visited. She is holy oppression within herself. As a whale produces its waters, so she produces her wickedness. Violence and destruction is heard in her. Sickness and wounds are continually before me. Be instructed, Jerusalem, lest my soul be alienated from you lest I make you a desolation, an uninhabited land. Yahweh of armies says, They will thoroughly glean the remnant of Israel like a vine. Turn again your hand as a grape-gatherer into the baskets. To whom should I speak and testify that they may hear? Behold, their ear is uncircumcised, and they can't listen. Behold, Yahweh's word has become a reproach to them. They have no delight in it. Therefore, I am full of Yahweh's wrath. I am weary with holding it in. Pour it out on the children in the street and on the assembly of young men together. For even the husband with the wife will be taken, the aged with him who is full of days. Their houses will be turned to others their fields and their wives together. For I will stretch out my hand on the inhabitants of the land, says Yahweh. For from their least, even to their greatest, everyone is given to covetousness. From the prophet, even to the priest, everyone deals falsely. They have healed also the hurt of my people superficially, saying, Peace, peace when there is no peace. Were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? No, 
they were not at all ashamed, neither could they blush. Therefore they will fall among those who fall. When I visit them, they will be cast down, says Yahweh. Yahweh says, Stand in the ways and see, and ask for the old paths. Where is the good way? And walk in it, and you will find rest for your souls. But they said, We will not walk in it. I set watchmen over you, saying, Listen to the sound of the trumpet. But they said, We will not listen. Therefore hear, you nations, and know, congregation, what is among them. Hear, earth, behold, I will bring evil on this people, even the fruit of their thoughts, because they have not listened to my words. And as for my law, they have rejected it. To what purpose does frankincense from Sheba come to me, and the sweet cane from a far country? Your burnt offerings are not acceptable, and your sacrifices are not pleasing to me. Therefore Yahweh says, Behold, I will lay stumbling blocks before this people. The fathers and the sons together will stumble against them. The neighbor and his friend will perish. Yahweh says, Behold, a people comes from the north country. A great nation will be stirred up from the uttermost parts of the earth. They take hold of bow and spear. They are cruel and have no mercy. Their voice roars like the sea, and they ride on horses. Everyone set in array as a man to the battle against you, daughter of Zion. We have heard its report. Our hands become feeble. Anguish has taken hold of us, and pains as of a woman in labor. Don't go out into the field, nor walk by the way, for the sword of the enemy and terror are on every side. Daughter of my people, clothe yourself with sackcloth and wallow in ashes. Mourn as for an only son, most bitter lamentation, for the destroyer will suddenly come on us. I have made you a tester of metals and a fortress among my people, that you may know and try their way. They are all grievous rebels going around to slander. They are bronze and iron. All of them deal corruptly. The bellows blow fiercely. The lead is consumed in the fire. In vain they go on refining, for the wicked are not plucked away. Men will call them rejected silver, because Yahweh has rejected them. Chapter 7 The word that came to Jeremiah from Yahweh, saying, Stand in the gate of Yahweh's house and proclaim this word there, and say, Hear Yahweh's word, all you of Judah, who enter in at these gates to worship Yahweh. Yahweh of armies, the God of Israel, says, Amend your ways and your doings, and I will cause you to dwell in this place. Don't trust in lying words, saying, Yahweh's temple, Yahweh's temple, Yahweh's temple are these. For if you thoroughly amend your ways and your doings, if you thoroughly execute justice between a man and his neighbor, if you don't oppress the foreigner, the fatherless, and the widow, and don't shed innocent blood in this place, and don't walk after other gods to your own hurt, then I will cause you to dwell in this place in the land that I gave to your fathers from of old, even forevermore. Behold, you trust in lying words that can't profit. Will you steal, murder, commit adultery, swear falsely, burn incense to Baal, and walk after other gods that you have not known? Then come and stand before me in this house, which is called by my name and say, We are delivered, that you may do all these abominations, 
Has this house, which is called by my name, become a den of robbers in your eyes? Behold, I myself have seen it, says Yahweh. But go now to my place, which was in Shiloh, where I caused my name to dwell at the first, and see what I did to it for the wickedness of my people Israel. Now, because you have done all these works, says Yahweh, and I spoke to you, rising up early and speaking, but you didn't hear. And I called you, but you didn't answer. Therefore I will do to the house which is called by my name, in which you trust, and to the place which I gave to you and to your fathers, as I did to Shiloh. I will cast you out of my sight, as I have cast out all your brothers, even the whole offspring of Ephraim. Therefore, don't pray for this people. Don't lift up a cry or prayer for them, or make intercession to me, for I will not hear you. Don't you see what they do in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem? The children gather wood, and the fathers kindle the fire, and the women knead the dough to make cakes to the queen of the sky, and to pour out drink offerings to other gods, that they may provoke me to anger. Do they provoke me to anger? says Yahweh. Don't they provoke themselves to the confusion of their own faces? Therefore, thus says the Lord Yahweh, Behold, my anger and my wrath will be poured out on this place, on man, on animal, on the trees of the field, and on the fruit of the ground, and it will burn and will not be quenched. Yahweh of armies, the God of Israel, says, Add your burnt offerings to your sacrifices and eat meat, for I didn't speak to your fathers or command them in the day that I brought them out of the land of Egypt concerning burnt offerings or sacrifices. But this thing I commanded them, saying, Listen to my voice, and I will be your God, and you shall be my people, and walk in all the way that I command you, that it may be well with you. But they didn't listen or turn their ear, but walked in their own counsels and in the stubbornness of their evil heart, and went backward and not forward. Since the day that your fathers came out of the land of Egypt to this day, I have sent to you all my servants, the prophets, daily rising up early and sending them. Yet they didn't listen to me or incline their ear, but made their necks stiff. They did worse than their fathers. You shall speak all these words to them, but they will not listen to you. You shall also call to them, but they will not answer you. You shall tell them, this is the nation that has not listened to Yahweh, their God's voice, nor received instruction. Truth has perished and is cut off from their mouth. Cut off your hair and throw it away and take up a lamentation on the bare heights. For Yahweh has rejected and forsaken the generation of his wrath. For the children of Judah have done that which is evil in my sight, says Yahweh. They have set their abominations in the house which is called by my name to defile it. They have built the high places of Topheth, which is in the valley of the son of Hinnom, to burn their sons and their daughters in the fire, which I didn't command, nor did it come into my mind. Therefore, behold, the days come, says Yahweh, that it will no more be called Topheth, or the valley of the son of Hinnom, but the valley of slaughter, for they will bury in Topheth until there is no place to bury. The dead bodies of this people will be food for the birds of the sky and for the animals of the earth. No one will frighten them away. Then I will cause to cease from the cities of Judah and from the streets of Jerusalem the voice of mirth and the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom, 
and the voice of the bride, for the land will become a waste. Chapter 8 At that time, says Yahweh, they will bring out the bones of the kings of Judah, the bones of his princes, the bones of the priests, the bones of the prophets, and the bones of the inhabitants of Jerusalem, out of their graves. They will spread them before the sun, the moon, and all the army of the sky, which they have loved which they have served, after which they have walked, which they have sought, and which they have worshipped. They will not be gathered or be buried. They will be for dung on the surface of the earth. Death will be chosen rather than life by all the residue that remain of this evil family, that remain in all the places where I have driven them, says Yahweh of armies. Moreover, you shall tell them, Yahweh says, Do men fall and not rise up again? Does one turn away and not return? Why then have the people of Jerusalem fallen back by a perpetual backsliding? They cling to deceit. They refuse to return. I listened and heard, but they didn't say what is right. No one repents of his wickedness, saying, What have I done? Everyone turns to his course, as a horse that rushes headlong in the battle. Yes, the stork in the sky knows her appointed times. The turtle dove, the swallow, and the crane observe the time of their coming. But my people don't know Yahweh's law. How do you say, we are wise, and Yahweh's law is with us. But, behold, the false pen of the scribes has worked falsely. The wise men are disappointed. They are dismayed and trapped. Behold, they have rejected Yahweh's word. What kind of wisdom is in them? Therefore I will give their wives to others and their fields to those who will possess them. For everyone, from the least even to the greatest, is given to covetousness. From the prophet even to the priest, everyone deals falsely. They have healed the hurt of the daughter of my people slightly, saying, Peace, peace, when there is no peace. Were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? No, they were not at all ashamed. They couldn't blush. Therefore, they will fall among those who fall. In the time of their visitation, they will be cast down, says Yahweh. I will utterly consume them, says Yahweh. No grapes will be on the vine, no figs on the fig tree, and the leaf will fade. The things that I have given them will pass away from them. Why do we sit still? Assemble yourselves. Let's enter into the fortified cities, and let's be silent there. For Yahweh our God has put us to silence, and given us poisoned water to drink, because we have sinned against Yahweh. We looked for peace, but no good came and for a time of healing, and behold, dismay. The snorting of his horses is heard from Dan. The whole land trembles at the sound of the neighing of his strong ones, for they have come and have devoured the land and all that is in it, the city and those who dwell therein. For behold, I will send serpents, adders among you, which will not be charmed, and they will bite you, says Yahweh. Oh, that I could comfort myself against sorrow. My heart is faint within me. Behold, the voice of the cry of the daughter of my people, from a land that is very far off. Isn't Yahweh in Zion? Isn't her king in her? Why have they provoked me to anger with their engraved images?
and with foreign idols. The harvest is past, the summer has ended, and we are not saved. For the hurt of the daughter of my people, I am hurt, I mourn. Dismay has taken hold of me. Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then isn't the health of the daughter of my people recovered? Chapter 9 Oh, that my head were waters, and my eyes a spring of tears, that I might weep day and night for the slain of the daughter of my people. Oh, that I had in the wilderness a lodging place of wayfaring men, that I might leave my people and go from them, for they are all adulterers, an assembly of treacherous men. They bend their tongue as their bow for falsehood. They have grown strong in the land, but not for truth, for they proceed from evil to evil, and they don't know me, says Yahweh. Everyone beware of his neighbor, and don't trust in any brother, for every brother will utterly supplant, and every neighbor will go around like a slanderer. Friends deceive each other and will not speak the truth. They have taught their tongue to speak lies. They weary themselves committing iniquity. Your habitation is in the middle of deceit. Through deceit they refuse to know me, says Yahweh. Therefore, Yahweh of armies says, Behold, I will melt them and test them. For how should I deal with the daughter of my people? Their tongue is a deadly arrow. It speaks deceit. One speaks peaceably to his neighbor with his mouth, but in his heart he waits to ambush him. Shouldn't I punish them for these things? says Yahweh. Shouldn't my soul be avenged on a nation such as this? I will weep and wail for the mountains and lament for the pastures of the wilderness because they are burned up so that no one passes through. Men can't hear the voice of the livestock. Both the birds of the sky and the animals have fled. They are gone. I will make Jerusalem heaps, a dwelling place of jackals. I will make the cities of Judah a desolation, without inhabitant. Who is wise enough to understand this? Who is he to whom the mouth of Yahweh has spoken, that he may declare it? Why has the land perished and burned up like a wilderness, so that no one passes through? Yahweh says, because they have forsaken my law, which I set before them, and have not obeyed my voice, neither walked therein, but have walked after the stubbornness of their own heart, and after the bales which their fathers taught them. Therefore, Yahweh of armies, the God of Israel, says, Behold, I will feed them, even this people, with wormwood, and give them poisoned water to drink. I will scatter them also among the nations, whom neither they nor their fathers have known, and I will send the sword after them, until I have consumed them. Yahweh of armies says, Consider and call for the mourning women, that they may come, and send for the skillful women, that they may come. Let them make haste and take up a wailing for us, that our eyes may run down with tears and our eyelids gush out with waters, for a voice of wailing is heard out of Zion. How we are ruined! We are greatly confounded because we have forsaken the land, because they have cast down our dwellings. Yet hear Yahweh's word, you women, let your ear receive the word of his mouth. Teach your daughters wailing, and everyone teach her neighbor a lamentation. 
for death has come up into our windows. It has entered into our palaces to cut off the children from outside and the young men from the streets. Speak, Yahweh says, the dead bodies of men will fall as dung on the open field and as the handful after the harvester, and no one will gather them. Yahweh says, Don't let the wise man glory in his wisdom. Don't let the mighty man glory in his might. Don't let the rich man glory in his riches. But let him who glories glory in this, that he has understanding and knows me, that I am Yahweh who exercises loving kindness, justice, and righteousness in the earth. For I delight in these things, says Yahweh. Behold, the days come, says Yahweh, that I will punish all those who are circumcised only in their flesh, Egypt, Judah, Edom, the children of Ammon, Moab, and all who have the corners of their hair cut off, who dwell in the wilderness. For all the nations are uncircumcised, and all the house of Israel are uncircumcised in heart. Chapter 10 Hear the word which Yahweh speaks to you, house of Israel. Yahweh says, Don't learn the way of the nations, and don't be dismayed at the signs of the sky, for the nations are dismayed at them, for the customs of the peoples are vanity. For one cuts a tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. They deck it with silver and with gold. They fasten it with nails and with hammers so that it can't move. They are like a palm tree of turned work and don't speak. They must be carried because they can't move. Don't be afraid of them, for they can't do evil neither is it in them to do good. There is no one like you, Yahweh. You are great, and your name is great in might. Who shouldn't fear you, king of nations? For it belongs to you, because among all the wise men of the nations and in all their royal estate, there is no one like you. But they are together brutish and foolish, instructed by idols. It is just wood. There is silver beaten into plates, which is brought from Tarshish, and gold from Euphaz, the work of the engraver and of the hands of the goldsmith. Their clothing is blue and purple. They are all the work of skillful men. But Yahweh is the true God. He is the living God and an everlasting king. At his wrath, the earth trembles. The nations aren't able to withstand his indignation. You shall say this to them. The gods that have not made the heavens and the earth will perish from the earth and from under the heavens. God has made the earth by his power. He has established the world by his wisdom. And by his understanding has he stretched out the heavens. When he utters his voice, the waters in the heavens roar, and he causes the vapors to ascend from the ends of the earth. He makes lightnings for the rain and brings the wind out of his treasuries. Every man has become brutish and without knowledge. Every goldsmith is disappointed by his engraved image, for his molten image is falsehood, and there is no breath in them. They are vanity, a work of delusion. In the time of their visitation, they will perish. The portion of Jacob is not like these, for he is the maker of all things, and Israel is the tribe of his inheritance. Yahweh of armies is his name. Gather up your wares out of the land, you who live under siege, for Yahweh says, Behold, I will sling out the inhabitants of the land at this time, and will distress them that they may feel it. 
Woe is me because of my injury. My wound is serious, but I said, Truly, this is my grief, and I must bear it. My tent has been destroyed, and all my cords are broken. My children have gone away from me, and they are no more. There is no one to spread my tent any more, to set up my curtains. For the shepherds have become brutish, and have not inquired of Yahweh. Therefore they have not prospered, and all their flocks have scattered. The voice of news, behold, it comes, and a great commotion out of the north country to make the cities of Judah a desolation, a dwelling place of jackals. Yahweh, I know that the way of man is not in himself. It is not in man who walks to direct his steps. Yahweh, correct me, but gently, not in your anger, lest you reduce me to nothing. Pour out your wrath on the nations that don't know you, and on the families that don't call on your name, for they have devoured Jacob. Yes, they have devoured him, consumed him, and have laid waste his habitation. Chapter 11 The word that came to Jeremiah from Yahweh, saying, Hear the words of this covenant, and speak to the men of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and say to them, Yahweh, the God of Israel, says, Cursed is the man who doesn't hear the words of this covenant, which I commanded your fathers in the day that I brought them out of the land of Egypt, out of the iron furnace, saying, Obey my voice, and do them according to all which I command you, so you shall be my people, and I will be your God, that I may establish the oath which I swore to your fathers, to give them a land flowing with milk and honey, as it is today. Then answered I, and said, Amen, Yahweh. Yahweh said to me, Proclaim all these words in the cities of Judah, and in the streets of Jerusalem saying, Hear the words of this covenant, and do them. For I earnestly protested to your fathers in the day that I brought them up out of the land of Egypt, even to this day, rising early and protesting, saying, Obey my voice. Yet they didn't obey, nor turn their ear, but everyone walked in the stubbornness of their evil heart. Therefore I brought on them all the words of this covenant, which I commanded them to do, but they didn't do them. Yahweh said to me, A conspiracy is found among the men of Judah and among the inhabitants of Jerusalem. They have turned back to the iniquities of their forefathers, who refused to hear my words. They have gone after other gods to serve them. The house of Israel and the house of Judah have broken my covenant which I made with their fathers. Therefore Yahweh says, Behold, I will bring evil on them, which they will not be able to escape. And they will cry to me, but I will not listen to them. Then the cities of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem will go and cry to the gods to which they offer incense, but they will not save them at all in the time of their trouble. For according to the number of your cities are your gods, Judah, and according to the number of the streets of Jerusalem have you set up altars to the shameful thing, even altars to burn incense to Baal. Therefore, don't pray for this people, don't lift up cry or prayer for them, for I will not hear them in the time that they cry to me because of their trouble. What has my beloved to do in my house, since she has behaved lewdly with many, and the holy flesh has passed from you? When you do evil, 
then you rejoice. Yahweh called your name a green olive tree, beautiful with goodly fruit. With the noise of a great roar, he has kindled fire on it, and its branches are broken. For Yahweh of armies, who planted you, has pronounced evil against you, because of the evil of the house of Israel and of the house of Judah, which they have done to themselves, in provoking me to anger by offering incense to Baal. Yahweh gave me knowledge of it, and I knew it. Then you showed me their doings. But I was like a gentle lamb that is led to the slaughter. I didn't know that they had devised plans against me, saying, Let's destroy the tree with its fruit, and let's cut him off from the land of the living, that his name may be no more remembered. But Yahweh of armies, who judges righteously, who tests the heart and the mind, I will see your vengeance on them, for to you I have revealed my cause. Therefore, Yahweh says concerning the men of Anathoth, who seek your life, saying, You shall not prophesy in Yahweh's name that you not die by our hand. Therefore, Yahweh of armies says, Behold, I will punish them. The young men will die by the sword. Their sons and their daughters will die by famine. There will be no remnant to them, for I will bring evil on the men of Anathoth, even the year of their visitation. Chapter 12 You are righteous, Yahweh, when I contend with you. Yet I would like to reason the cause with you. Why does the way of the wicked prosper? Why are they all at ease who deal very treacherously? You have planted them. Yes, they have taken root. They grow. Yes, they produce fruit. You are near in their mouth and far from their heart. But you, Yahweh, know me. You see me and test my heart toward you. Pull them out like sheep for the slaughter and prepare them for the day of slaughter. How long will the land mourn, and the herbs of the whole country wither? Because of the wickedness of those who dwell therein, the animals and birds are consumed. Because they said, He won't see our latter end. If you have run with the footmen, and they have wearied you, then how can you contend with horses? Though in a land of peace you are secure, Yet how will you do in the pride of the Jordan? For even your brothers and the house of your father, even they have dealt treacherously with you. Even they have cried aloud after you. Don't believe them, though they speak beautiful words to you. I have forsaken my house. I have cast off my heritage. I have given the dearly beloved of my soul into the hand of her enemies. My heritage has become to me as a lion in the forest. She has uttered her voice against me. Therefore I have hated her. Is my heritage to me as a speckled bird of prey? Are the birds of prey against her all around? Go, assemble all the animals of the field. Bring them to devour. Many shepherds have destroyed my vineyard. They have trodden my portion underfoot. They have made my pleasant portion a desolate wilderness. They have made it a desolation. It mourns to me, being desolate. The whole land is made desolate, because no one cares. Destroyers have come on all the bare heights in the wilderness, for the sword of Yahweh devours from the one end of the land even to the other end of the land. No flesh has peace. They have sown wheat and have reaped thorns. They have exhausted themselves and profit nothing. You will be ashamed of your fruits because of Yahweh's fierce anger. Yahweh says, Concerning all my evil neighbors, who touch the inheritance which I have caused my people Israel to inherit, behold, I will pluck them up from off their land, 
and will pluck up the house of Judah from among them. It will happen that after I have plucked them up, I will return and have compassion on them. I will bring them again, every man to his heritage, and every man to his land. It will happen if they will diligently learn the ways of my people to swear by my name as Yahweh lives, even as they taught my people to swear by Baal. Then they will be built up in the middle of my people. But if they will not hear, then I will pluck up that nation, plucking up and destroying it, says Yahweh. Chapter 13 Yahweh said to me, Go and buy yourself a linen belt and put it on your waist and don't put it in water. So I bought a belt according to Yahweh's word and put it on my waist. Yahweh's word came to me the second time, saying, Take the belt that you have bought, which is on your waist, and arise, go to the Euphrates, and hide it there in a cleft of the rock. So I went, and hid it by the Euphrates, as Yahweh commanded me. After many days, Yahweh said to me, Arise. Go to the Euphrates, and take the belt from there, which I commanded you to hide there. Then I went to the Euphrates, and dug, and took the belt from the place where I had hidden it. And behold, the belt was ruined. It was profitable for nothing. Then Yahweh's word came to me, saying, Yahweh says, In this way, I will ruin the pride of Judah and the great pride of Jerusalem, this evil people who refuse to hear my words, who walk in the stubbornness of their heart and have gone after other gods to serve them and to worship them, will even be as this belt which is profitable for nothing. For as the belt clings to the waist of a man, so I have caused the whole house of Israel and the whole house of Judah to cling to me, says Yahweh, that they may be to me for a people, for a name, for praise, and for glory. But they would not hear. Therefore you shall speak to them this word. Yahweh, the God of Israel, says, Every container should be filled with wine. They will tell you, Do we not certainly know that every container should be filled with wine? Then tell them, Yahweh says, Behold, I will fill all the inhabitants of this land, even the kings who sit on David's throne, the priests, the prophets, and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, with drunkenness. I will dash them one against another, even the fathers and the sons together, says Yahweh. I will not pity, spare, or have compassion that I should not destroy them. Hear and give ear. Don't be proud, for Yahweh has spoken. Give glory to Yahweh your God before he causes darkness and before your feet stumble on the dark mountains. And while you look for light, he turns it into the shadow of death and makes it deep darkness. But if you will not hear it, my soul will weep in secret for your pride. My eye will weep bitterly and run down with tears because Yahweh's flock has been taken captive. Say to the king and to the queen mother, humble yourselves. Sit down, for your crowns have come down even the crown of your glory. The cities of the south is shut up, and there is no one to open them. Judah is carried away captive, all of it. It is wholly carried away captive. Lift up your eyes and see those who come from the north. Where is the flock that was given to you, your beautiful flock? What will you say when he sets over you as head those whom you have yourself 
taught to be friends to you? Won't sorrows take hold of you as of a woman in travail? If you say in your heart, Why have these things come on me? Your skirts are uncovered because of the greatness of your iniquity, and your heels suffer violence. Can the Ethiopian change his skin, or the leopard his spots? Then may you also do good who are accustomed to do evil. Therefore, I will scatter them as the stubble that passes away by the wind of the wilderness. This is your lot, the portion measured to you from me, says Yahweh, because you have forgotten me and trusted in falsehood. Therefore, I will also uncover your skirts on your face, and your shame will appear. I have seen your abominations, even your adulteries, and your neighing, the lewdness of your prostitution, on the hills, in the field. Woe to you, Jerusalem! You will not be made clean. How long will it yet be? Chapter 14 This is Yahweh's word that came to Jeremiah concerning the drought. Judah mourns, and its gates languish. They sit in black on the ground. The cry of Jerusalem goes up. Their nobles send their little ones to the waters. They come to the cisterns and find no water. They return with their vessels empty. They are disappointed and confounded and cover their heads because of the ground which is cracked, because no rain has been in the land. The plowmen are disappointed. They cover their heads. Yes, the doe in the field also calves and forsakes her young, because there is no grass. The wild donkeys stand on the bare heights. They pant for air like jackals. Their eyes fail, because there is no vegetation. Though our iniquities testify against us, work for your name's sake, Yahweh, for our rebellions are many. We have sinned against you, you hope of Israel, its savior in the time of trouble. Why should you be as a foreigner in the land and as a wayfaring man who turns aside to stay for a night? Why should you be like a scared man, as a mighty man who can't save? Yet you, Yahweh, are in the middle of us, and we are called by your name. Don't leave us. Yahweh says to this people, Even so, they have loved to wonder. They have not restrained their feet. Therefore, Yahweh does not accept them. Now he will remember their iniquity and punish them for their sins. Yahweh said to me, don't pray for this people for their good. When they fast, I will not hear their cry. And when they offer burnt offering and meal offering, I will not accept them. But I will consume them by the sword, by famine, and by pestilence. Then I said, Ah, Lord Yahweh, behold, the prophets tell them, You will not see the sword. Neither will you have famine, but I will give you assured peace in this place. Then Yahweh said to me, The prophets prophesy lies in my name. I didn't send them. I didn't command them. I didn't speak to them. They prophesy to you a lying vision, divination, and a thing of nothing and the deceit of their own heart. Therefore, Yahweh says concerning the prophets who prophesy in my name, but I didn't send them. Yet they say, Sword and famine will not be in this land. Those prophets will be consumed by sword and famine. The people to whom they prophesy will be cast out in the streets of Jerusalem because of the famine and the sword. They will have no one to bury them, them, their wives, their sons, or their daughters. 
for I will pour their wickedness on them. You shall say this word to them. Let my eyes run down with tears night and day, and let them not cease. For the virgin daughter of my people is broken with a great breach, with a very grievous wound. If I go out into the field, then, behold, the slain with the sword. If I enter into the city, then, behold, those who are sick with famine. For both the prophet and the priest go about in the land and have no knowledge. Have you utterly rejected Judah? Has your soul loathed Zion? Why have you struck us, and there is no healing for us? We looked for peace, but no good came. And for a time of healing, and behold, dismay. We acknowledge, Yahweh, our wickedness and the iniquity of our fathers, for we have sinned against you. Do not abhor us for your name's sake. Do not disgrace the throne of your glory. Remember and don't break your covenant with us. Are there any among the vanities of the nations that can cause rain? Or can the sky give showers? Aren't you he, Yahweh our God? Therefore we will wait for you, for you have made all these things. Chapter 15 Then Yahweh said to me, Though Moses and Samuel stood before me, yet my mind would not be toward this people. Cast them out of my sight, and let them go out. It will happen when they tell you, Where shall we go out? Then you shall tell them, Yahweh says, Such as are for death, to death. Such as are for the sword, to the sword such as are for the famine, to the famine, and such as are for captivity, to captivity. I will appoint over them four kinds, says Yahweh, the sword to kill, the dogs to tear, the birds of the sky, and the animals of the earth to devour and to destroy. I will cause them to be tossed back and forth among all the kingdoms of the earth, because of Manasseh, the son of Hezekiah, king of Judah, for that which he did in Jerusalem. For who will have pity on you, Jerusalem? Who will mourn you? Who will come to ask of your welfare? You have rejected me, says Yahweh. You have gone backward. Therefore I have stretched out my hand against you and destroyed you. I am weary of showing compassion. I have winnowed them with a fan in the gates of the land. I have bereaved them of children. I have destroyed my people. They didn't return from their ways. Their widows are increased more than the sand of the seas. I have brought on them against the mother of the young men, a destroyer at noonday. I have caused anguish and terrors to fall on her suddenly. She who has borne seven languishes. She has given up the spirit. Her son has gone down while it was yet day. She has been disappointed and confounded. I will deliver their residue to the sword before their enemies, says Yahweh. Woe is me, my mother, that you have borne me a man of strife, and a man of contention to the whole earth. I have not lent, neither have men lent to me, yet every one of them curses me. Yahweh said, Most certainly I will strengthen you for good. Most certainly I will cause the enemy to make supplication to you in the time of evil and in the time of affliction. Can one break iron, even iron from the north? and bronze? I will give your substance and your treasures for a plunder without price, and that for all your sins, even in all your borders. I will make them to pass with your enemies into a land which you don't know, 
for a fire is kindled in my anger, which will burn on you. Yahweh, you know. Remember me. Visit me and avenge me of my persecutors. You are patient, so don't take me away. Know that for your sake I have suffered reproach. Your words were found, and I ate them. Your words were to me a joy and the rejoicing of my heart. For I am called by your name, Yahweh, God of armies. I didn't sit in the assembly of those who make merry and rejoice. I sat alone because of your hand, for you have filled me with indignation. Why is my pain perpetual and my wound incurable, which refuses to be healed? Will you indeed be to me as a deceitful brook, like waters that fail? Therefore Yahweh says, If you return, then I will bring you again, that you may stand before me. And if you take out the precious from the vial, you will be as my mouth. They will return to you, but you will not return to them. I will make you to this people a fortified bronze wall. They will fight against you, but they will not prevail against you. For I am with you to save you and to deliver you, says Yahweh. I will deliver you out of the hand of the wicked, and I will redeem you out of the hand of the terrible. Chapter 16 Yahweh's word came also to me, saying, You shall not take a wife, neither shall you have sons or daughters in this place. For Yahweh says concerning the sons and concerning the daughters, who are born in this place, and concerning their mothers who bore them, and concerning their fathers who became their father in this land. They will die grievous deaths. They will not be lamented, neither will they be buried. They will be as dung on the surface of the ground. They will be consumed by the sword and by famine. Their dead bodies will be food for the birds of the sky, and for the animals of the earth. For Yahweh says, Don't enter into the house of mourning. Don't go to lament. Don't bemoan them, for I have taken away my peace from this people, says Yahweh, even loving kindness and tender mercies. Both great and small will die in this land. They will not be buried. Men won't lament for them, cut themselves, or make themselves bald for them. Men won't break bread for them in mourning, to comfort them for the dead. Men won't give them the cup of consolation to drink for their father or for their mother. You shall not go into the house of feasting to sit with them, to eat and to drink. For Yahweh of armies, the God of Israel, says, Behold, I will cause to cease out of this place, before your eyes and in your days, the voice of mirth and the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride. It will happen when you tell this people all these words, and they ask you, Why has Yahweh pronounced all this great evil against us? Or, What is our iniquity? Or, what is our sin that we have committed against Yahweh our God? Then you shall tell them, Because your fathers have forsaken me, says Yahweh, and have walked after other gods, have served them, have worshipped them, have forsaken me, and have not kept my law. You have done evil more than your fathers, for behold, you each walk after the stubbornness of his evil heart, so that you don't listen to me. Therefore, I will cast you out of this land into the land that you have not known, neither you nor your fathers. There you will serve other gods, day and night, for I will show you no favor. Therefore, behold, 
the days come, says Yahweh, that it will no more be said, as Yahweh lives, who brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, but as Yahweh lives, who brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north and from all the countries where he had driven them. I will bring them again into their land that I gave to their fathers. Behold, I will send for many fishermen, says Yahweh, and they will fish them up. Afterward, I will send for many hunters, and they will hunt them from every mountain, from every hill, and out of the clefts of the rocks. For my eyes are on all their ways. They are not hidden from my face. Their iniquity isn't concealed from my eyes. First, I will recompense their iniquity and their sin double, because they have polluted my land with the carcasses of their detestable things, and have filled my inheritance with their abominations. Yahweh, my strength and my stronghold, and my refuge in the day of affliction, the nations will come to you from the ends of the earth and will say, Our fathers have inherited nothing but lies, vanity, and things in which there is no profit. Should a man make to himself gods which yet are no gods? Therefore, behold, I will cause them to know. This once I will cause them to know my hand and my might. Then they will know that my name is Yahweh. Chapter 17 The Sin of Judah is written with a pen of iron and with the point of a diamond. It is engraved on the tablet of their heart and on the horns of your altars. Even their children remember their altars and their Asherah poles by the green trees on the high hills. My mountain in the field, I will give your substance and all your treasures for a plunder, and your high places because of sin, throughout all your borders. You, even of yourself, will discontinue from your heritage that I gave you. I will cause you to serve your enemies in the land which you don't know, for you have kindled a fire in my anger which will burn forever. Yahweh says, Cursed is the man who trusts in man, relies on strength of flesh, and whose heart departs from Yahweh. For he will be like a bush in the desert, and will not see when good comes, but will inhabit the parched places in the wilderness and uninhabited salt land. Blessed is the man who trusts in Yahweh, and whose confidence is in Yahweh, for he will be as a tree planted by the waters, who spreads out its roots by the river, and will not fear when heat comes, but its leaf will be green, and will not be concerned in the year of drought. It won't cease from yielding fruit. The heart is deceitful above all things, and it is exceedingly corrupt. Who can know it? I, Yahweh, search the mind. I try the heart, even to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doings. As the partridge that sits on eggs which she has not laid, so is he who gets riches and not by right. In the middle of his days they will leave him, at his end, he will be a fool. A glorious throne, set on high from the beginning, is the place of our sanctuary. Yahweh, the hope of Israel, all who forsake you will be disappointed. Those who depart from me will be written in the earth, because they have forsaken Yahweh, the spring of living water. Heal me, O Yahweh, and I will be healed. 
Save me, and I will be saved, for you are my praise. Behold, they tell me, Where is Yahweh's word? Let it be fulfilled now. As for me, I have not hurried from being a shepherd after you. I haven't desired the woeful day. You know that which came out of my lips was before your face. Don't be a terror to me. You are my refuge in the day of evil. Let them be disappointed who persecute me, but let not me be disappointed. Let them be dismayed, but don't let me be dismayed. Bring on them the day of evil, and destroy them with double destruction. Yahweh said this to me, Go and stand in the gate of the children of the people, through which the kings of Judah come in, and by which they go out, and in all the gates of Jerusalem. Tell them, Hear Yahweh's word, you kings of Judah, and all Judah, and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem that enter in by these gates. Yahweh says, Be careful and bear no burden on the Sabbath day, nor bring it in by the gates of Jerusalem. Don't carry a burden out of your houses on the Sabbath day. Don't do any work, but make the Sabbath day holy as I commanded your fathers. But they didn't listen. They didn't turn their ear, but made their neck stiff, that they might not hear, and might not receive instruction. It will happen, if you diligently listen to me, says Yahweh, to bring in no burden through the gates of this city on the Sabbath day, but to make the Sabbath day holy, to do no work therein, then there will enter in by the gates of this city kings and princes sitting on David's throne, riding in chariots and on horses, they and their princes, the men of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And this city will remain forever. They will come from the cities of Judah and from the places around Jerusalem, from the land of Benjamin, from the lowland, from the hill country, and from the south, bringing burnt offerings, sacrifices, meal offerings, and frankincense, and bringing sacrifices of thanksgiving to Yahweh's house. But if you will not listen to me to make the Sabbath day holy, and not to bear a burden and enter in at the gates of Jerusalem on the Sabbath day, then I will kindle a fire in its gates, and it will devour the palaces of Jerusalem. It will not be quenched. Chapter 18 The word which came to Jeremiah from Yahweh, saying, Arise, and go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause you to hear my word. Then I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he was making something on the wheels. When the vessel that he made of the clay was marred in the hand of the potter, he made it again another vessel, as seemed good to the potter to make it. Then Yahweh's word came to me, saying, House of Israel, can't I do with you as this potter? Says Yahweh, Behold, as the clay in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand, house of Israel. At the instant I speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom, to pluck up and to break down and to destroy it. If that nation concerning which I have spoken turns from their evil, I will repent of the evil that I thought to do to them. At the instant I speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom, to build and to plant it, if they do that which is evil in my sight, that they not obey my voice, then I will repent of the good with which I said I would benefit them. Now therefore speak to the men of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, saying, Yahweh says, 
Behold, I frame evil against you, and devise a plan against you. Everyone return from his evil way now, and amend your ways and your doings. But they say, It is in vain, for we will walk after our own plans, and we will each follow the stubbornness of his evil heart. Therefore Yahweh says, Ask now among the nations, Who has heard such things? The virgin of Israel has done a very horrible thing. Will the snow of Lebanon fail from the rock of the field? Will the cold waters that flow down from afar be dried up? For my people have forgotten me. They have burned incense to false gods. They have been made to stumble in their ways, in the ancient paths, to walk in byways, in a way not built up, to make their land an astonishment and a perpetual hissing. Everyone who passes by it will be astonished and shake his head. I will scatter them as with an east wind before the enemy. I will show them the back and not the face in the day of their calamity. Then they said, Come, let's devise plans against Jeremiah, for the law won't perish from the priest, nor counsel from the wise, nor the word from the prophet. Come and let's strike him with the tongue, and let's not give heed to any of his words. Give heed to me, Yahweh, and listen to the voice of those who contend with me. Should evil be recompensed for good? For they have dug a pit for my soul. Remember how I stood before you to speak good for them, to turn away your wrath from them. Therefore, deliver up their children to the famine, and give them over to the power of the sword. Let their wives become childless and widows. Let their men be killed, and their young men struck by the sword in battle. Let a cry be heard from their houses when you bring a troop suddenly on them, for they have dug a pit to take me and hidden snares for my feet. Yet, Yahweh, you know all their counsel against me to kill me. Don't forgive their iniquity. Don't blot out their sin from your sight. Let them be overthrown before you. Deal with them in the time of your anger. Chapter 19 Thus said Yahweh, Go and buy a potter's earthen container, and take some of the elders of the people, and of the elders of the priests, and go out to the valley of the son of Hinnom, which is by the entry of the gate Harseth, and proclaim there the words that I will tell you. Say, Hear Yahweh's word, kings of Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem. Yahweh of armies, the God of Israel, says, Behold, I will bring evil on this place, which whoever hears, his ears will tingle because they have forsaken me, and have defiled this place, and have burned incense in it to other gods that they didn't know, they and their fathers, and the kings of Judah, and have filled this place with the blood of innocents, and have built the high places of Baal, to burn their sons in the fire for burnt offerings to Baal, which I didn't command, nor speak, which didn't even enter into my mind. Therefore, behold, the days come, says Yahweh, that this place will no more be called Topheth, nor the valley of the son of Hinnom, but the valley of slaughter. I will make the council of Judah and Jerusalem void in this place. I will cause them to fall by the sword before their enemies, and by the hand of those who seek their life. I will give their dead bodies to be food for the birds of the sky and for the animals of the earth. I will make this city an astonishment and a hissing. Everyone who passes by it will be astonished and hiss because of all its plagues. I will cause them to eat the flesh of their sons and the flesh of their daughters. 
they will each eat the flesh of his friend in the siege and in the distress with which their enemies and those who seek their life will distress them then you shall break the container in the sight of the men who go with you and shall tell them yahweh of armies says even so i will break this people and this city as one breaks a potter's vessel that can't be made whole again they will bury in topheth until there is no place to bury thus i will do to this place says yahweh and to its inhabitants even making this city as topheth the houses of jerusalem and the houses of the kings of judah which are defiled will be as the place of topheth even all the houses on whose roofs they have burned incense to all the army of the sky and have poured out drink offerings to other gods then jeremiah came from topheth where yahweh had sent him to prophesy and he stood in the court of Yahweh's house, and said to all the people, Yahweh of armies, the God of Israel, says, Behold, I will bring on this city, and on all its towns, all the evil that I have pronounced against it, because they have made their necks stiff, that they may not hear my words. Chapter 20 now Pasher, the son of Emmer the priest, who was chief officer in Yahweh's house, heard Jeremiah prophesying these things. Then Pasher struck Jeremiah the prophet, and put him in the stocks that were in the upper gate of Benjamin, which was in Yahweh's house. On the next day, Pasher released Jeremiah out of the stocks. Then Jeremiah said to him, Yahweh has not called your name Pasher, but Megramisabib, for Yahweh says, Behold, I will make you a terror to yourself and to all your friends. They will fall by the sword of their enemies, and your eyes will see it. I will give all Judah into the hand of the king of Babylon, and he will carry them captive to Babylon, and will kill them with the sword. Moreover, I will give all the riches of this city, and all its gains, and all its precious things. Yes, I will give all the treasures of the kings of Judah into the hand of their enemies. They will make them captives, take them, and carry them to Babylon. You, Pasher, and all who dwell in your house will go into captivity. You will come to Babylon, and there you will die and there you will be buried, you and all your friends to whom you have prophesied falsely. Yahweh, you have persuaded me, and I was persuaded. You are stronger than I, and have prevailed. I have become a laughingstock all day. Everyone mocks me, for as often as I speak, I cry out. I cry, violence and destruction because Yahweh's word has been made a reproach to me, and a derision all day. If I say, I will not make mention of him, or speak any more in his name, then there is in my heart, as it were, a burning fire shut up in my bones, and I am weary with holding it in, and I can't, for I have heard the defaming of many, terror on every side, denounce, and we will denounce him, say all my familiar friends, those who watch for my fall. Perhaps he will be persuaded, and we will prevail against him, and we will take our revenge on him. But Yahweh is with me as an awesome mighty one. Therefore my persecutors will stumble, and they won't prevail. They will be utterly disappointed, because they have not dealt wisely, even with an everlasting dishonor which will never be forgotten. But Yahweh of armies, who tests the righteous, who sees the heart and the mind, let me see your vengeance on them, for to you I have revealed my cause. Sing to Yahweh, praise Yahweh, for he has delivered the soul of the needy,
from the hand of evildoers. Cursed is the day in which I was born. Don't let the day in which my mother bore me be blessed. Cursed is the man who brought news to my father, saying, A boy is born to you, making him very glad. Let that man be as the cities which Yahweh overthrew and didn't repent. Let him hear a cry in the morning and shouting at noontime, because he didn't kill me from the womb. So my mother would have been my grave and her womb always great. Why did I come out of the womb to see labor and sorrow, that my days should be consumed with shame? Chapter 21 The word which came to Jeremiah from Yahweh, when King Zedekiah sent to him Pasher, the son of Malchijah, and Zephaniah, the son of Maaseah, the priest, saying, Please inquire of Yahweh for us, for Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, makes war against us. Perhaps Yahweh will deal with us according to all his wondrous works, that he may withdraw from us. Then Jeremiah said to them, Tell Zedekiah, Yahweh, the God of Israel, says, Behold, I will turn back the weapons of war that are in your hands, with which you fight against the king of Babylon and against the Chaldeans who besiege you outside the walls, and I will gather them into the middle of this city. I myself will fight against you with an outstretched hand and with a strong arm, even in anger, in wrath, and in great indignation. I will strike the inhabitants of this city, both man and animal, they will die of a great pestilence. Afterward, says Yahweh, I will deliver Zedekiah, king of Judah, his servants, and the people, even those who are left in this city from the pestilence, from the sword, and from the famine, into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and into the hand of their enemies, and into the hand of those who seek their life, he will strike them with the edge of the sword. He will not spare them, have pity or have mercy. You shall say to this people, Yahweh says, Behold, I set before you the way of life and the way of death. He who remains in this city will die by the sword, by the famine, and by the pestilence. But he who goes out and passes over to the Chaldeans who besiege you. He will live, and he will escape with his life. For I have set my face on this city for evil, and not for good, says Yahweh. It will be given into the hand of the king of Babylon, and he will burn it with fire. Concerning the house of the king of Judah, hear Yahweh's word. House of David, Yahweh says, Execute justice in the morning, and deliver him who is robbed out of the hand of the oppressor, lest my wrath go out like fire, and burn so that no one can quench it, because of the evil of your doings. Behold, I am against you, O inhabitant of the valley and of the rock of the plain, says Yahweh. You that say, who would come down against us, or who would enter into our homes? I will punish you according to the fruit of your doings, says Yahweh, and I will kindle a fire in her forest, and it will devour all that is around her. Chapter 22 Yahweh said, Go down to the house of the king of Judah, and speak this word there. Hear Yahweh's word, King of Judah, who sits on David's throne, you, your servants, and your people, who enter in by these gates. Yahweh says, Execute justice and righteousness, and deliver him who is robbed out of the hand of the oppressor. Do no wrong, do no violence to the foreigner, the fatherless, or the widow. Don't shed innocent blood in this place. 
For if you do this thing indeed, then kings sitting on David's throne will enter in by the gates of this house, riding in chariots and on horses, he, his servants, and his people. But if you will not hear these words, I swear by myself, says Yahweh, that this house will become a desolation. For Yahweh says concerning the house of the king of Judah, You are Gilead to me, the head of Lebanon. Yet surely I will make you a wilderness, cities which are not inhabited. I will prepare destroyers against you, everyone with his weapons, and they will cut down your choice cedars and cast them into the fire. Many nations will pass by this city, and they will each ask his neighbor, Why has Yahweh done this to this great city? Then they will answer, Because they abandoned the covenant of Yahweh their God, worshipped other gods, and served them. Don't weep for the dead, don't bemoan him, but weep bitterly for him who goes away, for he will return no more and not see his native country. For Yahweh says, touching Shalom, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, who reigned instead of Josiah his father, and who went out of this place, he won't return there any more, but he will die in the place where they have led him captive. He will see this land no more. Woe to him who builds his house by unrighteousness, and his rooms by injustice, who uses his neighbor's service without wages and doesn't give him his hire, who says, I will build myself a wide house and spacious rooms and cuts out windows for himself with a cedar ceiling and painted with red. Should you reign because you strive to excel in cedar? Didn't your father eat and drink? and do justice and righteousness? Then it was well with him. He judged the cause of the poor and needy, so it was well then. Wasn't this to know me, says Yahweh? But your eyes and your heart are only for your covetousness, for shedding innocent blood, for oppression, and for doing violence. Therefore, Yahweh says concerning Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah. They won't lament for him, saying, Ah, my brother, or Ah, sister. They won't lament for him, saying, Ah, Lord, or Ah, his glory. He will be buried with the burial of a donkey, drawn and cast out beyond the gates of Jerusalem. Go up to Lebanon and cry, Lift up your voice in Bashan, and cry from Abiram, for all your lovers have been destroyed. I spoke to you in your prosperity, but you said, I will not listen. This has been your way from your youth, that you didn't obey my voice. The wind will feed all your shepherds, and your lovers will go into captivity. Surely then you will be ashamed and confounded for all your wickedness. Inhabitant of Lebanon, who makes your nest in the cedars, how greatly to be pitied you will be when pangs come on you, the pain as of a woman in travail. As I live, says Yahweh, though Coniah, the son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, were the signet on my right hand, yet would I pluck you from there. I would give you into the hand of those who seek your life and into the hand of them of whom you are afraid, even into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and into the hand of the Chaldeans. I will cast you out with your mother who bore you into another country where you were not born, and there you will die. But to the land to which their soul longs to return, there they will not return. Is this man, Coniah, a despised, broken vessel? Is he a vessel in which no one delights? Why are they cast out, he and his offspring, 
and cast into a land which they don't know. O earth, 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 hear Yahweh's word. Yahweh says, Record this man as childless, a man who will not prosper in his days. For no more will a man of his offspring prosper, sitting on David's throne and ruling in Judah. Chapter 23 Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, says Yahweh. Therefore, Yahweh, the God of Israel, says against the shepherds who feed my people, You have scattered my flock, driven them away, and have not visited them. Behold, I will visit on you the evil of your doings, says Yahweh. I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the countries where I have driven them, and will bring them again to their folds, and they will be fruitful and multiply. I will set up shepherds over them who will feed them. They will no longer be afraid or dismayed, neither will any be lacking, says Yahweh. Behold, the days come, says Yahweh, that I will raise to David a righteous branch, and he will reign as king and deal wisely, and will execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved, and Israel will dwell safely. This is his name by which he will be called, Yahweh our righteousness. Therefore, behold, the days come, says Yahweh, that they will no more say, as Yahweh lives, who brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, but as Yahweh lives, who brought up and who led the offspring of the house of Israel out of the north country, and from all the countries where I had driven them, then they will dwell in their own land, Concerning the Prophets My heart within me is broken. All my bones shake. I am like a drunken man, and like a man whom wine has overcome, because of Yahweh, and because of his holy words. For the land is full of adulterers. For because of the curse, the land mourns. The pastures of the wilderness have dried up. Their course is evil, and their might is not right. For both prophet and priest are profane. Yes, in my house I have found their wickedness, says Yahweh. Therefore their way will be to them as slippery places in the darkness. They will be driven on and fall therein. For I will bring evil on them, even the year of their visitation, says Yahweh. I have seen folly in the prophets of Samaria. They prophesied by Baal and caused my people Israel to err. In the prophets of Jerusalem, I have also seen a horrible thing. They commit adultery and walk in lies. They strengthen the hands of evildoers so that no one returns from his wickedness. They have all become to me as Sodom and its inhabitants as Gomorrah. Therefore, Yahweh of armies says concerning the prophets, Behold, I will feed them with wormwood and make them drink poisoned water. For from the prophets of Jerusalem, ungodliness has gone out into all the land. Yahweh of armies says, Don't listen to the words of the prophets who prophesy to you. They teach you vanity. They speak a vision of their own heart and not out of the mouth of Yahweh. They say continually to those who despise me, Yahweh has said, you will have peace. And to everyone who walks in the stubbornness of his own heart, they say, no evil will come on you. For who has stood in the counsel of Yahweh that he should perceive and hear his word? Who has listened to my word and heard it? Behold, Yahweh's storm, his wrath has gone out. Yes, a whirling storm. It will burst on the head of the wicked. Yahweh's anger will not return, 
until he has executed and until he has performed the intents of his heart. In the latter days, you will understand it perfectly. I didn't send these prophets, yet they ran. I didn't speak to them, yet they prophesied. But if they had stood in my counsel, then they would have caused my people to hear my words and would have turned them from their evil way and from the evil of their doings. Am I a God at hand, says Yahweh, and not a God afar off? Can anyone hide himself in secret places so that I can't see him, says Yahweh? Don't I feel heaven and earth, says Yahweh? I have heard what the prophets have said, who prophesy lies in my name, saying, I had a dream, I had a dream. How long will this be in the heart of the prophets who prophesy lies, even the prophets of the deceit of their own heart? They intend to cause my people to forget my name by their dreams, which they each tell his neighbor, as their fathers forgot my name because of Baal. The prophet who has a dream, let him tell a dream. And he who has my word, let him speak my word faithfully. What is the straw to the wheat, says Yahweh? Isn't my word like fire, says Yahweh, and like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces? Therefore, behold, I am against the prophets, says Yahweh, who each steal my words from his neighbor. Behold, I am against the prophets, says Yahweh, who use their tongues and say, he says, Behold, I am against those who prophesy lying dreams, says Yahweh, who tell them and cause my people to err by their lies and by their vain boasting. Yet I didn't send them or command them. They don't profit this people at all, says Yahweh. When this people or the prophet or a priest asks you, saying, what is the message from Yahweh? Then you shall tell them, What message? I will cast you off, says Yahweh. As for the prophet, the priest, and the people, who say, The message from Yahweh, I will even punish that man and his household. You will say everyone to his neighbor, and everyone to his brother, What has Yahweh answered? And what has Yahweh said? You will mention the message from Yahweh no more. For every man's own word has become his message. For you have perverted the words of the living God, of Yahweh of armies, our God. You will say to the prophet, What has Yahweh answered you? And what has Yahweh spoken? Although you say, The message from Yahweh. Therefore Yahweh says, because you say this word, the message from Yahweh, and I have sent to you, telling you not to say the message from Yahweh, therefore, behold, I will utterly forget you, and I will cast you off, and the city that I gave to you and to your fathers, away from my presence. I will bring an everlasting reproach on you, and a perpetual shame, which will not be forgotten. Chapter 24 Yahweh showed me, and behold, two baskets of figs were set before Yahweh's temple, after Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, had carried away captive Jeconiah, the son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, and the princes of Judah, with the craftsmen and smiths from Jerusalem, and had brought them to Babylon. One basket had very good figs, like the figs that are first ripe, and the other basket had very bad figs, which could not be eaten, they were so bad. Then Yahweh asked me, What do you see, Jeremiah? I said, Figs. The good figs are very good, and the bad are very bad, so bad that can be eaten. Yahweh's word came to me saying, Yahweh, 
the God of Israel, says, Like these good figs, so I will regard the captives of Judah whom I have sent out of this place into the land of the Chaldeans for good. For I will set my eyes on them for good, and I will bring them again to this land. I will build them and not pull them down. I will plant them and not pluck them up. I will give them a heart to know me that I am Yahweh. They will be my people and I will be their God, for they will return to me with their whole heart. As the bad figs, which can be eaten, they are so bad. Surely Yahweh says, So I will give up Zedekiah, the king of Judah, and his princes, and the remnant of Jerusalem, who remain in this land, and those who dwell in the land of Egypt. I will even give them up to be tossed back and forth among all the kingdoms of the earth for evil, to be a reproach and a proverb, a taunt and a curse, in all places where I will drive them. I will send the sword, the famine, and the pestilence among them, until they are consumed from off the land that I gave to them and to their fathers. Chapter 25 The word that came to Jeremiah concerning all the people of Judah in the fourth year of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah. This was the first year of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, which Jeremiah the prophet spoke to all the people of Judah and to all the inhabitants of Jerusalem from the thirteenth year of Josiah the son of Ammon, king of Judah. Even to this day, these twenty-three years, Yahweh's word has come to me, and I have spoken to you, rising up early and speaking, but you have not listened. Yahweh has sent to you all his servants, the prophets, rising up early and sending them, but you have not listened or inclined your ear to hear, saying, Return now, every one, from his evil way and from the evil of your doings, and dwell in the land that Yahweh has given to you and to your fathers from of old and even forevermore. Don't go after other gods to serve them or worship them, and don't provoke me to anger with the work of your hands. Then I will do you no harm. Yet you have not listened to me says Yahweh, that you may provoke me to anger with the work of your hands to your own hurt. Therefore, Yahweh of armies says, Because you have not heard my words, behold, I will send and take all the families of the north, says Yahweh, and I will send to Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant, and will bring them against this land and against its inhabitants, and against all the nations around. I will utterly destroy them, and make them an astonishment, and a hissing, and perpetual desolations. Moreover, I will take from them the voice of mirth, and the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom, and the voice of the bride, the sound of the millstones, and the light of the lamp. This whole land will be a desolation and an astonishment, and these nations will serve the king of Babylon seventy years. It will happen, when seventy years are accomplished, that I will punish the king of Babylon and that nation, says Yahweh, for their iniquity. I will make the land of the Chaldeans desolate forever. I will bring on that land all my words which I have pronounced against it, even all that is written in this book, which Jeremiah has prophesied against all the nations. For many nations and great kings will make bondservants of them, even of them. I will recompense them according to their deeds and according to the work of their hands. For Yahweh, the God of Israel, says to me, Take this cup of the wine of wrath from my hand, 
and cause all the nations to whom I send you to drink it. They will drink and reel back and forth and be insane because of the sword that I will send among them. Then I took the cup at Yahweh's hand and made all the nations to drink to whom Yahweh had sent me. Jerusalem and the cities of Judah with its kings and its princes to make them a desolation an astonishment, a hissing, and a curse, as it is today. Pharaoh, king of Egypt, with his servants, his princes, and all his people, and all the mixed people, and all the kings of the land of Uz, all the kings of the Philistines, Ashkelon, Gaza, Ekron, and the remnant of Ashdod, Edom, Moab, and the children of Ammon, and all the kings of Tyre, all the kings of Sidon, and the kings of the isle which is beyond the sea, Dedan, Tema, Buzz, and all who have the corners of their beard cut off, and all the kings of Arabia, all the kings of the mixed people who dwell in the wilderness, and all the kings of Zemri, all the kings of Elam, and all the kings of the Medes, and all the kings of the north, far and near, one with another, and all the kingdoms of the world, which are on the surface of the earth. The king of Shishak will drink after them. You shall tell them, Yahweh of armies, the God of Israel, says, Drink and be drunk, vomit, fall and rise no more, because of the sword which I will send among you. It shall be, if they refuse to take the cup at your hand to drink, then you shall tell them, Yahweh of armies says, You shall surely drink, for behold, I began to work evil at the city which is called by my name, and should you be utterly unpunished? You will not be unpunished, for I will call for a sword on all the inhabitants of the earth, says Yahweh of armies. Therefore prophesy against them all these words, and tell them, Yahweh will roar from on high, and utter his voice from his holy habitation. He will mightily roar against his fold. He will give a shout, as those who tread grapes, against all the inhabitants of the earth. A noise will come even to the end of the earth, for Yahweh has a controversy with the nations. He will enter into judgment with all flesh. As for the wicked, he will give them to the sword, says Yahweh. Yahweh of armies says, Behold, evil will go out from nation to nation, and a great storm will be raised up from the uttermost parts of the earth. The slain of Yahweh will be at that day from one end of the earth, even to the other end of the earth. They won't be lamented. They won't be gathered or buried. They will be dung on the surface of the ground. Well, you shepherds, and cry. Wallow in dust, you leader of the flock. For the days of your slaughter and of your dispersions have fully come, and you will fall like fine pottery. The shepherds will have no way to flee. The leader of the flock will have no escape. A voice of the cry of the shepherds and the wailing of the leader of the flock, for Yahweh destroys their pasture. The peaceful folds are brought to silence because of the fierce anger of Yahweh. He has left his covert as the lion, for their land has become an astonishment because of the fierceness of the oppression, and because of his fierce anger. Chapter 26 In the beginning of the reign of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, this word came from Yahweh. Yahweh says, Stand in the court of Yahweh's house, and speak to all the cities of Judah, which come to worship in Yahweh's house, all the words that I command you to speak to them. Don't omit a word. 
it may be they will listen, and every man turn from his evil way, that I may relent from the evil which I intend to do to them, because of the evil of their doings. You shall tell them, Yahweh says, If you will not listen to me, to walk in my law, which I have set before you, to listen to the words of my servants, the prophets, whom I send to you, even rising up early and sending them, but you have not listened. Then I will make this house like Shiloh, and will make this city a curse to all the nations of the earth. The priests and the prophets and all the people heard Jeremiah speaking these words in Yahweh's house. When Jeremiah had finished speaking all that Yahweh had commanded him to speak to all the people, the priests and the prophets and all the people seized him, saying, You shall surely die. Why have you prophesied in Yahweh's name, saying, This house will be like Shiloh, and this city will be desolate, without inhabitant? All the people were crowded around Jeremiah in Yahweh's house. When the princes of Judah heard these things, they came up from the king's house to Yahweh's house and they sat in the entry of the new gate of Yahweh's house. Then the priests and the prophets spoke to the princes and to all the people, saying, This man is worthy of death, for he has prophesied against this city, as you have heard with your ears. Then Jeremiah spoke to all the princes and to all the people, saying, Yahweh sent me to prophesy against this house and against this city, all the words that you have heard. Now, therefore, amend your ways and your doings, and obey Yahweh, your God's voice. Then Yahweh will relent from the evil that he has pronounced against you. But as for me, behold, I am in your hand. Do with me what is good and right in your eyes. Only know for certain that, if you put me to death, you will bring innocent blood on yourselves on this city, and on its inhabitants. For, in truth, Yahweh has sent me to you to speak all these words in your ears. Then the princes and all the people said to the priests and to the prophets, This man is not worthy of death, for he has spoken to us in the name of Yahweh our God. Then certain of the elders of the land rose up and spoke to all the assembly of the people, saying, Micah, the Merashtite, prophesied in the days of Hezekiah, king of Judah. And he spoke to all the people of Judah, saying, Yahweh of armies says, Zion will be plowed as a field, and Jerusalem will become heaps, and the mountain of the house as the high places of a forest. Did Hezekiah, king of Judah, and all Judah put him to death? Didn't he fear Yahweh? and entreat the favor of Yahweh, and Yahweh relented of the disaster which he had pronounced against them? We would commit great evil against our own souls that way. There was also a man who prophesied in Yahweh's name, Uriah, the son of Shemaiah of Kiriath-Jerim, and he prophesied against this city and against this land according to all the words of Jeremiah. When Jehoiakim, the king, with all his mighty men and all the princes, heard his words. The king sought to put him to death. But when Uriah heard it, he was afraid and fled and went into Egypt. Then Jehoiakim the king sent men into Egypt, Elnathan the son of Agbor, and certain men with him into Egypt. And they fetched Uriah out of Egypt and brought him to Jehoiakim the king who killed him with the sword, and cast his dead body into the graves of the common people. But the hand of Ahikam, the son of Shaphan, was with Jeremiah, so that they didn't give him into the hand of the people to put him to death. Chapter 27 In the beginning of the reign of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, this word came to Jeremiah from Yahweh, saying, Yahweh says to me, Make bonds and bars 
and put them on your neck. Then send them to the king of Edom, to the king of Moab, to the king of the children of Ammon, to the king of Tyre, and to the king of Sidon, by the hand of the messengers who come to Jerusalem, to Zedekiah, king of Judah. Give them a command to their masters, saying, Yahweh of armies, the God of Israel, says, You shall tell your masters, I have made the earth, the men, and the animals that are on the surface of the earth, by my great power and by my outstretched arm. I give it to whom it seems right to me. Now I have given all these lands into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant. I have also given the animals of the field to him, to serve him. All the nations will serve him, his son and his son's son, until the time of his own land comes. Then many nations and great kings will make him their bondservant. It will happen that I will punish the nation and the kingdom, which will not serve the same Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon and that will not put their neck under the yoke of the king of Babylon, says Yahweh, with the sword, with famine, and with pestilence, until I have consumed them by his hand. But as for you, don't listen to your prophets, to your diviners, to your dreams, to your soothsayers, or to your sorcerers, who speak to you, saying, you shall not serve the king of Babylon, for they prophesy a lie to you, to remove you far from your land, so that I would drive you out and you would perish. But the nation that brings their neck under the yoke of the king of Babylon and serves him, that nation I will let remain in their own land, says Yahweh, and they will till it and dwell in it. I spoke to Zedekiah, king of Judah, according to all these words, saying, Bring your necks under the yoke of the king of Babylon, and serve him and his people, and live. Why will you die, you and your people, by the sword, by the famine, and by the pestilence, as Yahweh has spoken concerning the nation that will not serve the king of Babylon? Don't listen to the words of the prophets who speak to you, saying, You shall not serve the king of Babylon, for they prophesy a lie to you. For I have not sent them, says Yahweh, but they prophesy falsely in my name, that I may drive you out, and that you may perish, you and the prophets who prophesy to you. Also I spoke to the priests and to all this people, saying, Yahweh says, Don't listen to the words of your prophets who prophesy to you, saying, Behold, the vessels of Yahweh's house will now shortly be brought again from Babylon, for they prophesy a lie to you. Don't listen to them. Serve the king of Babylon and live. Why should this city become a desolation? But if they are prophets, and if Yahweh's word is with them, let them now make intercession to Yahweh of armies, that the vessels which are left in Yahweh's house, in the house of the king of Judah and at Jerusalem, don't go to Babylon. For Yahweh of armies says concerning the pillars, concerning the sea, concerning the bases, and concerning the rest of the vessels that are left in this city, which Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, didn't take when he carried away captive Jeconiah, the son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, from Jerusalem to Babylon, and all the nobles of Judah and Jerusalem. Yes, Yahweh of armies, the God of Israel, says, concerning the vessels that are left in Yahweh's house, and in the house of the king of Judah and at Jerusalem, they will be carried to Babylon, and there they will be, until the day that I visit them, says Yahweh. Then I will bring them up and restore them to this place. Chapter 28
That same year, in the beginning of the reign of Zedekiah, king of Judah, in the fourth year, in the fifth month, Hananiah, the son of Azar, the prophet, who was of Gibeon, spoke to me in Yahweh's house, in the presence of the priests and of all the people, saying, Yahweh of armies, the God of Israel, says, I have broken the yoke of the king of Babylon. Within two full years I will bring again into this place all the vessels of Yahweh's house that Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, took away from this place and carried to Babylon. I will bring again to this place Jeconiah, the son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, with all the captives of Judah who went to Babylon, says Yahweh, for I will break the yoke of the king of Babylon. Then the prophet Jeremiah said to the prophet Hananiah, in the presence of the priests and in the presence of all the people who stood in Yahweh's house, even the prophet Jeremiah said, Amen, may Yahweh do so. May Yahweh perform your words which you have prophesied to bring again the vessels of Yahweh's house and all those who are captives from Babylon to this place. Nevertheless, listen now to this word that I speak in your ears and in the ears of all the people, the prophets who have been before me and before you of old, prophesied against many countries and against great kingdoms, of war, of evil, and of pestilence. The prophet who prophesies of peace, when the word of the prophet happens, then the prophet will be known that Yahweh has truly sent him. Then Hananiah the prophet took the bar from off the prophet Jeremiah's neck and broke it. Hananiah spoke in the presence of all the people, saying, Yahweh says, Even so, I will break the yoke of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, from off the neck of all the nations within two full years. Then the prophet Jeremiah went his way. Then Yahweh's word came to Jeremiah, after Hananiah the prophet had broken the bar from off the neck of the prophet Jeremiah, saying, Go and tell Hananiah, saying, Yahweh says, You have broken the bars of wood, but you have made in their place bars of iron. For Yahweh of armies, the God of Israel, says, I have put a yoke of iron on the neck of all these nations, that they may serve Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and they will serve him. I have also given him the animals of the field. Then the prophet Jeremiah said to Hananiah the prophet, Listen, Hananiah, Yahweh has not sent you, but you make this people trust in a lie. Therefore, Yahweh says, Behold, I will send you away from off the surface of the earth. This year you will die, because you have spoken rebellion against Yahweh. So Hananiah the prophet died the same year in the seventh month. Chapter 29 Now these are the words of the letter that Jeremiah the prophet sent from Jerusalem to the residue of the elders of the captivity, and to the priests, to the prophets, and to all the people whom Nebuchadnezzar had carried away captive from Jerusalem to Babylon after Jeconiah the king, the queen mother, the eunuchs, the princes of Judah and Jerusalem, the craftsmen and the smiths had departed from Jerusalem. By the hand of Elisa, the son of Shaphan, and Gemariah, the son of Hilkiah, whom Zedekiah, king of Judah, sent to Babylon to Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. It said, Yahweh of armies, the God of Israel, says to all the captives whom I have caused to be carried away captive from Jerusalem to Babylon, build houses and dwell in them, plant gardens and eat their fruit, take wives and fathers, sons and daughters, 
Take wives for your sons, and give your daughters to husbands, that they may bear sons and daughters. Multiply there, and don't be diminished. Seek the peace of the city where I have caused you to be carried away captive, and pray to Yahweh for it, for in its peace you will have peace. For Yahweh of armies, the God of Israel, says, Don't let your prophets who are among you and your diviners deceive you. Don't listen to your dreams which you cause to be dreamed, for they prophesy falsely to you in my name. I have not sent them, says Yahweh. For Yahweh says, After seventy years are accomplished for Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word toward you in causing you to return to this place. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says Yahweh, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you hope and a future. You shall call on me, and you shall go and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You shall seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. I will be found by you, says Yahweh, and I will turn again your captivity, and I will gather you from all the nations and from all the places where I have driven you, says Yahweh. I will bring you again to the place from where I caused you to be carried away captive. Because you have said, Yahweh has raised us up prophets in Babylon. Yahweh says concerning the king who sits on David's throne and concerning all the people who dwell in this city, your brothers who haven't gone with you into captivity, Yahweh of armies says, Behold, I will send on them the sword, the famine, and the pestilence, and will make them like rotten figs that can't be eaten. They are so bad. I will pursue after them with the sword, with the famine, and with the pestilence, and will deliver them to be tossed back and forth among all the kingdoms of the earth, to be an object of horror, an astonishment, a hissing, and a reproach among all the nations where I have driven them, because they have not listened to my words, says Yahweh with which I sent to them my servants, the prophets, rising up early and sending them. But you would not hear, says Yahweh. Hear, therefore, Yahweh's word, all you captives, whom I have sent away from Jerusalem to Babylon. Yahweh of armies, the God of Israel, says concerning Ahab, the son of Koleah, and concerning Zedekiah, the son of Maaseah, who prophesy a lie to you in my name. Behold, I will deliver them into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and he will kill them before your eyes. A curse will be taken up about them by all the captives of Judah who are in Babylon, saying, Yahweh make you like Zedekiah and like Ahab, whom the king of Babylon roasted in the fire because they have done foolish things in Israel and have committed adultery with their neighbors' wives and have spoken words in my name falsely, which I didn't command them. I am he who knows and am witness, says Yahweh. Concerning Shemaiah the Nehelamite, you shall speak, saying, Yahweh of armies, the God of Israel, says, because you have sent letters in your own name to all the people who are at Jerusalem, and to Zephaniah the son of Maaseah the priest, and to all the priests, saying, Yahweh has made you priest in the place of Jehoiada the priest, that there may be officers in Yahweh's house. For every man who is crazy and makes himself a prophet, that you should put him in the stocks and in shackles, now therefore, why have you not rebuked Jeremiah of Anathoth, who makes himself a prophet to you, because he has sent to us in Babylon, saying, 
the captivity is long. Build houses and dwell in them. Plant gardens and eat their fruit. Zephaniah the priest read this letter in the hearing of Jeremiah the prophet. Then Yahweh's word came to Jeremiah, saying, Send to all of the captives, saying, Yahweh says concerning Shemaiah the Nehelamite, Because Shemaiah has prophesied to you, and I didn't send him, and he has caused you to trust in a lie. Therefore, Yahweh says, Behold, I will punish Shemaiah the Nehelamite and his offspring. He will not have a man to dwell among this people. He won't see the good that I will do to my people, says Yahweh, because he has spoken rebellion against Yahweh. Chapter 30 the word that came to Jeremiah from Yahweh, saying, Yahweh, the God of Israel, says, Write all the words that I have spoken to you in a book. For behold, the days come, says Yahweh, that I will reverse the captivity of my people Israel and Judah, says Yahweh. I will cause them to return to the land that I gave to their fathers, and they will possess it. These are the words that Yahweh spoke concerning Israel and concerning Judah. For Yahweh says, We have heard a voice of trembling, a voice of fear and not of peace. Ask now and see whether a man travails with child. Why do I see every man with his hands on his waist as a woman in travail, and all faces are turned pale? Alas! For that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he will be saved out of it. It will come to pass in that day, says Yahweh of armies, that I will break his yoke from off your neck and will burst your bonds. Strangers will no more make them their bondservants, but they will serve Yahweh their God and David their king whom I will raise up to them. Therefore, don't be afraid, O Jacob, my servant, says Yahweh. Don't be dismayed, Israel, for behold, I will save you from afar and save your offspring from the land of their captivity. Jacob will return and will be quiet and at ease. No one will make him afraid, for I am with you, says Yahweh. To save you, for I will make a full end of all the nations where I have scattered you, but I will not make a full end of you, but I will correct you in measure, and will in no way leave you unpunished. For Yahweh says, Your hurt is incurable, your wound is grievous. There is no one to plead your cause that you may be bound up. You have no healing medicines. All your lovers have forgotten you. They don't seek you, for I have wounded you with the wound of an enemy, with the chastisement of a cruel one, for the greatness of your iniquity, because your sins were increased. Why do you cry over your injury? Your pain is incurable, for the greatness of your iniquity, because your sins have increased. I have done these things to you. Therefore, all those who devour you will be devoured. All your adversaries, every one of them, will go into captivity. Those who plunder you will be plundered. I will make all who prey on you become prey, for I will restore health to you, and I will heal you of your wounds, says Yahweh, because they have called you an outcast, saying, it is Zion whom no man seeks after. Yahweh says, Behold, I will reverse the captivity of Jacob's tents and have compassion on his dwelling places. The city will be built on its own hill and the palace will be inhabited in its own place. Thanksgiving will proceed out of them with the voice of those who make merry. I will multiply them and they will not be few. 
I will also glorify them, and they will not be small. Their children also will be as before, and their congregation will be established before me. I will punish all who oppress them. Their prince will be one of them, and their ruler will proceed from among them. I will cause him to draw near, and he will approach me. For who is he who has had boldness to approach me, says Yahweh? You shall be my people and I will be your God. Behold, Yahweh's storm, his wrath has gone out, a sweeping storm. It will burst on the head of the wicked. The fierce anger of Yahweh will not return until he has accomplished and until he has performed the intentions of his heart. In the latter days, you will understand it. Chapter 31 At that time, says Yahweh, I will be the God of all the families of Israel, and they will be my people. Yahweh says, The people who survived the sword found favor in the wilderness, even Israel, when I went to cause him to rest. Yahweh appeared of old to me, saying, Yes, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I have drawn you with loving kindness. I will build you again, and you will be built, O virgin of Israel. You will again be adorned with your tambourines, and will go out in the dances of those who make merry. Again you will plant vineyards on the mountains of Samaria. The planters will plant, and will enjoy its fruit. For there will be a day that the watchmen on the hills of Ephraim cry, Arise, let's go up to Zion, to Yahweh our God. For Yahweh says, Sing with gladness for Jacob, and shout for the chief of the nations. Publish, praise, and say, Yahweh, save your people, the remnant of Israel. Behold, I will bring them from the north country, and gather them from the uttermost parts of the earth, along with the blind and the lame, the woman with child, and her who travails with child, together. They will return as a great company. They will come with weeping. I will lead them with petitions. I will cause them to walk by rivers of waters, in a straight way in which they won't stumble. For I am a father to Israel. Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear Yahweh's word, you nations, and declare it in the distant islands. Say, He who scattered Israel will gather him and keep him as a shepherd does his flock. For Yahweh has ransomed Jacob and redeemed him from the hand of him who was stronger than he. They will come and sing in the height of Zion, and will flow to the goodness of Yahweh, to the grain, to the new wine, to the oil, and to the young of the flock and of the herd. Their soul will be as a watered garden, and they will not sorrow any more at all. Then the virgin will rejoice in the dance, the young men and the old together. For I will turn their mourning into joy, and will comfort them, and make them rejoice from their sorrow. I will satiate the soul of the priests with fatness, and my people will be satisfied with my goodness, says Yahweh. Yahweh says, A voice is heard in Ramah, lamentation and bitter weeping, Rachel weeping for her children. She refuses to be comforted for her children, because they are no more. Yahweh says, Refrain your voice from weeping, and your eyes from tears, for your work will be rewarded, says Yahweh. They will come again from the land of the enemy. There is hope for your latter end, says Yahweh. Your children will come again to their own territory. I have surely heard Ephraim grieving thus. You have chastised me 
and I was chastised as an untrained calf. Turn me, and I will be turned, for you are Yahweh my God. Surely after that I was turned. I repented. After that I was instructed. I struck my thigh. I was ashamed, yes, even confounded, because I bore the reproach of my youth. Is Ephraim my dear son? Is he a darling child? For as often as I speak against him, I still earnestly remember him. Therefore, my heart yearns for him. I will surely have mercy on him, says Yahweh. Set up road signs. Make guideposts. Set your heart toward the highway, even the way by which you went. Turn again, virgin of Israel. Turn again to these your cities. How long will you go here and there, you backsliding daughter? For Yahweh has created a new thing in the earth. A woman will encompass a man. Yahweh of armies, the God of Israel, says, Yet again they will use this speech in the land of Judah and in its cities when I reverse their captivity. Yahweh, bless you, habitation of righteousness, mountain of holiness. Judah and all its cities will dwell therein together, the farmers and those who go about with flocks. For I have satiated the weary soul, and I have replenished every sorrowful soul. On this I awakened and saw, and my sleep was sweet to me. Behold, the days come, says Yahweh, that I will sow the house of Israel and the house of Judah with the seed of man and with the seed of animal. It will happen that, like as I have watched over them to pluck up and to break down and to overthrow and to destroy and to afflict, so I will watch over them to build and to plant, says Yahweh. In those days they will say no more, The fathers have eaten sour grapes, and the children's teeth are set on edge. But everyone will die for his own iniquity. Every man who eats the sour grapes, his teeth will be set on edge. Behold, the days come, says Yahweh, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which covenant of mine they broke, although I was a husband to them, says Yahweh. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says Yahweh. I will put my law in their inward parts, and I will write it in their heart. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. They will no longer each teach his neighbor, and every man teach his brother, saying, Know Yahweh, for they will all know me, from their least to their greatest, says Yahweh. For I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. Yahweh, who gives the sun for a light by day, and the ordinances of the moon and of the stars for a light by night, who stirs up the sea so that its waves roar. Yahweh of armies is his name, says, If these ordinances depart from before me, says Yahweh, then the offspring of Israel also will cease from being a nation before me forever. Yahweh says, if heaven above can be measured, and the foundations of the earth searched out beneath, then I will also cast off all the offspring of Israel for all that they have done, says Yahweh. Behold, the days come, says Yahweh, that the city will be built to Yahweh from the tower of Hananel to the gate of the corner. The measuring line will go out further straight onward to the hill Garib and will turn toward Goa. The whole valley of the dead bodies and of the ashes and all the fields to the brook Kidron, to
to the corner of the horse gate toward the east will be holy to Yahweh. It will not be plucked up or thrown down any more forever. Chapter 32 The word that came to Jeremiah from Yahweh in the tenth year of Zedekiah, king of Judah, which was the eighteenth year of Nebuchadnezzar. Now at that time, the king of Babylon's army was besieging Jerusalem. Jeremiah the prophet was shut up in the court of the guard, which was in the king of Judah's house. For Zedekiah, king of Judah, had shut him up, saying, Why do you prophesy, and say, Yahweh says, Behold, I will give this city into the hand of the king of Babylon, and he will take it. And Zedekiah, king of Judah, won't escape out of the hand of the Chaldeans, but will surely be delivered into the hand of the king of Babylon, and will speak with him mouth to mouth, and his eyes will see his eyes. And he will bring Zedekiah to Babylon, and he will be there until I visit him, says Yahweh. Though you fight with the Chaldeans, you will not prosper. Jeremiah said, Yahweh's word came to me, saying, Behold, Hanamel, the son of Shalom, your uncle, will come to you, saying, Buy my field that is in Anathoth, for the right of redemption is yours to buy it. So Hanamel, my uncle's son, came to me in the court of the guard, according to Yahweh's word and said to me, Please buy my field that is in Anathoth, which is in the land of Benjamin, for the right of inheritance is yours, and the redemption is yours. Buy it for yourself. Then I knew that this was Yahweh's word. I bought the field that was in Anathoth of Hanamel, my uncle's son, and weighed him the money, even seventeen shekels of silver. I signed the deed, sealed it, called witnesses, and weighed the money in the balances to him. So I took the deed of the purchase, both that which was sealed, containing the terms and conditions, and that which was open. And I delivered the deed of the purchase to Barak, the son of Neriah, the son of Messiah, in the presence of Hanamel, my uncle's son, and in the presence of the witnesses who signed the deed of the purchase before all the Jews who sat in the court of the guard. I commanded Baruch before them, saying, Yahweh of armies, the God of Israel, says, Take these deeds, this deed of the purchase which is sealed, and this deed which is open, and put them in an earthen vessel, that they may last many days. For Yahweh of armies, the God of Israel, says, Houses and fields and vineyards will yet again be bought in this land. Now after I had delivered the deed of the purchase to Barak, the son of Neriah, I prayed to Yahweh, saying, Ah, Lord Yahweh, behold, you have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and by your outstretched arm. There is nothing too hard for you. You show loving kindness to thousands, and repay the iniquity of the fathers into the bosom of their children after them. The great, the mighty God, Yahweh of armies, is your name. Great in counsel and mighty in work, whose eyes are open to all the ways of the children of men, to give everyone according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings, who performed signs and wonders in the land of Egypt, even to this day, both in Israel and among other men, and made yourself a name as it is today, and brought your people Israel out of the land of Egypt with signs, with wonders, with a strong hand, with an outstretched arm, and with great terror, and gave them this land which you swore to their fathers to give them, a land flowing with milk and honey. They came in and possessed it, but they didn't obey your voice and didn't walk in your law. They have done nothing of all that you commanded them to do. Therefore you have caused all this evil to come upon them. Behold, siege ramps have come to the city to take it. This city is given into the hand of the Chaldeans who fight against it, 
because of the sword, of the famine, and of the pestilence. What you have spoken has happened. Behold, you see it. You have said to me, Lord Yahweh, buy the field for money and call witnesses, whereas the city is given into the hand of the Chaldeans. Then Yahweh's word came to Jeremiah, saying, Behold, I am Yahweh, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Therefore Yahweh says, Behold, I will give this city into the hand of the Chaldeans and into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and he will take it. The Chaldeans, who fight against this city, will come and set this city on fire and burn it with the houses on whose roofs they have offered incense to Baal, and poured out drink offerings to other gods to provoke me to anger. For the children of Israel and the children of Judah have done only that which was evil in my sight from their youth. For the children of Israel have only provoked me to anger with the work of their hands, says Yahweh. For this city has been to me a provocation of my anger and of my wrath from the day that they built it, even to this day, so that I should remove it from before my face because of all the evil of the children of Israel and of the children of Judah, which they have done to provoke me to anger. They, their kings, their princes, their priests, their prophets, the men of Judah, and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. They have turned their backs to me, and not their faces. Although I taught them, rising up early and teaching them, yet they have not listened to receive instruction. But they set their abominations in the house which is called by my name, to defile it. They built the high places of Baal, which are in the valley of the son of Hinnom, to cause their sons and their daughters to pass through fire to Molech, which I didn't command them. It didn't even come into my mind that they should do this abomination to cause Judah to sin. Now therefore, Yahweh, the God of Israel, says concerning this city, about which you say, it is given into the hand of the king of Babylon by the sword, by the famine and by the pestilence. Behold, I will gather them out of all the countries where I have driven them in my anger and in my wrath and in great indignation, and I will bring them again to this place. I will cause them to dwell safely. Then they will be my people, and I will be their God. I will give them one heart and one way that they may fear me forever for their good and the good of their children after them. I will make an everlasting covenant with them that I will not turn away from following them to do them good. I will put my fear in their hearts that they may not depart from me. Yes, I will rejoice over them to do them good, and I will plant them in this land assuredly with my whole heart and with my whole soul. For Yahweh says, Just as I have brought all this great evil on this people, so I will bring on them all the good that I have promised them. Fields will be bought in this land, about which you say, It is desolate, without man or animal. It is given into the hand of the Chaldeans. Men will buy fields for money, sign the deeds, seal them, and call witnesses, in the land of Benjamin, and in the places around Jerusalem, in the cities of Judah, in the cities of the hill country, in the cities of the lowland, and in the cities of the south, for I will cause their captivity to be reversed, says Yahweh. Chapter 33 Moreover, Yahweh's word came to Jeremiah the second time while he was still locked up in the court of the guard, saying, Yahweh who does it, Yahweh who forms it to establish it, Yahweh is his name, says, Call to me, and I will answer you, 
and will show you great and difficult things which you don't know. For Yahweh, the God of Israel, says concerning the houses of this city and concerning the houses of the kings of Judah, which are broken down to make a defense against the mounds and against the sword, while men come to fight with the Chaldeans and to fill them with the dead bodies of men, whom I have killed in my anger and in my wrath, and for all whose wickedness I have hidden my face from this city. Behold, I will bring it health and cure, and I will cure them, and I will reveal to them abundance of peace and truth. I will cause the captivity of Judah and the captivity of Israel to return, and will build them as at the first. I will cleanse them from all their iniquity by which they have sinned against me. I will pardon all their iniquities by which they have sinned against me, and by which they have transgressed against me. This city will be to me for a name of joy, for praise, and for glory, before all the nations of the earth, which will hear all the good that I do to them, and will fear and tremble for all the good and for all the peace that I provide to it. Yahweh says, Yet again there will be heard in this place, about which you say, It is waste, without man and without animal, even in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem, that are desolate, without man and without inhabitant and without animal the voice of joy and the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride, the voice of those who say, Give thanks to Yahweh of armies, for Yahweh is good, for his loving kindness endures forever, who bring thanksgiving into Yahweh's house, for I will cause the captivity of the land to be reversed as at the first, says Yahweh. Yahweh of armies says, Yet again there will be in this place, which is waste, without man and without animal, and in all its cities, a habitation of shepherds causing their flocks to lie down. In the cities of the hill country, in the cities of the lowland, in the cities of the south, in the land of Benjamin, in the places around Jerusalem, and in the cities of Judah, the flocks will again pass under the hands of him who counts them, says Yahweh. Behold, the days come, says Yahweh, that I will perform that good word which I have spoken concerning the house of Israel and concerning the house of Judah. In those days and at that time, I will cause a branch of righteousness to grow up to David. He will execute justice and righteousness in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved, and Jerusalem will dwell safely. This is the name by which she will be called, Yahweh our righteousness. For Yahweh says, David will never lack a man to sit on the throne of the house of Israel. The Levitical priests won't lack a man before me to offer burnt offerings to burn meal offerings, and to do sacrifice continually. Yahweh's word came to Jeremiah, saying, Yahweh says, If you can break my covenant of the day and my covenant of the night, so that there will not be day and night in their time, then may my covenant also be broken with David my servant, that he won't have a son to reign on his throne and with the Levites, the priests, my ministers. As the army of the sky can't be counted, and the sand of the sea can't be measured, so I will multiply the offspring of David, my servant, and the Levites who minister to me. Yahweh's word came to Jeremiah, saying, Don't consider what this people has spoken, saying, Has Yahweh cast off the two families which he chose? Thus they despise my people, that they should be no more a nation before them. Yahweh says, If my covenant of day and night fails, if I have not appointed the ordinances of heaven and earth, then I will also cast away the offspring of Jacob 
and of David my servant, so that I will not take of his offspring to be rulers over the offspring of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. For I will cause their captivity to be reversed, and will have mercy on them. Chapter 34 The word which came to Jeremiah from Yahweh, when Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, with all his army, all the kingdoms of the earth that were under his dominion, and all the peoples, were fighting against Jerusalem and against all its cities, saying, Yahweh, the God of Israel, says, Go and speak to Zedekiah, king of Judah, and tell him, Yahweh says, Behold, I will give this city into the hand of the king of Babylon, and he will burn it with fire. You won't escape out of his hand, but will surely be taken and delivered into his hand. Your eyes will see the eyes of the king of Babylon, and he will speak with you mouth to mouth. You will go to Babylon. Yet hear Yahweh's word, O Zedekiah, king of Judah. Yahweh says concerning you, You won't die by the sword. You will die in peace, and with the burnings of your fathers, the former kings who were before you. So they will make a burning for you. They will lament you, saying, Ah, Lord, for I have spoken the word, says Yahweh. Then Jeremiah the prophet spoke all these words to Zedekiah, king of Judah in Jerusalem, when the king of Babylon's army was fighting against Jerusalem and against all the cities of Judah that were left, against Lachish and against Azekah, for these alone remained of the cities of Judah as fortified cities. The word came to Jeremiah from Yahweh, after king Zedekiah had made a covenant with all the people, who were at Jerusalem, to proclaim liberty to them, that every man should let his male servant and every man his female servant, who is a Hebrew or Hebrewess, go free, that no one should make bond servants of them, of a Jew his brother. All the princes and all the people obeyed who had entered into the covenant, that every one should let his male servant and every one his female servant go free that no one should make bond servants of them any more. They obeyed and let them go. But afterwards they turned and caused the servants and the handmaids, whom they had let go free, to return and brought them into subjection for servants and for handmaids. Therefore Yahweh's word came to Jeremiah from Yahweh, saying, Yahweh, the God of Israel, says, I made a covenant with your fathers in the day that I brought them out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage, saying, At the end of seven years, every man of you shall release his brother, who is a Hebrew, who has been sold to you, and has served you six years. You shall let him go free from you. But your fathers didn't listen to me and didn't incline their ear. You had now turned, and had done that which is right in my eyes, in every man proclaiming liberty to his neighbor. You had made a covenant before me, in the house which is called by my name. But you turned, and profaned my name, and every man caused his servant, and every man his handmaid, whom you had let go free at their pleasure, to return, you brought them into subjection to be to you for servants and for handmaids. Therefore Yahweh says, You have not listened to me to proclaim liberty, every man to his brother and every man to his neighbor. Behold, I proclaim to you a liberty, says Yahweh, to the sword, to the pestilence, and to the famine. I will make you be tossed back and forth among all the kingdoms of the earth. I will give the men who have transgressed my covenant, who have not performed the words of the covenant which they made before me, 
when they cut the calf in two and passed between its parts the princes of judah the princes of jerusalem the eunuchs the priests and all the people of the land who passed between the parts of the calf i will even give them into the hand of their enemies and into the hand of those who seek their life their dead bodies will be food for the birds of the sky and for the animals of the earth i will give zedekiah king of judah and his princes into the hands of their enemies into the hands of those who seek their life and into the hands of the king of babylon's army who has gone away from you behold i will command says yahweh and cause them to return to this city they will fight against it take it and burn it with fire i will make the cities of judah a desolation without inhabitant chapter 35 the word which came to jeremiah from yahweh in the days of jehoiakim the son of josiah king of judah saying go to the house of the rechabites and speak to them and bring them into yahweh's house into one of the rooms and give them wine to drink then i took jeazaniah the son of jeremiah the son of habazaniah with his brothers and all his sons and the whole house of the rechabites and i brought them into yahweh's house into the room of the sons of hanan the son of igdaliah the man of god which was by the room of the princes, which was above the room of Maaseah, the son of Shalom, the keeper of the threshold. I set before the sons of the house of the Rechabites bowls full of wine and cups, and I said to them, Drink wine. But they said, We will drink no wine, for Jonadab, the son of Rechab, our father, commanded us, saying, you shall drink no wine neither you nor your sons forever you shall not build a house sow seed plant a vineyard or have any but all your days you shall dwell in tents that you may live many days in the land in which you live as nomads we have obeyed the voice of jonadab the son of rechab our father in all that he commanded us to drink no wine all our days we our wives our sons or our daughters and not to build houses for ourselves to dwell in we have no vineyard field or seed but we have lived in tents and have obeyed and done according to all that jonadab our father commanded us but when nebuchadnezzar king of babylon came up into the land we said come let's go to jerusalem for fear of the army of the Chaldeans, and for fear of the army of the Syrians. So we will dwell at Jerusalem. Then Yahweh's word came to Jeremiah, saying, Yahweh of armies, the God of Israel, says, Go and tell the men of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, Will you not receive instruction to listen to my words? Says Yahweh. The words of Jonadab, the son of Rechab, that he commanded his sons not to drink wine, are performed. And to this day they drink none, for they obey their father's commandment. But I have spoken to you, rising up early and speaking, and you have not listened to me. I have sent also to you all my servants, the prophets, rising up early and sending them, saying, Every one of you must return now from his evil way. Amend your doings, and don't go after other gods to serve them. Then you will dwell in the land which I have given to you and to your fathers. But you have not inclined your ear, nor listened to me. The sons of Jonadab, the son of Rechab, have performed the commandment of their father, which he commanded them but this people has not listened to me therefore yahweh the god of armies the god of israel says behold 
I will bring on Judah and on all the inhabitants of Jerusalem all the evil that I have pronounced against them, because I have spoken to them, but they have not heard, and I have called to them, but they have not answered. Jeremiah said to the house of the Rechabites, Yahweh of armies, the God of Israel, says, Because you have obeyed the commandment of Jonadab, your father, and kept all his precepts, and done according to all that he commanded you, therefore Yahweh of armies, the God of Israel, says, Jonadab, the son of Rechab, will not lack a man to stand before me forever. Chapter 36 In the fourth year of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, this word came to Jeremiah from Yahweh, saying, Take a scroll of a book, and write in it all the words that I have spoken to you against Israel, and against Judah, and against all the nations, from the day I spoke to you, from the days of Josiah, even to this day, it may be that the house of Judah will hear all the evil which I intend to do to them, that they may each return from his evil way, that I may forgive their iniquity and their sin. Then Jeremiah called Barak, the son of Neriah, and Barak wrote from the mouth of Jeremiah all Yahweh's words which he had spoken to him on a scroll of a book. Jeremiah commanded Barak, saying, I am restricted. I can't go into Yahweh's house. Therefore you go and read from the scroll which you have written from my mouth, Yahweh's words, in the ears of the people in Yahweh's house on the fast day. Also you shall read them in the ears of all Judah who come out of their cities, it may be they will present their supplication before Yahweh, and will each return from his evil way, for Yahweh has pronounced great anger and wrath against this people. Barak, the son of Neriah, did according to all that Jeremiah the prophet commanded him, reading in the book Yahweh's words in Yahweh's house. Now in the fifth year of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, in the ninth month, all the people in Jerusalem and all the people who came from the cities of Judah to Jerusalem proclaimed a fast before Yahweh. Then Barak read the words of Jeremiah from the book in Yahweh's house, in the room of Gemariah, the son of Shaphan, the scribe, in the upper court, at the entry of the new gate of Yahweh's house, in the ears of all the people. When Micaiah, the son of Gemariah, the son of Shaphan, had heard out of the book all Yahweh's words, he went down into the king's house, into the scribe's room. And behold, all the princes were sitting there, Elishema, the scribe, Deleah, the son of Shemaiah, Elnathan, the son of Agbor, Gemariah, the son of Shaphan, Zedekiah, the son of Hananiah, and all the princes. Then Micaiah declared to them all the words that he had heard, when Barak read the book in the ears of the people. Therefore all the princes sent Jehudi, the son of Nethaniah, the son of Shelemiah, the son of Cushai, to Barak, saying, Take in your hand the scroll in which you have read in the ears of the people, and come. So Barak, the son of Neriah, took the scroll in his hand and came to them. They said to him, Sit down now and read it in our hearing. So Barak read it in their hearing. Now when they had heard all the words, they turned in fear one toward another and said to Barak, We will surely tell the king of all these words. They asked Barak, saying, Tell us now, how did you write all these words at his mouth? Then Barak answered them, He dictated all these words to me with his mouth, and I wrote them with ink in the book. 
Then the princess said to Barak, You and Jeremiah, go hide. Don't let anyone know where you are. They went in to the king into the court, but they had laid up the scroll in the room of Elishama, the scribe. Then they told all the words in the hearing of the king. So the king sent Jehudi to get the scroll, and he took it out of the room of Elishama, the scribe. Jehudi read it in the hearing of the king, and in the hearing of all the princes who stood beside the king. Now the king was sitting in the winter house in the ninth month, and there was a fire in the brazier burning before him. When Jehudi had read three or four leaves, the king cut it with the penknife and cast it into the fire that was in the brazier, until all the scroll was consumed in the fire that was in the brazier. The king and his servants who heard all these words were not afraid and didn't tear their garments. Moreover, Elnathan and Deliah and Gemariah had made intercession to the king that he would not burn the scroll, but he would not listen to them. The king commanded Jeramiel, the king's son, and Sariah, the son of Azrael, and Shelemiah, the son of Abdiel, to arrest Barak the scribe and Jeremiah the prophet. But Yahweh hid them. Then Yahweh's word came to Jeremiah, after the king had burned the scroll, and the words which Barak wrote at the mouth of Jeremiah, saying, Take again another scroll, and write in it all the former words that were in the first scroll which Jehoiakim, the king of Judah, has burned. Concerning Jehoiakim, king of Judah, you shall say, Yahweh says, You have burned this scroll, saying, Why have you written therein, saying, The king of Babylon will certainly come and destroy this land, and will cause to cease from there man and animal? Therefore, Yahweh says concerning Jehoiakim, king of Judah, He will have no one to sit on David's throne. His dead body will be cast out in the day to the heat, and in the night to the frost. I will punish him, his offspring, and his servants for their iniquity. I will bring on them, on the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and on the men of Judah, all the evil that I have pronounced against them, but they didn't listen. Then took Jeremiah another scroll and gave it to Barak, the scribe, the son of Neriah, who wrote therein from the mouth of Jeremiah all the words of the book, which Jehoiakim, king of Judah, had burned in the fire, and many similar words were added to them. Chapter 37 Zedekiah, the son of Josiah, reigned as king, instead of Coniah, the son of Jehoiakim, whom Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, made king in the land of Judah. But neither he nor his servants nor the people of the land listened to Yahweh's words, which he spoke by the prophet Jeremiah. Zedekiah the king sent Jehuchal, the son of Shelemiah, and Zephaniah, the son of Maaseah, the priest, to the prophet Jeremiah, saying, Pray now to Yahweh our God for us. Now Jeremiah came in and went out among the people, for they had not put him into prison. Pharaoh's army had come out of Egypt, and when the Chaldeans who were besieging Jerusalem heard news of them, they broke up from Jerusalem. Then Yahweh's word came to the prophet Jeremiah, saying, Yahweh, the God of Israel, says, You shall tell the king of Judah, who sent you to me to inquire of me. Behold, Pharaoh's army, which has come out to help you, will return to Egypt into their own land. The Chaldeans will come again and fight against this city. They will take it and burn it with fire. Yahweh says, Don't deceive yourselves, saying, The Chaldeans will surely depart from us, for they will not depart. 
For though you had struck the whole army of the Chaldeans who fight against you, and only wounded men remained among them, they would each rise up in his tent and burn this city with fire. When the army of the Chaldeans had broken up from Jerusalem for fear of Pharaoh's army, then Jeremiah went out of Jerusalem to go into the land of Benjamin to receive his portion there in the middle of the people. When he was in Benjamin's gate, a captain of the guard was there, whose name was Arijah, the son of Shelemiah, the son of Hananiah. And he seized Jeremiah the prophet, saying, You are defecting to the Chaldeans. Then Jeremiah said, That is false. I am not defecting to the Chaldeans. But he didn't listen to him. So Arijah seized Jeremiah and brought him to the princes. The princes were angry with Jeremiah and struck him and put him in prison in the house of Jonathan the scribe, for they had made that the prison. When Jeremiah had come into the dungeon house and into the cells, and Jeremiah had remained there many days, then Zedekiah the king sent and had him brought out. The king asked him secretly in his house, Is there any word from Yahweh? Jeremiah said, There is. He also said, you will be delivered into the hand of the king of Babylon. Moreover, Jeremiah said to king Zedekiah, How have I sinned against you, against your servants, or against this people, that you have put me in prison? Now where are your prophets who prophesied to you, saying, The king of Babylon will not come against you, nor against this land? Now please hear, my lord the king, Please let my supplication be presented before you, that you not cause me to return to the house of Jonathan the scribe, lest I die there. Then Zedekiah the king commanded, and they committed Jeremiah into the court of the guard. They gave him daily a loaf of bread out of the Baker Street, until all the bread in the city was gone. Thus Jeremiah remained in the court of the guard. Chapter 38 Shephatiah, the son of Matan, and Gedaliah, the son of Pasher, and Jukal, the son of Shelemiah, and Pasher, the son of Malchijah, heard the words that Jeremiah spoke to all the people, saying, Yahweh says, He who remains in this city will die by the sword, by the famine, and by the pestilence, but he who goes out to the Chaldeans will live and he will escape with his life, and he will live. Yahweh says, This city will surely be given into the hand of the army of the king of Babylon, and he will take it. Then the princes said to the king, Please let this man be put to death, because he weakens the hands of the men of war who remain in this city, and the hands of all the people in speaking such words to them. For this man doesn't seek the welfare of this people, but harm. Zedekiah the king said, Behold, he is in your hand, for the king can't do anything to oppose you. Then they took Jeremiah and threw him into the dungeon of Malchijah the king's son, that was in the court of the guard. They let down Jeremiah with cords. In the dungeon there was no water, but mire, and Jeremiah sank in the mire. Now when ebed melech the Ethiopian, a eunuch who was in the king's house, heard that they had put Jeremiah in the dungeon, the king was then sitting in Benjamin's gate. ebed melech went out of the king's house and spoke to the king, saying, My lord the king, these men have done evil in all that they have done to Jeremiah the prophet, whom they have cast into the dungeon. He is likely to die in the place where he is because of the famine, for there is no more bread in the city. Then the king commanded ebed melech the Ethiopian, saying, Take from here thirty men with you, and take up Jeremiah the prophet out of the dungeon before he dies. So ebed melech took the men with him and went into the house of the king under the treasury and took from there rags and worn-out garments and led them down by cords into the dungeon to Jeremiah. 
Ebed Melech the Ethiopian said to Jeremiah, Now put these rags and worn out garments under your armpits, under the cords. Jeremiah did so. So they drew up Jeremiah with the cords and took him up out of the dungeon. And Jeremiah remained in the court of the guard. Then Zedekiah the king sent and took Jeremiah the prophet to himself into the third entry that is in Yahweh's house. Then the king said to Jeremiah, I will ask you something. Hide nothing from me. Then Jeremiah said to Zedekiah, If I declare it to you, will you not surely put me to death? If I give you counsel, you will not listen to me. So Zedekiah the king swore secretly, to Jeremiah, saying, As Yahweh lives, who made us this soul, I will not put you to death, neither will I give you into the hand of these men who seek your life. Then Jeremiah said to Zedekiah, Yahweh, the God of armies, the God of Israel, says, If you will go out to the king of Babylon's princes, then your soul will live, and this city will not be burned with fire. You will live along with your house. But if you will not go out to the king of Babylon's princes, then this city will be given into the hand of the Chaldeans, and they will burn it with fire, and you won't escape out of their hand. Zedekiah the king said to Jeremiah, I am afraid of the Jews who have defected to the Chaldeans, lest they deliver me into their hand, and they mock me. But Jeremiah said, they won't deliver you. Obey, I beg you, Yahweh's voice, in that which I speak to you. So it will be well with you, and your soul will live. But if you refuse to go out, this is the word that Yahweh has shown me. Behold, all the women who are left in the king of Judah's house will be brought out to the king of Babylon's princes. And those women will say, Your familiar friends have turned on you and have prevailed over you. Your feet are sunk in the mire. They have turned away from you. They will bring out all your wives and your children to the Chaldeans. You won't escape out of their hand, but will be taken by the hand of the king of Babylon. You will cause this city to be burned with fire. Then Zedekiah said to Jeremiah, Let no man know of these words, and you won't die. But if the princes hear that I have talked with you, and they come to you and tell you, Declare to us now what you have said to the king. Don't hide it from us, and we will not put you to death. Also tell us what the king said to you. Then you shall tell them, I presented my supplication before the king, that he would not cause me to return to Jonathan's house to die there. Then all the princes came to Jeremiah and asked him, and he told them according to all these words that the king had commanded. So they stopped speaking with him, for the matter was not perceived. So Jeremiah stayed in the court of the guard until the day that Jerusalem was taken. Chapter 39 In the ninth year of Zedekiah, king of Judah, in the tenth month, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and all his army came against Jerusalem and besieged it. In the eleventh year of Zedekiah, in the fourth month, the ninth day of the month, a breach was made in the city. All the princes of the king of Babylon came in and sat in the middle gate, Nergal Sherezer, Samgranebo, Sarsacum, Rapsuris, Nergal Sherezer, Rabmag, with all the rest of the princes of the king of Babylon. When Zedekiah the king of Judah and all the men of war saw them, then they fled and went out of the city by night, by the way of the king's garden, through the gate between the two walls. And he went out toward the Arabah. But the army of the Chaldeans pursued them and overtook Zedekiah in the plains of Jericho. When they had taken him, they brought him up to Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, to Riblah, in the land of Hamath, and he pronounced judgment on him. Then the king of Babylon killed Zedekiah's sons in Riblah, 
before his eyes. The king of Babylon also killed all the nobles of Judah. Moreover, he put out Zedekiah's eyes and bound him in fetters to carry him to Babylon. The Chaldeans burned the king's house and the houses of the people with fire and broke down the walls of Jerusalem. Then Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, carried away captive into Babylon the residue of the people who remained in the city, the deserters also who fell away to him, and the residue of the people who remained. But Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, left of the poor of the people, who had nothing in the land of Judah, and gave them vineyards and fields at the same time. Now Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, commanded Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, concerning Jeremiah, saying, Take him, and take care of him. Do him no harm, but do to him even as he tells you. So Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, sent, with Nebuchadnezzar, Rapsaris, and Nergal Sherezer, Rabmag, and all the chief officers of the king of Babylon. They sent, and took Jeremiah out of the court of the guard, and committed him to Gedaliah, the son of Ahikam, the son of Shaphan, that he should carry him home. So he lived among the people. Now Yahweh's word came to Jeremiah while he was shut up in the court of the guard, saying, Go and speak to ebed melech the Ethiopian, saying, Yahweh of armies, the God of Israel, says, Behold, I will bring my words on this city for evil and not for good, and they will be accomplished before you in that day. But I will deliver you in that day, says Yahweh, and you will not be given into the hand of the men of whom you are afraid, for I will surely save you, and you won't fall by the sword, but you will escape with your life, because you have put your trust in me, says Yahweh. Chapter 40 The word which came to Jeremiah from Yahweh, after Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, had let him go from Ramah, when he had taken him, being bound in chains among all the captives of Jerusalem and Judah, who were carried away captive to Babylon. The captain of the guard took Jeremiah and said to him, Yahweh, your God, pronounced this evil on this place, and Yahweh has brought it, and done according as he spoke. Because you have sinned against Yahweh, and have not obeyed his voice, therefore this thing has come on you. Now behold, I release you today from the chains which are on your hand. If it seems good to you to come with me into Babylon, come, and I will take care of you. But if it seems bad to you to come with me into Babylon, don't. Behold, all the land is before you. Where it seems good and right to you to go, there go. Now, while he had not yet gone back, go back then, he said, to Gedaliah, the son of Ahikam, the son of Shaphan, whom the king of Babylon has made governor over the cities of Judah, and dwell with him among the people or go wherever it seems right to you to go. So the captain of the guard gave him food and a present, and let him go. Then Jeremiah went to Gedaliah, the son of Ahikam, to Mizpah, and lived with him among the people who were left in the land. Now when all the captains of the forces who were in the fields, even they and their men, heard that the king of Babylon had made Gedaliah the son of Ahikam, governor in the land, and had committed to him men, women, children, and of the poorest of the land, of those who were not carried away captive to Babylon. Then Ishmael, the son of Nethaniah, and Johanan, and Jonathan, the sons of Korea, and Sareah, the son of Tanhumeth, and the sons of Ephi, the Netophathite, and Jezaniah, the son of the Maacathite, they and their men came to Gedaliah to Mizpah. Gedaliah, the son of Ahikam, the son of Shaphan, swore to them and to their men, saying, 
Don't be afraid to serve the Chaldeans. Dwell in the land and serve the king of Babylon, and it will be well with you. As for me, behold, I will dwell at Mizpah to stand before the Chaldeans who will come to us. But you, gather wine and summer fruits and oil, and put them in your vessels, and dwell in your cities that you have taken. Likewise, when all the Jews who were in Moab, and among the children of Ammon, and in Edom, and who were in all the countries, heard that the king of Babylon had left a remnant of Judah, and that he had set over them Gedaliah, the son of Ahikam, the son of Shaphan, then all the Jews returned out of all places where they were driven, and came to the land of Judah, to Gedaliah, to Mizpah, and gathered very much wine and summer fruits. Moreover, Johanan, the son of Korea, and all the captains of the forces who were in the fields, came to Gedaliah, to Mizpah, and said to him, do you know that Baalis, the king of the children of Ammon, has sent Ishmael, the son of Nethaniah, to take your life? But Gedaliah, the son of Ahikam, didn't believe them. Then Johanan, the son of Korea, spoke to Gedaliah in Mizpah, secretly, saying, Please, let me go, and I will kill Ishmael, the son of Nethaniah, and no man will know it. Why should he take your life? that all the Jews who are gathered to you should be scattered, and the remnant of Judah perish. But Gedaliah, the son of Ahikam, said to Johanan, the son of Korea, You shall not do this thing, for you speak falsely of Ishmael. Chapter 41 Now in the seventh month, Ishmael, the son of Nethaniah, the son of Elishema, of the royal offspring, and one of the chief officers of the king, and ten men with him, came to Gedaliah, the son of Ahikam, to Mizpah, and there they ate bread together in Mizpah. Then Ishmael, the son of Nethaniah, arose, and the ten men who were with him, and struck Gedaliah, the son of Ahikam, the son of Shaphan, with the sword, and killed him whom the king of Babylon had made governor over the land. Ishmael also killed all the Jews who were with him, with Gedaliah, at Mizpah, and the Chaldeans who were found there, the men of war. The second day, after he had killed Gedaliah, and no man knew it, men came from Shechem, from Shiloh, and from Samaria, even eighty men, having their beards shaved and their clothes torn, and having cut themselves with meal offerings and frankincense in their hand to bring them to Yahweh's house. Ishmael, the son of Nethaniah, went out from Mizpah to meet them, weeping all along as he went. And as he met them, he said to them, Come to Gedaliah, the son of Ahikam. It was so, when they came into the middle of the city, that Ishmael, the son of Nethaniah, killed them and cast them into the middle of the pit, he and the men who were with him. But ten men were found among those who said to Ishmael, Don't kill us, for we have stores hidden in the field of wheat and of barley and of oil and of honey. So he stopped and didn't kill them among their brothers. Now the pit in which Ishmael cast all the dead bodies of the men whom he had killed by the side of Gedaliah, this was that which Asa the king had made for fear of Baasha, king of Israel. Ishmael, the son of Nethaniah, filled it with those who were killed. Then Ishmael carried away captive all of the people who were left in Mizpah, even the king's daughters, and all the people who remained in Mizpah, whom Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, had committed to Gedaliah, the son of Ahikam. Ishmael, the son of Nephaniah, carried them away captive and departed to go over to the children of Ammon. But when Johanan, the son of Korea, and all the captains of the forces who were with him, heard of all the evil that Ishmael, the son of Nephaniah, had done, then they took all the men and went to fight with Ishmael, the son of Nethaniah. 
and found him by the great waters that are in Gibeon. Now when all the people who were with Ishmael saw Johanan the son of Korea, and all the captains of the forces who were with him, then they were glad. So all the people who Ishmael had carried away captive from Mizpah turned about and came back, and went to Johanan the son of Korea. But Ishmael the son of Nethaniah escaped from Johanan with eight men, and went to the children of Ammon. Then Johanan the son of Korea, and all the captains of the forces who were with him, took all the remnant of the people whom he had recovered from Ishmael the son of Nethaniah, from Mizpah, after he had killed Gedaliah, the son of Ahikam, the men of war, with the women, the children, and the eunuchs, whom he had brought back from Gibeon. They departed and lived in Gareth Kimham, which is by Bethlehem, to go to enter into Egypt because of the Chaldeans, for they were afraid of them, because Ishmael, the son of Nethaniah, had killed Gedaliah, the son of Ahikam whom the king of Babylon made governor over the land. Chapter 42 Then all the captains of the forces, and Johanan the son of Korea, and Jezaniah the son of Hoshea, and all the people from the least even to the greatest came near, and said to Jeremiah the prophet, Please let our supplication be presented before you, and pray for us to Yahweh your God, even for all this remnant. For we are left but a few of many, as your eyes see us, that Yahweh your God may show us the way in which we should walk, and the things that we should do. Then Jeremiah the prophet said to them, I have heard you. Behold, I will pray to Yahweh your God according to your words, and it will happen that whatever thing Yahweh answers you, I will declare it to you. I will keep nothing back from you. Then they said to Jeremiah, May Yahweh be a true and faithful witness among us, if we don't do according to all the word with which Yahweh your God sends you to tell us. Whether it is good or whether it is bad, we will obey the voice of Yahweh our God, to whom we send you, that it may be well with us when we obey the voice of Yahweh our God. After ten days, Yahweh's word came to Jeremiah. Then he called Johanan, the son of Korea, and all the captains of the forces who were with him, and all the people, from the least even to the greatest, and said to them, Yahweh, the God of Israel, to whom you sent me to present your supplication before him, says, If you will still live in this land, then I will build you and not pull you down and I will plant you, and not pluck you up. For I grieve over the distress that I have brought on you. Don't be afraid of the king of Babylon, of whom you are afraid. Don't be afraid of him, says Yahweh, for I am with you to save you, and to deliver you from his hand. I will grant you mercy, that he may have mercy on you, and cause you to return to your own land. But if you say, We will not dwell in this land, so that you don't obey Yahweh your God's voice, saying, No, but we will go into the land of Egypt, where we will see no war, nor hear the sound of the trumpet, nor have hunger of bread, and there will we dwell. Now therefore, hear Yahweh's word, O remnant of Judah. Yahweh of armies, the God of Israel, says, if you indeed set your faces to enter into Egypt and go to live there, then it will happen that the sword which you fear will overtake you there in the land of Egypt, and the famine about which you are afraid will follow close behind you there in Egypt, and you will die there. So will it be with all the men who set their faces to go into Egypt to live there. They will die by the sword, by the famine, and by the pestilence. None of them will remain or escape from the evil that I will bring on them. For Yahweh of armies, the God of Israel, says, As my anger and my wrath has been poured out on the inhabitants of Jerusalem, so my wrath will be poured out on you, 
when you enter into Egypt, and you will be an object of horror, an astonishment, a curse, and a reproach, and you will see this place no more. Yahweh has spoken concerning you, remnant of Judah. Don't go into Egypt. Know certainly that I have testified to you today, for you have dealt deceitfully against your own souls. For you sent me to Yahweh your God, saying, Pray for us to Yahweh our God, and according to all that Yahweh our God says, so declare to us, and we will do it. I have declared it to you today, but you have not obeyed Yahweh your God's voice in anything for which he has sent me to you. Now therefore, know certainly that you will die by the sword, by the famine, and by the pestilence in the place where you desire to go to live there. Chapter 43 When Jeremiah had finished speaking to all the people, all the words of Yahweh their God, with which Yahweh their God had sent him to them, even all these words. Then Azariah, the son of Hoshea, Johanan, the son of Korea, and all the proud men spoke, saying to Jeremiah, You speak falsely. Yahweh our God has not sent you to say, You shall not go into Egypt to live there. But Barak, the son of Neriah, has turned you against us, to deliver us into the hand of the Chaldeans, that they may put us to death and carry us away captive to Babylon. So Johanan, the son of Korea, and all the captains of the forces, and all the people, didn't obey Yahweh's voice to dwell in the land of Judah. But Johanan, the son of Korea, and all the captains of the forces, took all the remnant of Judah, who had returned from all the nations where they had been driven, to live in the land of Judah, the men and the women, and the children, and the king's daughters, and every person who Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, had left with Gedaliah, the son of Ahikam, the son of Shaphan, and Jeremiah the prophet, and Barak, the son of Neriah. And they came into the land of Egypt, for they didn't obey Yahweh's voice, and they came to Tapanes. Then Yahweh's word came to Jeremiah in Tapanes, saying, Take great stones in your hand, and hide them in mortar in the brickwork, which is at the entry of Pharaoh's house in Tapanes, in the sight of the men of Judah, and tell them, Yahweh of armies, the God of Israel says, Behold, I will send and take Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant, and will set his throne on these stones that I have hidden, and he will spread his royal pavilion over them. He will come and will strike the land of Egypt, such as are for death will be put to death and such as are for captivity, to captivity, and such as are for the sword, to the sword. I will kindle a fire in the houses of the gods of Egypt. He will burn them, and carry them away captive. He will array himself with the land of Egypt, as a shepherd puts on his garment, and he will go out from there in peace. He will also break the pillars of Beth Shemesh, that is in the land of Egypt, and he will burn the houses of the gods of Egypt with fire. Chapter 44 The word that came to Jeremiah concerning all the Jews who lived in the land of Egypt, who lived at Megdal, and at Tapanes, and at Memphis, and in the country of Pathras, saying, Yahweh of armies, the God of Israel, says, You have seen all the evil that I brought on Jerusalem and on all the cities of Judah. Behold, today they are a desolation, and no man dwells in them, because of their wickedness, which they have committed to provoke me to anger, in that they went to burn incense to serve other gods that they didn't know, neither they nor you, nor your fathers, 
However, I sent to you all my servants, the prophets, rising up early and sending them, saying, Oh, don't do this abominable thing that I hate. But they didn't listen and didn't incline their ear. They didn't turn from their wickedness to stop burning incense to other gods. Therefore, my wrath and my anger was poured out and was kindled in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem. And they are wasted and desolate as it is today. Therefore now, Yahweh, the God of armies, the God of Israel, says, Why do you commit great evil against your own souls? To cut off from yourselves man and woman, infant and nursing child, out of the middle of Judah, to leave yourselves no one remaining, in that you provoke me to anger with the works of your hands, burning incense to other gods in the land of Egypt, where you have gone to live that you may be cut off, and that you may be a curse and a reproach among all the nations of the earth. Have you forgotten the wickedness of your fathers, and the wickedness of the kings of Judah, and the wickedness of their wives, and your own wickedness, and the wickedness of your wives, which they committed in the land of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem? They are not humbled even to this day, neither have they feared, nor walked in my law, nor in my statutes, that I set before you and before your fathers. Therefore, Yahweh of armies, the God of Israel, says, Behold, I will set my face against you for evil, even to cut off all Judah. I will take the remnant of Judah that have set their faces to go into the land of Egypt to live there, and they will all be consumed. They will fall in the land of Egypt. They will be consumed by the sword and by the famine. They will die from the least even to the greatest by the sword and by the famine. They will be an object of horror, an astonishment, and a curse, and a reproach. For I will punish those who dwell in the land of Egypt as I have punished Jerusalem by the sword, by the famine, and by the pestilence, so that none of the remnant of Judah who have gone into the land of Egypt to live there will escape or be left to return into the land of Judah, to which they have a desire to return to dwell there. For no one will return except those who will escape. Then all the men who knew that their wives burned incense to other gods, and all the women who stood by, a great assembly, even all the people who lived in the land of Egypt, in Pathros, answered Jeremiah, saying, As for the word that you have spoken to us in Yahweh's name, we will not listen to you, but we will certainly perform every word that has gone out of our mouth to burn incense to the queen of the sky and to pour out drink offerings to her, as we have done, we and our fathers, our kings and our princes in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem. For then had we plenty of food and were well and saw no evil. But since we stopped burning incense to the queen of the sky and pouring out drink offerings to her, we have lacked all things and have been consumed by the sword and by the famine. When we burned incense to the queen of the sky and poured out drink offerings to her, did we make her cakes to worship her and pour out drink offerings to her without our husbands? Then Jeremiah said to all the people, to the men and to the women, even to all the people who had given him an answer, saying, The incense that you burned in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem, you and your fathers, your kings and your princes and the people of the land, didn't Yahweh remember them and didn't it come into his mind? Thus Yahweh could no longer bear it because of the evil of your doings and because of the abominations which you have committed. Therefore, your land has become a desolation and an astonishment and a curse without inhabitant as it is today because you have burned incense, and because you have sinned against Yahweh 
and have not obeyed Yahweh's voice, nor walked in his law, nor in his statutes, nor in his testimonies. Therefore, this evil has happened to you, as it is today. Moreover, Jeremiah said to all the people, including all the women, Hear Yahweh's word, all Judah who are in the land of Egypt. Yahweh of armies, the God of Israel, says, You and your wives have both spoken with your mouths, and with your hands have fulfilled it, saying, We will surely perform our vows that we have vowed, to burn incense to the queen of the sky, and to pour out drink offerings to her. Establish then your vows, and perform your vows. Therefore, hear Yahweh's word, all Judah who dwell in the land of Egypt. Behold, I have sworn by my great name, says Yahweh, that my name will no more be named in the mouth of any man of Judah in all the land of Egypt, saying, As the Lord Yahweh lives. Behold, I watch over them for evil and not for good, and all the men of Judah who are in the land of Egypt will be consumed by the sword and by the famine until they are all gone. Those who escape the sword will return out of the land of Egypt into the land of Judah, few in number. All the remnant of Judah who have gone into the land of Egypt to live there will know whose word will stand, mine or theirs. This will be the sign to you, says Yahweh, that I will punish you in this place, that you may know that my words will surely stand against you for evil. Yahweh says, Behold, I will give Pharaoh Hophra, king of Egypt, into the hand of his enemies, and into the hand of those who seek his life, as I gave Zedekiah, king of Judah, into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, who was his enemy, and sought his life. Chapter 45 the message that Jeremiah the prophet spoke to Barak, the son of Neriah, when he wrote these words in a book at the mouth of Jeremiah, in the fourth year of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, saying, Yahweh, the God of Israel, says to you, Barak, you said, Woe is me now, for Yahweh has added sorrow to my pain. I am weary with my groaning and I find no rest. You shall tell him, Yahweh says, Behold, that which I have built I will break down, and that which I have planted I will pluck up, and this in the whole land. Do you seek great things for yourself? Don't seek them, for behold, I will bring evil on all flesh, says Yahweh but I will let you escape with your life wherever you go. Chapter 46 Yahweh's Word Which Came to Jeremiah the Prophet Concerning the Nations Of Egypt Concerning the army of Pharaoh Necho, king of Egypt, which was by the river Euphrates in Carchemish, which Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, struck in the fourth year of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah. Prepare the buckler and shield, and draw near to battle. Harness the horses, and get up, you horsemen, and stand up with your helmets. Polish the spears, put on the coats of mail. Why have I seen it? They are dismayed and turned backward. Their mighty ones are beaten down have fled in haste, and don't look back. Terror is on every side, says Yahweh. Don't let the swift flee away, nor the mighty man escape. In the north, by the river Euphrates, they have stumbled and fallen. Who is this who rises up like the Nile, whose waters toss themselves like the rivers? Egypt rises up like the Nile and his waters toss themselves like the rivers. He says, I will rise up, I will cover the earth, 
I will destroy cities and its inhabitants. Go up, you horses. Rage, you chariots. Let the mighty men go out. Cush and Put, who handle the shield, and Ludum, who handle and bend the bow. For that day is of the Lord, Yahweh of armies, a day of vengeance, that he may avenge himself of his adversaries. The sword will devour and be satiated, and will drink its fill of their blood. For the Lord, Yahweh of armies, has a sacrifice in the north country by the river Euphrates. Go up into Gilead and take balm, virgin daughter of Egypt. You use many medicines in vain. There is no healing for you. The nations have heard of your shame, and the earth is full of your cry. For the mighty man has stumbled against the mighty. They both fall together. The word that Yahweh spoke to Jeremiah the prophet, how that Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, should come and strike the land of Egypt. Declare in Egypt, publish in Migdal, and publish in Memphis and in Toponies. Say, stand up and prepare, for the sword has devoured around you. Why are your strong ones swept away? They didn't stand, because Yahweh pushed them. He made many to stumble. Yes, they fell on one another. They said, Arise, let's go again to our own people and to the land of our birth. From the oppressing sword, they cried there, Pharaoh, king of Egypt, is but a noise. He has let the appointed time pass by. As I live, says the king, whose name is Yahweh of armies, surely like Tabor among the mountains and like Carmel by the sea, so he will come. You, daughter, who dwells in Egypt, furnish yourself to go into captivity, for Memphis will become a desolation and will be burned up without inhabitant. Egypt is a very beautiful heifer, but destruction out of the north has come. It has come. Also, her hired men in the middle of her are like calves of the stall, for they also are turned back. They have fled away together. They didn't stand, for the day of their calamity has come on them, the time of their visitation. Its sound will go like the serpent, for they will march with an army and come against her with axes as woodcutters. They will cut down her forest, says Yahweh, though it can't be searched, because they are more than the locusts and are innumerable. The daughter of Egypt will be disappointed. She will be delivered into the hand of the people of the north. Yahweh of armies, the God of Israel, says, Behold, I will punish Ammon of No, and Pharaoh, and Egypt, with her gods, and her kings, even Pharaoh, and those who trust in him. I will deliver them into the hand of those who seek their lives, and into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and into the hand of his servants. Afterwards it will be inhabited, as in the days of old, says Yahweh. But don't you be afraid, Jacob, my servant. Don't be dismayed, Israel. For, behold, I will save you from afar, and your offspring from the land of their captivity. Jacob will return and will be quiet and at ease. No one will make him afraid. Don't be afraid, O Jacob, my servant, says Yahweh, for I am with you. For I will make a full end of all the nations where I have driven you, but I will not make a full end of you. But I will correct you in measure, and will in no way leave you unpunished. Chapter 47 Yahweh's word that came to Jeremiah the prophet concerning the Philistines before Pharaoh struck Gaza. Yahweh says, Behold, waters rise up out of the north and will become an overflowing stream 
and will overflow the land and all that is therein, the city and those who dwell therein. The men will cry, and all the inhabitants of the land will wail at the noise of the stamping of the hoofs of his strong ones, at the rushing of his chariots, at the rumbling of his wheels. The fathers don't look back to their children for feebleness of hands because of the day that comes to destroy all the Philistines, to cut off from Tyre and Sidon every helper who remains. For Yahweh will destroy the Philistines, the remnant of the Isle of Kaphtor. Baldness has come on Gaza. Ashkelon is brought to nothing, the remnant of their valley. How long will you cut yourself, you sword of Yahweh, how long will it be before you are quiet? Put yourself back into your scabbard. Rest and be still. How can you be quiet, since Yahweh has given you a command? Against Ashkelon and against the seashore. There has he appointed it. Chapter 48 Of Moab Yahweh of Armies the God of Israel says, Woe to Nebo, for it is laid waste. Kiriathaim is disappointed. It is taken. Mizgab is put to shame and broken down. The praise of Moab is no more. In Heshbon they have devised evil against her. Come, let's cut her off from being a nation. You also, madman, will be brought to silence. The sword will pursue you. The sound of a cry from Horonaim, desolation and great destruction. Moab is destroyed. Her little ones have caused a cry to be heard, for they will go up by the ascent of Luhith with continual weeping. For at the descent of Horonaim, they have heard the distress of the cry of destruction. Flee, save your lives. Be like the juniper bush in the wilderness. For, because you have trusted in your works and in your treasures, you also will be taken. Chemosh will go out into captivity, his priests and his princes together. The destroyer will come on every city, and no city will escape. The valley also will perish, and the plain will be destroyed, as Yahweh has spoken. Give wings to Moab, that she may fly and get herself away, and her cities will become a desolation without anyone to dwell in them. Cursed is he who does the work of Yahweh negligently, and cursed is he who keeps back his sword from blood. Moab has been at ease from his youth, and he has settled on his lees, and has not been emptied from vessel to vessel neither has he gone into captivity. Therefore, his taste remains in him, and his scent is not changed. Therefore, behold, the days come, says Yahweh, that I will send to him those who pour off, and they will pour him off, and they will empty his vessels, and break their containers in pieces. Moab will be ashamed of Chemosh, as the house of Israel was ashamed of Bethel their confidence. How do you say we are mighty men and valiant men for the war? Moab is laid waste, and they have gone up into his cities, and his chosen young men have gone down to the slaughter, says the king, whose name is Yahweh of armies. The calamity of Moab is near to come, and his affliction hurries fast. All you who are around him, Bemoan him, and all you who know his name, say, How the strong staff is broken, the beautiful rod. You, daughter who dwells in Dibon, come down from your glory and sit in thirst, for the destroyer of Moab has come up against you. He has destroyed your strongholds. Inhabitant of Aurora, stand by the way and watch. Ask him who flees and her who escapes. Say, what has been done? Moab is disappointed, for it is broken down. 
wail and cry. Tell it by the Arnon that Moab is laid waste. Judgment has come on the plain country, on Holon, on Jaza, on Mephaeth, on Dibon, on Nebo, on Beth Diblatham, on Kiriathaim, on Beth Gamel, on Beth Meon, on Kiriath, on Basra, and on all the cities of the land of Moab, far or near. The horn of Moab is cut off, and his arm is broken, says Yahweh. Make him drunken, for he magnified himself against Yahweh. Moab will wallow in his vomit, and he also will be in derision. For wasn't Israel a derision to you? Was he found among thieves? For as often as you speak of him, you shake your head. You inhabitants of Moab, leave the cities and dwell in the rock. Be like the dove that makes her nest over the mouth of the abyss. We have heard of the pride of Moab. He is very proud in his loftiness, his pride, his arrogance, and the arrogance of his heart. I know his wrath, says Yahweh, that it is nothing. His boastings have done nothing. Therefore, I will wail for Moab. Yes, I will cry out for all Moab. They will mourn for the men of Kir Hiris, with more than the weeping of Jazer. I will weep for you, vine of Sibma. Your branches passed over the sea. They reached even to the sea of Jazer. The destroyer has fallen on your summer fruits and on your vintage. Gladness and joy is taken away from the fruitful field and from the land of Moab. I have caused wine to cease from the wine presses. No one will tread with shouting. The shouting will be no shouting. From the cry of Heshbon, even to Eliela, even to Jahaz, they have uttered their voice. From Zoar, even to Horonaim, to Eglath Shilishia, for the waters of Nimrim will also become desolate. Moreover, I will cause to cease in Moab, says Yahweh, him who offers in the high place, and him who burns incense to his gods. Therefore, my heart sounds for Moab like pipes, and my heart sounds like pipes for the men of Kirhiris. Therefore, the abundance that he has gotten has perished, for every head is bald, and every beard clipped. There are cuttings on all the hands, and sackcloth on the waist. On all the housetops of Moab, and in its streets, there is lamentation everywhere. For I have broken Moab like a vessel in which no one delights, says Yahweh. How it is broken down, how they wail, how Moab has turned the back with shame so will Moab become a derision and a terror to all who are around him. For Yahweh says, Behold, he will fly as an eagle and will spread out his wings against Moab. Kiriath is taken and the strongholds are seized. The heart of the mighty men of Moab at that day will be as the heart of a woman in her pangs. Moab will be destroyed from being a people because he has magnified himself against Yahweh. Terror, the pit, and the snare are on you, inhabitant of Moab, says Yahweh. He who flees from the terror will fall into the pit, and he who gets up out of the pit will be taken in the snare. For I will bring on him, even on Moab, the year of their visitation, says Yahweh. Those who fled stand without strength under the shadow of Heshbon. For a fire has gone out of Heshbon, and a flame from the middle of Sihon, and has devoured the corner of Moab, and the crown of the head of the tumultuous ones. Woe to you, O Moab! The people of Chemosh are undone, for your sons are taken away captive, and your daughters into captivity. Yet I will reverse the captivity of Moab in the latter days, says Yahweh. Thus far is the judgment of Moab. Chapter 49
of the children of Ammon. Yahweh says, Has Israel no sons? Has he no heir? Why then does Malcolm possess Gad, and his people dwell in its cities? Therefore, behold, the days come, says Yahweh, that I will cause an alarm of war to be heard against Rabbah of the children of Ammon, and it will become a desolate heap, and her daughters will be burned with fire. Then Israel will possess those who possessed him, says Yahweh. Well, Heshbon, for Ai is laid waste. Cry, you daughters of Rabbah, clothe yourself in sackcloth, lament, and run back and forth among the fences. For Malcolm will go into captivity, his priests and his princes together. Why do you boast in the valleys, your flowing valley, backsliding daughter? You trusted in her treasures, saying, Who will come to me? Behold, I will bring a terror on you, says the Lord, Yahweh of armies, from all who are around you. All of you will be driven completely out, and there will be no one to gather together the fugitives. But afterward, I will reverse the captivity of the children of Ammon, says Yahweh. Of Edom, Yahweh of armies says, Is wisdom no more in Teman? Has counsel perished from the prudent? Has their wisdom vanished? Flee, turn back, dwell in the depths, inhabitants of Dedan, for I will bring the calamity of Esau on him when I visit him. If grape gatherers came to you, would they not leave some gleaning grapes? If thieves came by night, wouldn't they steal until they had enough? But I have made Esau bare. I have uncovered his secret places, and he will not be able to hide himself. His offspring is destroyed with his brothers and his neighbors, and he is no more. Leave your fatherless children. I will preserve them alive. Let your widows trust in me. For Yahweh says, Behold, they to whom it didn't pertain to drink of the cup will certainly drink. And are you he who will altogether go unpunished? You won't go unpunished, but you will surely drink. For I have sworn by myself, says Yahweh, that Basra will become an astonishment, a reproach, a waste, and a curse. All its cities will be perpetual wastes. I have heard news from Yahweh, and an ambassador is sent among the nations, saying, Gather yourselves together. Come against her, rise up to the battle. For, behold, I have made you small among the nations and despised among men. As for your terror, the pride of your heart has deceived you, O you who dwell in the clefts of the rock, who hold the height of the hill. Though you should make your nest as high as the eagle, I will bring you down from there, says Yahweh. Edom will become an astonishment. Everyone who passes by it will be astonished and will hiss at all its plagues. As in the overthrow of Sodom and Gomorrah and its neighbor cities, says Yahweh, no man will dwell there, neither will any son of man live therein. Behold, he will come up like a lion from the pride of the Jordan against the strong habitation for I will suddenly make them run away from it, and whoever is chosen, I will appoint him over it. For who is like me? Who will appoint me a time? Who is the shepherd who will stand before me? Therefore, hear the counsel of Yahweh that he has taken against Edom, and his purposes that he has purposed against the inhabitants of Teman. Surely they will drag them away, the little ones of the flock, Surely he will make their habitation desolate over them. The earth trembles at the noise of their fall. There is a cry, the noise which is heard in the Red Sea. Behold, he will come up and fly as the eagle and spread out his wings against Basra. The heart of the mighty men of Edom at that day will be as the heart of a woman in her pangs.
of Damascus. Hamath is confounded, and Arpad, for they have heard evil news. They have melted away. There is sorrow on the sea. It can't be quiet. Damascus has grown feeble. She turns herself to flee, and trembling has seized her. Anguish and sorrows have taken hold of her, as of a woman in travail. How is the city of praise not forsaken, the city of my joy? Therefore her young men will fall in her streets, and all the men of war will be brought to silence in that day, says Yahweh of armies. I will kindle a fire in the wall of Damascus, and it will devour the palaces of Ben-Hadad, of Kedar, and of the kingdoms of Hazor, which Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, struck. Yahweh says, Arise, go up to Kedar, and destroy the children of the east. They will take their tents and their flocks. They will carry away for themselves their curtains, all their vessels, and their camels. And they will cry to them, Terror on every side, flee, wander far off. Dwell in the depths, you inhabitants of Hazor, says Yahweh. For Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, has taken counsel against you, and has conceived a purpose against you. Arise, go up to a nation that is at ease, that dwells without care, says Yahweh, that has neither gates nor bars, that dwells alone. Their camels will be a booty, and the multitude of their livestock a plunder. I will scatter to all winds those who have the corners of their beards cut off, and I will bring their calamity from every side of them, says Yahweh. Hazor will be a dwelling place of jackals, a desolation forever. No man will dwell there, neither will any son of man live therein. Yahweh's word that came to Jeremiah the prophet concerning Elam, in the beginning of the reign of Zedekiah, king of Judah, saying, Yahweh of armies says, Behold, I will break the bow of Elam, the chief of their might. I will bring on Elam the four winds from the four quarters of the sky, and will scatter them toward all those winds. There will be no nation where the outcasts of Elam will not come. I will cause Elam to be dismayed before their enemies and before those who seek their life. I will bring evil on them, even my fierce anger, says Yahweh. And I will send the sword after them until I have consumed them. I will set my throne in Elam and will destroy from there king and princes, says Yahweh. But it will happen in the latter days that I will reverse the captivity of Elam, says Yahweh. Chapter 50 The word that Yahweh spoke concerning Babylon, concerning the land of the Chaldeans, by Jeremiah the prophet. Declare among the nations, and publish, and set up a standard. Publish, and don't conceal. Say, Babylon has been taken, Baal has disappointed, Merodach is dismayed, her images are disappointed, her idols are dismayed. For a nation comes up out of the north against her, which will make her land desolate, and no one will dwell in it. They have fled, they are gone, both man and animal. In those days and in that time, says Yahweh, the children of Israel will come, they and the children of Judah together. They will go on their way, weeping, and will seek Yahweh their God. They will inquire concerning Zion with their faces turned toward it, saying, Come and join yourselves to Yahweh in an everlasting covenant that will not be forgotten. My people have been lost sheep. Their shepherds have caused them to go astray. They have turned them away on the mountains. They have gone from mountain to hill. They have forgotten their resting place. All who found them 
have devoured them. Their adversaries said, We are not guilty because they have sinned against Yahweh, the habitation of righteousness, even Yahweh, the hope of their fathers. Flee out of the middle of Babylon. Go out of the land of the Chaldeans and be as the male goats before the flocks. For, behold, I will stir up and cause to come up against Babylon a company of great nations from the north country, and they will set themselves in array against her. She will be taken from there. Their arrows will be as of an expert mighty man. None of them will return in vain. Chaldea will be a prey. All who prey on her will be satisfied, says Yahweh. Because you are glad, because you rejoice, O you who plunder my heritage, because you are wanton as a heifer that treads out the grain, and nay as strong horses, your mother will be utterly disappointed. She who bore you will be confounded. Behold, she will be the least of the nations, a wilderness, a dry land, and a desert. Because of Yahweh's wrath, she won't be inhabited, but she will be wholly desolate. Everyone who goes by Babylon will be astonished and hiss at all her plagues. Set yourselves in array against Babylon all around. All you who bend the bow, shoot at her. Spare no arrows, for she has sinned against Yahweh. Shout against her all around. She has submitted herself. Her bulwarks have fallen. Her walls have been thrown down, for it is the vengeance of Yahweh. Take vengeance on her, as she has done, do to her. Cut off the sore from Babylon, and him who handles the sickle in the time of harvest. For fear of the oppressing sword, they will each return to their own people, and they will each flee to their own land. Israel is a hunted sheep. The lions have driven him away. First, the king of Assyria devoured him. And now, at last, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, has broken his bones. Therefore, Yahweh of armies, the God of Israel, says, Behold, I will punish the king of Babylon and his land, as I have punished the king of Assyria. I will bring Israel again to his pasture, and he will feed on Carmel and Bashan. His soul will be satisfied on the hills of Ephraim and in Gilead. In those days and in that time, says Yahweh, the iniquity of Israel will be sought for, and there will be none. Also the sins of Judah, and they won't be found, for I will pardon them whom I leave as a remnant. Go up against the land of Marathaim, even against it, and against the inhabitants of Pekod. Kill and utterly destroy after them, says Yahweh, and do according to all that I have commanded you. A sound of battle is in the land, and of great destruction. How the hammer of the whole earth is cut apart and broken. How Babylon has become a desolation among the nations. I have laid a snare for you, and you are also taken, Babylon, and you weren't aware. You are found and also caught, because you have fought against Yahweh. Yahweh has opened his armory and has brought out the weapons of his indignation. For the Lord, Yahweh of armies, has a work to do in the land of the Chaldeans. Come against her from the farthest border, Open her storehouses, cast her up as heaps, destroy her utterly, let nothing of her be left, kill all her bulls, let them go down to the slaughter, woe to them, for their day has come, the time of their visitation. Listen to those who flee and escape out of the land of Babylon, to declare in Zion the vengeance of Yahweh our God the vengeance of his temple. Call together the archers against Babylon, all those who bend the bow, 
encamp against her all around. Let none of it escape. Pay her back according to her work, according to all that she has done, do to her. For she has been proud against Yahweh, against the Holy One of Israel. Therefore, her young men will fall in her streets. All her men of war will be brought to silence in that day, says Yahweh. Behold, I am against you, you proud one, says the Lord, Yahweh of armies. For your day has come, the time that I will visit you. The proud one will stumble and fall, and no one will raise him up. I will kindle a fire in his cities, and it will devour all who are around him. Yahweh of armies says, The children of Israel and the children of Judah are oppressed together. All who took them captive hold them fast. They refuse to let them go. Their Redeemer is strong. Yahweh of armies is his name. He will thoroughly plead their cause that he may give rest to the earth and disquiet the inhabitants of Babylon. A sword is on the Chaldeans, says Yahweh, and on the inhabitants of Babylon, on her princes and on her wise men. A sword is on the boasters, and they will become fools. A sword is on her mighty men, and they will be dismayed. A sword is on their horses, on their chariots, and on all the mixed people who are in the middle of her, and they will become as women. A sword is on her treasures, and they will be robbed. A drought is on her waters, and they will be dried up. For it is a land of engraved images, and they are mad over idols. Therefore the wild animals of the desert with the wolves will dwell there. The ostriches will dwell therein, and it will be inhabited no more forever. Neither will it be lived in from generation to generation, as when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah and its neighbor cities, says Yahweh. So no man will dwell there, neither will any son of man live therein. Behold, a people comes from the north, and a great nation and many kings will be stirred up from the uttermost parts of the earth. They take up bow and spear, they are cruel and have no mercy. Their voice roars like the sea. They ride on horses, every one set in array, as a man to the battle. Against you, daughter of Babylon, the king of Babylon has heard the news of them, and his hands become feeble. Anguish has taken hold of him, pains as of a woman in labor. Behold, the enemy will come up like a lion from the pride of the Jordan against the strong habitation, for I will suddenly make them run away from it. Whoever is chosen, I will appoint him over it. For who is like me? Who will appoint me a time? Who is the shepherd who can stand before me? Therefore, hear the counsel of Yahweh that he has taken against Babylon and his purposes, that he has purposed against the land of the Chaldeans. Surely they will drag them away, even the little ones of the flock. Surely he will make their habitation desolate over them. At the noise of the taking of Babylon, the earth trembles, and the cry is heard among the nations. Chapter 51 Yahweh says, Behold, I will raise up against Babylon and against those who dwell in Lebkamai, a destroying wind. I will send to Babylon strangers who will winnow her. They will empty her land, for in the day of trouble they will be against her all around. Against him who bends, let the archer bend his bow also against him who lifts himself up in his coat of mail. Don't spare her young men. Utterly destroy all her army. They will fall down slain in the land of the Chaldeans and thrust through in her streets. 
For Israel is not forsaken, nor Judah, by his God, by Yahweh of armies, though their land is full of guilt against the Holy One of Israel. Flee out of the middle of Babylon. Everyone save his own life. Don't be cut off in her iniquity, for it is the time of Yahweh's vengeance. He will render to her a recompense. Babylon has been a golden cup in Yahweh's hand, who made all the earth drunk. The nations have drunk of her wine. Therefore, the nations have gone mad. Babylon has suddenly fallen and been destroyed. Wail for her. Take balm for her pain. Perhaps she may be healed. We would have healed Babylon, but she is not healed. Forsake her, and let's each go into his own country. For her judgment reaches to heaven, and is lifted up even to the skies. Yahweh has produced our righteousness. Come, and let's declare in Zion the work of Yahweh our God. Make the arrows sharp. Hold the shields firmly. Yahweh has stirred up the spirit of the kings of the Medes, because his purpose is against Babylon to destroy it. For it is the vengeance of Yahweh, the vengeance of his temple. Set up a standard against the walls of Babylon. Make the watch strong. Set the watchmen and prepare the ambushes. For Yahweh has both purposed and done that which he spoke concerning the inhabitants of Babylon. You who dwell on many waters, abundant in treasures, your end has come, the measure of your covetousness. Yahweh of armies has sworn by himself, saying, Surely I will fill you with men as with the canker worm, and they will lift up a shout against you. He has made the earth by his power. He has established the world by his wisdom. By his understanding, he has stretched out the heavens. When he utters his voice, there is a roar of waters in the heavens, and he causes the vapors to ascend from the ends of the earth. He makes lightning for the rain and brings the wind out of his treasuries. Every man has become brutish without knowledge. Every goldsmith is disappointed by his image, for his molten image is falsehood, and there is no breath in them. They are vanity, a work of delusion. In the time of their visitation, they will perish. The portion of Jacob is not like these, for he is the former of all things, including the tribe of his inheritance. Yahweh of armies is his name. You are my battle axe and weapons of war. With you I will break the nations into pieces. With you I will destroy kingdoms. With you I will break in pieces the horse and his rider. With you I will break in pieces the chariot and him who rides therein. With you I will break in pieces man and woman. With you I will break in pieces the old man and the youth. With you I will break in pieces the young man and the virgin. With you I will break in pieces the shepherd and his flock. With you I will break in pieces the farmer and his yoke. With you I will break in pieces governors and deputies. I will render to Babylon and to all the inhabitants of Chaldea all their evil that they have done in Zion in your sight, says Yahweh. Behold, I am against you, destroying mountain, says Yahweh, which destroys all the earth. I will stretch out my hand on you, roll you down from the rocks, and will make you a burned mountain. They won't take a cornerstone from you, nor a stone for foundations. But you will be desolate forever, says Yahweh. Set up a standard in the land. Blow the trumpet among the nations. Prepare the nations against her. Call together against her the kingdoms of Ararat, Menai, and Ashkenaz. Appoint a marshal against her. Cause the horses to come up 
as the rough canker worm. Prepare against her the nations, the kings of the Medes, its governors, and all its deputies, and all the land of their dominion. The land trembles and is in pain, for the purposes of Yahweh against Babylon stand, to make the land of Babylon a desolation without inhabitant. The mighty men of Babylon have stopped fighting. They remain in their strongholds. Their might has failed. They have become as women. Her dwelling places are set on fire. Her bars are broken. One runner will run to meet another, and one messenger to meet another, to show the king of Babylon that his city is taken on every quarter. So the passages are seized. They have burned the reeds with fire. The men of war are frightened. For Yahweh of armies, the God of Israel, says, The daughter of Babylon is like a threshing floor at the time when it is trodden. Yet a little while, and the time of harvest comes for her. Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, has devoured me. He has crushed me. He has made me an empty vessel. He has, like a monster, swallowed me up. He has filled his mouth with my delicacies. He has cast me out. May the violence done to me and to my flesh be on Babylon, the inhabitant of Zion will say. And may my blood be on the inhabitants of Chaldea, will Jerusalem say. Therefore, Yahweh says, Behold, I will plead your cause, and take vengeance for you. I will dry up her sea, and make her fountain dry. Babylon will become heaps, a dwelling place for jackals, an astonishment and a hissing without inhabitant. They will roar together like young lions. They will growl as lions' cubs. When they are heated, I will make their feast, and I will make them drunk, that they may rejoice and sleep a perpetual sleep, and not wake up, says Yahweh. I will bring them down like lambs to the slaughter, like rams with male goats. How Shishak is taken, how the praise of the whole earth ceased, how Babylon has become a desolation among the nations. The sea has come up on Babylon. She is covered with the multitude of its waves. Her cities have become a desolation, a dry land and a desert, a land in which no man dwells, no son of man passes by it. I will execute judgment on Bel in Babylon, and I will bring out of his mouth that which he has swallowed up. The nations will not flow any more to him. Yes, the wall of Babylon will fall. My people, Go away from the middle of her, and each of you save yourselves from Yahweh's fierce anger. Don't let your heart faint. Don't fear for the news that will be heard in the land, for news will come one year, and after that in another year news will come, and violence in the land, ruler against ruler. Therefore, behold, the days come that I will execute judgment on the engraved images of Babylon, and her whole land will be confounded. All her slain will fall in the middle of her. Then the heavens and the earth and all that is therein will sing for joy over Babylon, for the destroyers will come to her from the north, says Yahweh. As Babylon has caused the slain of Israel to fall, so the slain of all the land will fall at Babylon. You who have escaped the sword, go, don't stand still. Remember Yahweh from afar, and let Jerusalem come into your mind. We are confounded, because we have heard reproach. Confusion has covered our faces, for strangers have come into the sanctuaries of Yahweh's house. Therefore, behold, the days come says Yahweh, that I will execute judgment on her engraved images, and through all her land the wounded will groan. Though Babylon should mount up to the sky, 
and though she should fortify the height of her strength, yet destroyers will come to her from me, says Yahweh. The sound of a cry comes from Babylon, and of great destruction from the land of the Chaldeans. For Yahweh lays Babylon waste, and destroys out of her the great voice. Their waves roar like many waters, the noise of their voice is uttered. For the destroyer has come on her, even on Babylon. Her mighty men are taken, their bows are broken in pieces. For Yahweh is a God of retribution, he will surely repay. I will make her princes, her wise men, her governors, her deputies, and her mighty men drunk. They will sleep a perpetual sleep and not wake up, says the king whose name is Yahweh of armies. Yahweh of armies says, The wide walls of Babylon will be utterly overthrown. Her high gates will be burned with fire. The peoples will labor for vanity, and the nations for the fire, and they will be weary. The word which Jeremiah the prophet commanded Sariah, the son of Neriah, the son of Messiah, when he went with Zedekiah, the king of Judah, to Babylon, in the fourth year of his reign. Now Sariah was chief quartermaster. Jeremiah wrote in a book all the evil that should come on Babylon, even all these words that are written concerning Babylon. Jeremiah said to Sariah, When you come to Babylon, then see that you read all these words, and say, Yahweh, you have spoken concerning this place, to cut it off, that no one will dwell in it, neither man nor animal, but that it will be desolate forever. It will be, when you have finished reading this book, that you shall bind a stone to it, and cast it into the middle of the Euphrates. Then you shall say, Thus will Babylon sink, and will not rise again because of the evil that I will bring on her, and they will be weary. Thus far are the words of Jeremiah. Chapter 52 Zedekiah was twenty-one years old when he began to reign. He reigned eleven years in Jerusalem, and his mother's name was Hamutal, the daughter of Jeremiah of Libna. He did that which was evil in Yahweh's sight, according to all that Jehoiakim had done. For through Yahweh's anger this happened in Jerusalem and Judah, until he had cast them out from his presence. Zedekiah rebelled against the king of Babylon. In the ninth year of his reign, in the tenth month, in the tenth day of the month, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came he and all his army, against Jerusalem, and encamped against it, and they built forts against it round about. So the city was besieged to the eleventh year of King Zedekiah. In the fourth month, in the ninth day of the month, the famine was severe in the city, so that there was no bread for the people of the land. Then a breach was made in the city, and all the men of war fled, and went out of the city by night, by the way of the gate between the two walls, which was by the king's garden. Now the Chaldeans were against the city all around. The men of war went toward the Arabah, but the army of the Chaldeans pursued the king, and overtook Zedekiah in the plains of Jericho, and all his army was scattered from him. Then they took the king, and carried him up to the king of Babylon, to Riblah, in the land of Hamath, and he pronounced judgment on him. The king of Babylon killed the sons of Zedekiah before his eyes. He also killed all the princes of Judah in Riblah. He put out the eyes of Zedekiah, and the king of Babylon bound him in fetters, and carried him to Babylon and put him in prison until the day of his death. Now in the fifth month, in the tenth day of the month, 
which was the nineteenth year of King Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, who stood before the king of Babylon, came into Jerusalem. He burned Yahweh's house and the king's house and all the houses of Jerusalem, even every great house he burned with fire. All the army of the Chaldeans, who were with the captain of the guard, broke down all the walls of Jerusalem all around. Then Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, carried away captive of the poorest of the people, and the residue of the people who were left in the city, and those who fell away, who fell to the king of Babylon, and the residue of the multitude. But Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, left of the poorest of the land to be vineyard keepers and farmers. The Chaldeans broke the pillars of bronze that were in Yahweh's house, and the bases and the bronze sea that were in Yahweh's house in pieces, and carried all of their bronze to Babylon. They also took away the pots, the shovels, the snuffers, the basins, the spoons, and all the vessels of bronze with which they ministered. The captain of the guard took away the cups, the firepans, the basins, the pots, the lampstands, the spoons, and the bowls, that which was of gold in gold, and that which was of silver in silver. They took the two pillars, the one sea, and the twelve bronze bulls that were under the bases, which King Solomon had made for Yahweh's house. The bronze of all these vessels was without weight. As for the pillars, the height of the one pillar was eighteen cubits, and a line of twelve cubits encircled it, and its thickness was four fingers. It was hollow, a capital of bronze was on it, and the height of the one capital was five cubits, with network and pomegranates on the capital all around, all of bronze. And the second pillar also had like these, and pomegranates. There were ninety-six pomegranates on the sides. All the pomegranates were one hundred on the network all around. The captain of the guard took Sariah, the chief priest, and Zephaniah, the second priest, and the three keepers of the threshold. And out of the city he took an officer who was set over the men of war, and seven men of those who saw the king's face, who were found in the city, and the scribe of the captain of the army, who mustered the people of the land, and sixty men of the people of the land, who were found in the middle of the city. Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, took them, and brought them to the king of Babylon, to Ribla. The king of Babylon struck them, and put them to death at Ribla in the land of Hamath. So Judah was carried away captive out of his land. This is the number of the people whom Nebuchadnezzar carried away captive. In the seventh year, three thousand twenty-three Jews. In the eighteenth year of Nebuchadnezzar, he carried away captive from Jerusalem eight hundred thirty-two persons. In the twenty-third year of Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, carried away captive of the Jews 745 people. All the people were 4,600. In the 37th year of the captivity of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, in the 12th month, in the 25th day of the month, evil Merodach, king of Babylon, in the first year of his reign, lifted up the head of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, and released him from prison. He spoke kindly to him, and set his throne above the throne of the kings who were with him in Babylon, and changed his prison garments. Jehoiakim ate bread before him continually, all the days of his life. For his allowance, there was a continual allowance given him by the king of Babylon, every day a portion until the day of his death, all the days of his life. THE LAMENTATIONS OF JEREMIAH
Chapter 1 How the city sits solitary that was full of people. She has become as a widow who was great among the nations. She who was a princess among the provinces has become a slave. She weeps bitterly in the night. Her tears are on her cheeks. Among all her lovers, she has no one to comfort her. All her friends have dealt treacherously with her. They have become her enemies. Judah has gone into captivity because of affliction and because of great servitude. She dwells among the nations. She finds no rest. All her persecutors overtook her within the straits. The roads to Zion mourn because no one comes to the solemn assembly. All her gates are desolate, her priests sigh, her virgins are afflicted, and she herself is in bitterness. Her adversaries have become the head, her enemies prosper. For Yahweh has afflicted her for the multitude of her transgressions. Her young children have gone into captivity before the adversary. All majesty has departed from the daughter of Zion. Her princes have become like deer that find no pasture. They have gone without strength before the pursuer. Jerusalem remembers in the days of her affliction and of her miseries all her pleasant things that were from the days of old, when her people fell into the hand of the adversary, and no one helped her. The adversaries saw her, they mocked at her desolations. Jerusalem has grievously sinned. Therefore, she has become unclean. All who honored her despise her because they have seen her nakedness. Yes, she sighs and turns backward. Her filthiness was in her skirts. She didn't remember her latter end. Therefore, she has come down astoundingly. She has no comforter. See, Yahweh, my affliction, for the enemy has magnified himself. The adversary has spread out his hand on all her pleasant things, for she has seen that the nations have entered into her sanctuary, concerning whom you commanded that they should not enter into your assembly. All her people sigh. They seek bread. They have given their pleasant things for food to refresh their soul. Look, Yahweh, and see, for I have become despised. Is it nothing to you, all you who pass by? Look, and see if there is any sorrow like my sorrow, which is brought on me, with which Yahweh has afflicted me in the day of his fierce anger. From on high has he sent fire into my bones and it prevails against them. He has spread a net for my feet. He has turned me back. He has made me desolate, and I faint all day long. The yoke of my transgressions is bound by his hand. They are knit together. They have come up on my neck. He made my strength fail. The Lord has delivered me into their hands, against whom I am not able to stand. The Lord has set at nothing all my mighty men within me. He has called a solemn assembly against me to crush my young men. The Lord has trodden the virgin daughter of Judah as in a wine press. For these things I weep. My eye, my eye runs down with water, because the comforter who should refresh my soul is far from me. My children are desolate because the enemy has prevailed. Zion spreads out her hands. There is no one to comfort her. Yahweh has commanded concerning Jacob that those who are around him should be his adversaries. Jerusalem is among them as an unclean thing. Yahweh is righteous, for I have rebelled against his commandment. Please hear, all you peoples, and see my sorrow. My virgins and my young men have gone into captivity. I called for my lovers, but they deceived me. My priests and my elders gave up the spirit in the city while they sought food for themselves to refresh their souls. Look, Yahweh, 
for I am in distress. My heart is troubled. My heart turns over within me, for I have grievously rebelled. Abroad the sword bereaves. At home it is like death. They have heard that I sigh. There is no one to comfort me. All my enemies have heard of my trouble. They are glad that you have done it. You will bring the day that you have proclaimed, and they will be like me. Let all their wickedness come before you. Do to them as you have done to me for all my transgressions. For my sighs are many, and my heart is faint. Chapter 2 How has the Lord covered the daughter of Zion with a cloud in his anger? He has cast the beauty of Israel down from heaven to the earth and hasn't remembered his footstool in the day of his anger. The Lord has swallowed up all the dwellings of Jacob without pity. He has thrown down in his wrath the strongholds of the daughter of Judah. He has brought them down to the ground. He has profaned the kingdom and its princes. He has cut off all the horn of Israel in fierce anger. He has drawn back his right hand from before the enemy. He has burned up Jacob like a flaming fire, which devours all around. He has bent his bow like an enemy. He has stood with his right hand as an adversary, has killed all that were pleasant to the eye. In the tent of the daughter of Zion, he has poured out his wrath like fire. The Lord has become as an enemy. He has swallowed up Israel. He has swallowed up all her palaces. He has destroyed his strongholds. He has multiplied mourning and lamentation in the daughter of Judah. He has violently taken away his tabernacle as if it were of a garden. He has destroyed his place of assembly. Yahweh has caused solemn assembly and Sabbath to be forgotten in Zion. In the indignation of his anger, he has despised the king and the priest. The Lord has cast off his altar. He has abhorred his sanctuary. He has given the walls of her palaces into the hand of the enemy. They have made a noise in Yahweh's house, as in the day of a solemn assembly. Yahweh has purposed to destroy the wall of the daughter of Zion. He has stretched out the line. He has not withdrawn his hand from destroying. He has made the rampart and wall lament. They languish together. Her gates have sunk into the ground. He has destroyed and broken her bars. Her king and her princes are among the nations where the law is not. Yes, her prophets find no vision from Yahweh. The elders of the daughter of Zion sit on the ground. They keep silence. They have cast up dust on their heads. They have clothed themselves with sackcloth. The virgins of Jerusalem hang down their heads to the ground. My eyes fail with tears. My heart is troubled. My liver is poured on the earth because of the destruction of the daughter of my people because the young children and the infants swoon in the streets of the city. They ask their mothers, Where is grain and wine? When they swoon as the wounded in the streets of the city, when their soul is poured out into their mother's bosom, what shall I testify to you? What shall I liken to you, daughter of Jerusalem? What shall I compare to you, that I may comfort you, Virgin daughter of Zion, for your breach is as big as the sea. Who can heal you? Your prophets have seen false and foolish visions for you. They have not uncovered your iniquity to reverse your captivity, but have seen for you false revelations and causes of banishment. All that pass by clap their hands at you. They hiss and wag their head at the daughter of Jerusalem saying, Is this the city that men called the perfection of beauty, the joy of the whole earth? All your enemies have opened their mouth wide against you. 
they hiss and gnash their teeth. They say, we have swallowed her up. Certainly this is the day that we looked for. We have found it. We have seen it. Yahweh has done that which he planned. He has fulfilled his word that he commanded in the days of old. He has thrown down and has not pitied. He has caused the enemy to rejoice over you. He has exalted the horn of your adversaries. Their heart cried to the Lord, O wall of the daughter of Zion, let tears run down like a river day and night. Give yourself no relief. Don't let your eyes rest. Arise, cry out in the night, at the beginning of the watches. Pour out your heart like water before the face of the Lord. Lift up your hands toward him for the life of your young children, who faint for hunger at the head of every street. Look, Yahweh, and see to whom you have done thus. Should the women eat their offspring? the children that they hailed and bounced on their knees? Should the priest and the prophet be killed in the sanctuary of the Lord? The youth and the old man lie on the ground in the streets. My virgins and my young men have fallen by the sword. You have killed them in the day of your anger. You have slaughtered and not pitied. You have called as in the day of a solemn assembly my terrors on every side. There was no one that escaped or remained in the day of Yahweh's anger. My enemy has consumed those whom I have cared for and brought up. Chapter 3 I am the man who has seen affliction by the rod of his wrath. He has led me and caused me to walk in darkness and not in light. Surely he turns his hand against me, again and again, all day long. He has made my flesh and my skin old. He has broken my bones. He has built against me and surrounded me with bitterness and hardship. He has made me dwell in dark places, as those who have been long dead. He has walled me about so that I can't go out. He has made my chain heavy. Yes, when I cry and call for help, he shuts out my prayer. He has walled up my ways with cut stone. He has made my paths crooked. He is to me as a bear lying in wait, as a lion in secret places. He has turned away my ways and pulled me in pieces. He has made me desolate. He has bent his bow and set me as a mark for the arrow. He has caused the shafts of his quiver to enter into my kidneys. I have become a derision to all my people and their song all day long. He has filled me with bitterness. He has stuffed me with wormwood. He has also broken my teeth with gravel. He has covered me with ashes. You have removed my soul far away from peace. I forgot prosperity. I said, my strength has perished, along with my expectation from Yahweh. Remember my affliction and my misery, the wormwood and the bitterness. My soul still remembers them and is bowed down within me. This I recall to my mind. Therefore, I have hope. It is because of Yahweh's loving kindnesses that we are not consumed, because his compassion doesn't fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Yahweh is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. Yahweh is good to those who wait for him, to the soul who seeks him. It is good that a man should hope and quietly wait for the salvation of Yahweh. It is good for a man that he bear the yoke in his youth. Let him sit alone and keep silence, because he has laid it on him. Let him put his mouth in the dust, if it is so that there may be hope. 
Let him give his cheek to him who strikes him. Let him be filled full of reproach, for the Lord will not cast off forever. For though he causes grief, yet he will have compassion according to the multitude of his loving kindnesses. For he does not afflict willingly, nor grieve the children of men, to crush underfoot all the prisoners of the earth, to turn away the right of a man before the face of the Most High, to subvert a man in his cause, the Lord doesn't approve. Who is he who says, and it comes to pass, when the Lord doesn't command it? Doesn't evil and good come out of the mouth of the Most High? Why does a living man complain, a man for the punishment of his sins? Let us search and try our ways, and turn again to Yahweh. Let's lift up our heart with our hands to God in the heavens. We have transgressed and have rebelled. You have not pardoned. You have covered us with anger and pursued us. You have killed. You have not pitied. You have covered yourself with a cloud so that no prayer can pass through. You have made us an offscouring and refuse in the middle of the peoples. All our enemies have opened their mouth wide against us. Terror and the pit have come on us, devastation and destruction. My eye runs down with streams of water for the destruction of the daughter of my people. My eye pours down and doesn't cease without any intermission until Yahweh looks down and sees from heaven. My eye affects my soul because of all the daughters of my city. They have chased me relentlessly like a bird, those who are my enemies without cause. They have cut off my life in the dungeon and have cast a stone on me. Waters flowed over my head. I said, I am cut off. I called on your name, Yahweh, out of the lowest dungeon. You heard my voice. Don't hide your ear from my sighing and my cry. You came near in the day that I called on you. You said, Don't be afraid. Lord, you have pleaded the causes of my soul. You have redeemed my life. Yahweh, you have seen my wrong. Judge my cause. You have seen all their vengeance and all their plans against me. You have heard their reproach, Yahweh, and all their plans against me. The lips of those that rose up against me and their plots against me all day long. You see their sitting down and their rising up. I am their song. You will pay them back, Yahweh, according to the work of their hands. You will give them hardness of heart, your curse to them. You will pursue them in anger and destroy them from under the heavens of Yahweh. Chapter 4 How the gold has become dim, the most pure gold has changed. The stones of the sanctuary are poured out at the head of every street. The precious sons of Zion, comparable to fine gold, how they are esteemed as earthen pitchers, the work of the hands of the potter. Even the jackals offer their breast, they nurse their young ones. But the daughter of my people has become cruel, like the ostriches in the wilderness. The tongue of the nursing child clings to the roof of his mouth for thirst. The young children ask bread and no one breaks it for them. Those who ate delicacies are desolate in the streets. Those who were brought up in purple embrace dung hills. For the iniquity of the daughter of my people is greater than the sin of Sodom, which was overthrown as in a moment. No hands were laid on her. Her nobles were purer than snow. They were whiter than milk. They were more ruddy in body than rubies. Their polishing was like sapphire. Their appearance is blacker than a coal. They are not known in the streets. 
their skin clings to their bones. It is withered. It has become like a stick. Those who are killed with the sword are better than those who are killed with hunger. For these pine away, stricken through, for lack of the fruits of the field. The hands of the pitiful women have boiled their own children. They were their food in the destruction of the daughter of my people. Yahweh has accomplished his wrath. He has poured out his fierce anger. He has kindled a fire in Zion, which has devoured its foundations. The kings of the earth didn't believe, neither did all the inhabitants of the world, that the adversary and the enemy would enter into the gates of Jerusalem. It is because of the sins of her prophets and the iniquities of her priests that have shed the blood of the just in the middle of her. They wander as blind men in the streets. They are polluted with blood so that men can't touch their garments. Go away, they cried to them. Unclean, go away, go away, don't touch. When they fled away and wandered, men said among the nations, they can't live here anymore. Yahweh's anger has scattered them. He will not pay attention to them anymore. They didn't respect the persons of the priests. They didn't favor the elders. Our eyes still fail, looking in vain for our help. In our watching, we have watched for a nation that could not save. They hunt our steps so that we can't go in our streets. Our end is near. Our days are fulfilled, for our end has come. Our pursuers were swifter than the eagles of the sky. They chased us on the mountains. They set an ambush for us in the wilderness. The breath of our nostrils, the anointed of Yahweh, was taken in their pits, of whom we said, Under his shadow we will live among the nations. Rejoice and be glad, daughter of Edom, that dwells in the land of Uz. The cup will pass through to you also. You will be drunken and will make yourself naked. The punishment of your iniquity is accomplished, daughter of Zion. He will no more carry you away into captivity. He will visit your iniquity, daughter of Edom. He will uncover your sins. Chapter 5 Remember, Yahweh, what has come on us. Look and see our reproach. Our inheritance has been turned over to strangers, our houses to aliens. We are orphans and fatherless. Our mothers are as widows. We have drunken our water for money. Our wood is sold to us. Our pursuers are on our necks. We are weary and have no rest. We have given our hands to the Egyptians and to the Assyrians to be satisfied with bread. Our fathers sinned and are no more. We have borne their iniquities. Servants rule over us. There is no one to deliver us out of their hand. We get our bread at the peril of our lives because of the sword of the wilderness. Our skin is black like an oven because of the burning heat of famine. They ravished the women in Zion, the virgins in the cities of Judah. Princes were hanged up by their hands. The faces of elders were not honored. The young men carry millstones. The children stumbled under loads of wood. The elders have ceased from the gate, and the young men from their music. The joy of our heart has ceased. Our dance is turned into mourning. The crown has fallen from our head. Woe to us, for we have sinned. For this our heart is faint. For these things our eyes are dim. For the mountain of Zion, which is desolate, the foxes walk on it. You, Yahweh, remain forever. Your throne is from generation to generation. Why do you forget us forever and forsake us for so long a time? 
Turn us to yourself, Yahweh, and we will be turned. Renew our days as of old. But you have utterly rejected us. You are very angry against us.